Carl Jung, that psychology, famously said, the world you are. Let's try this time. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Jung, the father of analytical psychology, famously said, the world will ask you who you are. And if you don't know, the world will tell you. Identity, strong values and visions, understanding your priorities, strengths and weaknesses, bottlenecks and quality improvement needs is just as important for universities and research centers as it is for all of us on an individual basis. If you get it wrong as a university or a research center, however, thousands of students suffer the consequences. That's why programs and conferences like this are of utmost importance on both collective and individual level. After all, responsibility for education, research and development comes as close as it gets to what we could describe as responsibility for the future. Welcome to the third progress review conference of universities participating in the excellent initiative Research University Programme. My, my name is Łukasz Cioch and it is an absolute honor to be the host of this fantastic event right in the heart of Gdańsk University of Technology, the oldest technical university in Poland. I remember reading the motto of this university, the past is wisdom, the future is a challenge. Well, it's not every university that happens to be established by an emperor, as is the case with this one. Over the coming two days, we'll dive deep into some of the most important topics for education, research, strategy development, and responsible growth. And as we happen to be at the Gdańsk University of Technology for this special edition, it is only appropriate that we should officially start this event with Professor Krzysztof Wiel, director of the Gdańsk University of Technology. Sir, please join me on the stage and let's welcome the rector with warm applause. Distinguished guests, uh, representatives of the Ministry of Education of Science, experts, dear colleagues, rectors, friends, representatives of academic community of all 20 IDUP universities. I, I would like to kindly and cordially welcome you within the walls of Gdańsk University of Technology at the third reporting conference of university participating in the first competition under the ministerial program Excellent Initiative research universities. I will use the Polish abbreviation EDUP. Somehow this abbreviation become more popular. Our meeting is one of the best and most important ways to determine the progress in the implementation of this program, as well as the opportunity to present activity of individual universities. Over the next two days, we will have the opportunity to exchange experiences and good practices in the implementation and development plans devised by universities as well as what I believe is the most important, to prepare our universities for the mid-term evaluation in the IDP program. I am very pleased to welcome you in good health and ready to work hard together. The participation in the IDP program is not only a great distinction and appreciation of our previous achievements, but also the opening of the new opportunities for dynamic development and showing the full potential of our universities. However, we can all agree that transforming our universities in the fully-fledged research universities is a very long process. It requires not only enormous of work, an enormous amount of work and consistency in action, but also even more significant financial resources. Here in Gdańsk, thanks to close cooperation with the Ministry of Science and Higher Education, we have set a lasting and solid foundation for such transformation. We have launched over 30 programs 
supporting the research work of our scientists, developing their competences. We have programs for the third and fifth, fourth and fifth grade students, programs from PhD candidates, programs from young, young scientists, and programs for the prominent researchers, also from all over the world, reaching about seven million for uh, one uh, research team. Thanks to the EDU program, we have also gained the motivation to make even more dynamic efforts to develop our infrastructure base, in addition to obtaining a number of subsidies and allocating our own funds for creation and new or equip the existing laboratories and workshops. We also gain a completely new opportunities thanks to the current construction of STOS Competence Center, one of the most modern IT centers in Europe, as well as the construction of the Gdańsk University of Technology Eco Innovation Center, which will become a model research and development center meeting the greatest challenges related to environmental protection. The possibilities offered by the EDU program also open the door to even greater creativity of our scientists and their search for new interdisciplinary direction in research projects. Together with Medical University of Gdańsk and University of Gdańsk, we are creating a community of Fahrenheit universities. I use the plural term universities because we are systematically and consequently building a federation under the name Fahrenheit University. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Gdańsk University of Technology, we believe that one of the most important roles of our universities, distinguished like yours in the EDU program, is to support the creation of a competitive advantage of the Polish industry. And it will not be possible to significantly strengthen it without even more intensive instruments in human investment, sorry, in human capital, in the competences of scientists, proper and broad conditions for development in creating opportunities that respond to their ideas, vision, and creativity. We must also attempt to reduce the phenomenon of abandoning promising scientific careers, especially young scientists that tend to take much better paid jobs in private companies. An appropriate balance is needed here. As supplying the market with properly educated and competent staff, it is also, of course, an important mission. But top talented students must fuel research at our universities. This is a very important issue if we think about ensuring the real development of Polish competitive edge. The EDU program, which should certainly be continued after the first edition ending in 2026, has opened the door in this direction. However, I believe that this should be the beginning. We need consistency in action, focusing on large, long-term research projects and program based on yet higher funding and opening up even more opportunities. In conclusion, I would like to add that I am convinced that we can, as the academic community, operate more efficiently and dynamically if we acquire financial tools adequate to our abilities. The creation of the EDU program was a great and important step in the direction, but I dare to believe that it will be only the first of many more. So I appeal to people, minister in the government, let us act more widely and we will take care of the rest. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Krzysztof Wilde, Rector of the Gdańsk University of Technology. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Wojciech Murzek, Secretary of State at the Ministry of Education and Science, sent us a special address for our conference. Let's watch. Szanowni Państwo, Ladies and gentlemen, your magnificent directors, prorectors, experts, both from Poland and abroad, directors and representatives of these distinguished universities. Um, what makes them so special is that the group of 20 universities that are part of the EDU competition, which is um, Excellence Initiative Research University, this is the elite of the elites of national Polish um, universities. And I'm really happy because this is the third time for you to meet to have a summary. And you are doing the summary and review to set the perspective for things to come, so that at the end of the day, the goal which is set out in 
Badawcze As a result, są, research universities na świeczniku, cały czas są um, are still in the forefront. Wiemy, All the eyes are on those universities dziesiątkę, because we know that the first ten is being washed by the second ten uh, universities. And it's, it's the world, and I'm using this word on purpose because it's the world that's watching what's happening here in Poland, and it's the world because through the program we want to ensure that our universities will gain recognition and they will be recognized for the quality of the education, teaching and the quality of research because they are research universities, which is the main focus, but it doesn't stop there. It's about the ability to work with other research centers. You name it, the list is long. What makes this event so special po tym trudnym czasie Especially pandemii, having żeby been through the difficult time of the pandemic, it's now the time to move the center of gravity more to um, conversations, interactions, and o tym, uh, occasionally heated debates, because planów, it's important to discuss how to de uh, deliver the plans. Um, involving the university is a mechanism um, where universities are able to develop and deliver their strategies and that way you are able to do what you think is most important for your university. And it's through that that you are now included in this elite group of 10 research universities. With some of you in the second group of 10 universities, which are really ambitious and they have every right to believe that they are the winners in the project. The project is very well received and the feedback we are receiving, and that's also something you will be discussing at your review meeting. This is really important. There are Uh, 2023 is upcoming, a very important, important year where we will have a midterm evaluation of the program. And that way, we'll be able to see whether the goals are being delivered and how they're being delivered, or perhaps some changes or corrections are necessary. And those universities that want to be part of the elite and if And they want to join the competition in 2026. I'm sure they will be collecting all the information to ensure that the quality of their work keeps improving. So to everyone here, I hope that the, the, the debates, um, the experts, the exchanges, and also the possible cooperation, I mean, there are so many good things that I think will give you the personal satisfaction Understanding that you are uh, on a beautiful journey and it's a difficult time after the pandemic and all the consequences and effects of the war in Ukraine. But the position of Poland and uh, Polish science is Is, is a discerning factor and that Poland has every right to be proud of having researchers and scientists that are creating um, the reality and making it better. I just hope that you will be able to bear the, the fruit of your cooperation and it will hopefully also give you more satisfaction and make sure that um, your work is in line Ladies and gentlemen, with as you the may have research noticed, we have pre and, and your activities and your ambitions. Can I just add one more thing? I'm really pleased, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, in fact, to have to connect with you remotely 
But we have a very important meeting at the Polish Parliament, and I don't think it will end before Friday. So I'm afraid I wasn't able to join you, despite what I originally planned. But for as much as I can, I will try and participate by connecting with you remotely. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank you for finding the time to join us live. I hope you can hear us. Yes. And so without further ado, um, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much and um, have a nice day too. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have quite a diversity at the beginning of this conference, both a pre-recorded address and the minister joining us live for a quick moment, Secretary of State at the Ministry of Education and Science. And now time for a short introductory statement by Professor Lauris Horn Nielsen. Needless to say, perhaps in this auditorium, Professor Nielsen chairs the IDAP international team of experts within the program framework. He's also the co-author of the report on Poland's science and higher education system, 2017 peer review report on Poland's higher education and science system written by the European Commission experts under the Horizon 2020 policy support facility. Rector of Aarhus University in the years 2005 to 13, he has been active in many roles at institutions supporting higher education and science, for instance, as president of Euroscience between 2012 and 18, as vice president of the European University Association 2012 to 15, and as the World Bank's chief expert for higher education between 1993 to 2005, and that is only the beginning of the list of professors' achievements. Professor, kindly join me on the stage. Our stage is yours. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm only a botanist. All these other things were something that happened. Um, thank you very much, uh, Minister Murzek, for your welcome to us today. And also thank you very much to your colleague, Professor Vanaki, for inviting once more, once again, uh, an international team of uh, experts to come uh, to Poland and participate in this uh, uh, progress review conference for the EDUP program. Sometimes uh, it's almost impossible to see progress when you are in the middle of it. But coming from the outside, only visiting a uh, few times, uh, maybe a few times every year, it's much more visible that things happen. Uh, you can see uh, places where the building cranes were before, and now there is a new building standing. You can see uh, changes in the auditorium. Now I have a lot of light, but I can still see a difference in the, in the clothing uh, compared to uh, what I saw five years ago. So changes are happening. Maybe you experience many more changes than you realize. But the international team is very pleased that Poland once more invites us back. And uh, I think we should uh, today appreciate all the hard work that people at the ministry, the colleagues of our uh, Minister uh, Mjurczek, is actually doing on a daily basis, but also what uh, uh, rectors, uh, faculty, and staff um, are doing on a daily basis around in, uh, the university landscape. We know that a program like this um, that supports the long-term development, solid long-term development of uh, Poland's leading uh, research universities is, uh, is really necessary. It would be necessary in any country to have a program like this. But it's not all um, excellent programs that run mm. as well as the EDU program, I must say. I have seen many programs and some of them are 
moving up and down, and uh, this is a um, long-term feature is not underscored in the same way as here. The EDO program was probably uh, conceived during the um, discussions um, uh, related to the whole um, evaluation of the whole research and higher education sector of Poland back in 2015, 2016, or something like that. And at some point, the government uh, and parliament took action and said, okay, we want an excellent program. It's not uh, for all 300, 400 universities in Poland, but it's for a select group of 20 universities which are invited to compete based on their capacity, but also based on their uh, view uh, to the future. Uh, this, this has worked well. Uh, the compet competition was in 2018, 2019, and now we are already uh, three, four years into the program, and it's still uh, working along the lines that were set off from the beginning. The purpose of an excellent program is, of course, to, uh, to stimulate um, structural as well as cultural changes. And when I mention stru structural, it's not only the way you use money, but also the way you organize your sector. And on the cultural side, it's the way you look at, uh, at your own uh, environment as a researcher, for example. Is the environment restricted to the square meters, the equipment, the few students you have, or is your environment, the whole area, uh, of, of your own research, including uh, what happens in your uh, sister laboratories or uh, units or other places in Poland and in other, other places in the world. So looking outside of the little box we are all in, uh, it's one of the uh, uh, means of a cultural change. Be more brave. And I've never doubted that my Polish colleagues are brave but I do think that you are even braver today than you were five years ago and looking much more confident um, to the future and to your uh, uh, place in the uh, global research and university landscape. Poland's ambition is, of course, that some of your leading universities should uh, compete and collaborate on par with Europe's and maybe the world's best uh, research-intensive universities. And by, by doing this, you will deliver results, research results, and excellent graduates, and probably also applicable uh, knowledge that would advance uh, Poland's uh, society, and uh, of course, to the benefit of all uh, the citizens of Poland. This is not possible without sustained uh, support. And this is why EDUP is such an important program, because it's not a one-year program, it's a long-term, or at least mid, mid, medium long-term uh, program. This conference was preceded by questions asked to your universities, and uh, we have received uh, answers. Uh, I must say that August is probably not the best month to ask questions, um, and it's certainly also not the best month to receive answers. But you have all, uh, or at least some people at your universities and at the ministry, and I can assure you also our international team has worked hard to try to uh, fulfill the requirements prior to this conference. We asked two uh, overarching uh, general questions to all of, the, all of the 20 universities. We would like to understand what you have been able to achieve when it comes to strengthening the university's research activities and, if possible, uh, to, to distinguish what you have do, been able to do uh, thanks to the EDU program or, uh, from what you would have done in in any case. Um, we also want to know um, how you have moved towards uh, becoming a truly global 
a globally minded uh, university. Um, and how has this program impacted by being more open to, to the world community? How has the impact been internally to the life uh, uh, of the university? and maybe also to the engagement to the society surrounding the university. So we, we think that we have received good uh, answers to all the questions we have asked, two overarching questions and uh, three questions for each of the panels. And now today uh, and tomorrow, the purpose is to discuss um, in, in small groups of four uh, uh, universities with one of the international experts, and if time allows us uh, with the um, audience, uh, how um, we should understand your answers, because we want to be fair, and uh, when we think we understand what is going on in Poland, by listening to your explanations, maybe also asking um, more questions, and at the end we only know a little bit, but maybe a little bit more than we did uh, before we came. And we will also, uh, based on what we understand from, from the answers, and we have maybe 150 or 200 pages of answers to our questions, plus what we discuss today and tomorrow, we would like to recommend um, some of the, what could be focal points for the midterm evaluation. And maybe also we will try to, with all of you, discuss a little bit over coffee break and so forth, how best to organize a midterm uh, review. I can say that personally I would like to visit some of the universities. I know that visiting 20 universities is impossible, but maybe we can uh, divide the international team a little bit so, we, so all universities could have a visit included in the midterm evaluation that comes next year. Because, of course, it's very important for you, but it's also important for, for, um, uh, for the government uh, and the parliament when they have to decide on whether uh, adjustments are needed or not uh, to the program. So, uh, once again, thank you very much, uh, Minister Mutzek and uh, Minister Bernacki for inviting us. We will promise you to do everything we can um, to put the mirror up in front of you so you can see how you look like. Uh, you know we can only put up the mirror. We cannot understand exactly all the details. So thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for the floor. And I hope everybody will enjoy the day uh, and also the day tomorrow. Thank you for inviting us back to Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of preparations go into setting the stage for a two-day event like that. And as Professor has mentioned, we are likely to hear quite a lot of overarching, important, impactful questions over the next two days on this stage. And the hope is we will also hear impactful, overarching answers to those problems and creative ideas to solve some of the biggest challenges. No pressure, Professor Maasen. <laughs> they say the first, the first panel discussion of the day sets the tone for all the discussions that follow. That's why I said no pressure. Our chair of the first discussion is Professor in Higher Education Studies at the Faculty of Educational Science Sciences at the University of Oslo, Norway. In addition, he is Extraordinary Professor at Stellenbosch University, South Africa, and Research Fellow at the Steinhardt Institute for Higher Education Policy, New York University, USA. His main research interests are absolutely relevant for our uh, discussion in the area of governance of higher education and science and the relationships between higher education and society. Please welcome the chair of the first discussion of the day, Professor Maasen, Peter Maasen.
Professor, may I kindly ask you to take one of the microphones? We thought we might have a quick chat just to set the tone for this discussion. Professor, when I read the topic of our discussion, it does sound a little bit general, doesn't it? Enhancing collaboration with the global academic community. So I, I really have like two quick questions for you before we start the discussion. One is that there is a big EU framework for international uh, collaboration coming up. But the second question may be a little more tricky because you have come across dozens and dozens of examples of great examples of international collaboration between research centers and universities. Have you ever been positively surprised by an extraordinary outcome, outcome of such a cooperation? The reason I'm asking you because we surely will all agree that international collaboration today feels like it matters a lot more than in the past, in the age of Brexit, growing tensions with China, the war in Ukraine, and what not. Professor. Thank you. Um, can you all hear me? Very good. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully, I already have the third mic, so maybe you're more <laughs> no, lucky. It works. It works. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the questions that I could use the next two days to try to answer without uh, being able to uh, formulate a definite answer to them. But um, the, the question, of course, about extraordinary outcomes of um, international or global collaboration, of course, every one of us has encountered, experienced uh, the uh, advantages, the positive um, effects, the uh, important benefits from global collaboration. And that has to do, as you were referring to, with the fact that science isn't local or national in the first place. Science is global. So if we want to move our own research groups, to work with our colleagues in our own institution, our institution, our country, maybe even our continent uh, forward, then we have to uh, rely on and have trust in international collaborations. And there are many examples already in the answers of the 20 EDAP universities to the questions that we raised for this round. Uh, and I'm sure each of you has uh, positive uh, experiences uh, in this. And I can uh, relate some of this uh, because you asked for uh, specific uh, examples. I can relate this to um, the ongoing uh, efforts of Europe, which is more than the European Union, but still the European Union plays an important role. Europe trying to positioning itself uh, also when it comes to global scientific collaboration in the current uh, settings that uh, after COVID and the other uh, challenges that you refer to, the war in Ukraine, Brexit, uh, the, um, uh, the importance but also challenges in developing our scientific relations with China, etc. Where does Europe and as a consequence also Poland fit in? And there we see that uh, in the European Union um, in uh, many arenas where also uh, Polish uh, scientists, politicians, other actors contribute, we began to rethink the way in which we want to connect globally. We want to move away from a bilateral, um, to some extent, uh, spontaneous relationship, and we want to develop and uh, promote multilateral relationships. And one of the successes in the way in which this model is developing is in the new innovation agenda between Europe and Africa, where for the first time we move away from thinking in uh, development aid terms uh, and begin to think really in terms of global scientific collaboration and new models, multilateral, uh, and also uh, for uh, the discussions that we will have here today, uh, one important um, starting point, uh, one key starting point is we want equal partnerships equal partnerships in an unequal world. And how can we realize these equal partnerships? Um, and we've seen in the answers from the EDUP universities many very positive and uh, important examples of how you are working in uh, this uh, changing setting and in the way in which you also um, further promote and develop and operationalize this new way of European thinking, multilateral relationships, the European University Initiative, many of the EDUP universities are part of such an alliance. And in these alliances, you will find many wonderful examples of what global international science collaboration can achieve, which is far more difficult to achieve as an individual institution. So as you 
yourself have just said, the past is wisdom, the future is a challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, before this conference, I had listened to a number of super interesting interviews with Professor Marson, so I'm absolutely certain he will put a lot of constructive pressure on our panelists. Professor, the luxury of chairing a discussion is that you're free to choose wherever you, you feel like sitting comfortably, so make yourself comfortable, but not too comfortable, that's the general idea, and allow me to invite on the stage our guests for the discussion, Jagiellonian University in Kraków. Professor Bartosz Brożek is joining us for the discussion, hopefully. Please welcome Professor with a round of applause. <laughs> University of Wrocław is represented by Professor Patrycja Matusz. Madam, join us. University of Silesia in Katowice, Professor Michał Daszykowski, Professor, please join us. <laughs> Last but not least, University of Łódź, Professor Łukasz Bogutski joining us for the debate. <laughs> Madam, gentlemen, the stage is yours and yours alone. Thank you, um, and as the facilitator um, indicated, this is the first panel, and uh, the first panel sets the tone, so there's no pressure um, on me or on you. Uh, we just have to set the tone. Um, thank you for um, your introductory questions. Um, I want to also thank the Ministry of Education and Science for um, initiating and, and inviting us here, and uh, Gdansk University of Technology for hosting um, this um, uh, two-day uh, conference in such a wonderful way. In the introductory presentations, we've already heard uh, uh, from a number of perspectives how important EDUP is and how successful it is. And uh, we've seen um, over the past uh, five years uh, many um, examples uh, uh, of um, the, uh, the way in which EDUP has influenced the institutions. What we will discuss today in this first panel will allow us to go a bit more deep into the notion of progress and the notion of success. What is it that the universities participating in the EDA program um, experience themselves uh, when it comes to this theme of the first panel, uh, as uh, the facilitator was indicating, rather uh, abstract, enhancing collaboration with the global academic community? What does it mean for the uh, universities here uh, on uh, the podium? and uh, how does that relate to the experiences of the other 16 universities. We've seen examples in the answers that we received as, um, as a panel, uh, as an expert group. Uh, examples, we've seen lots of data, so the universities take um, this um, opportunity uh, of uh, discussing their experiences uh, very seriously. And we also have heard already about the external circumstances, uh, uh, of course the COVID uh, crisis, but also the other uh, circumstances that I mentioned that pose clear challenges. So what is important now is uh, to have a thorough understanding of progress as well as um, remaining challenges uh, and um, differences maybe in the pathways that the universities that are part of the EDIP program have chosen and are in the process of further developing in achieving their own ambitions, realizing their ambitions and achieving their goals. And with that, I want to ask the um, representatives of the four universities in this panel to start with a reflection on this overall topic, enhancing um, the, um, the collaboration with the global uh, academic community, scientific collaboration. And I want to start with uh, Jagiellonian University, and uh, please uh, uh, forgive me my, uh, my uh, pronunciation. Uh, thank you. It works now. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> well, I would say that uh, when it comes to international collaboration, uh, there is business as usual, or at least in the recent years, also business as unusual because of all the challenges that were mentioned with the COVID pandemic, Brexit, and recently the war in the Ukraine. Uh, but there are things that we try to do anyway uh, like uh, you know, student exchange, staff exchange, bilateral col collaboration, 
Uh, so I don't believe that this is something we should focus on. Uh, I think that we should look uh, forward and from a more general perspective and ask the question what uh, can be done in order to really enhance international collaboration, change our attitude and the way we understand how, how Polish universities should function within the European higher education area and, and globally. Uh, and from the point of view of our strategy at the Jagiellonian University and the experiences we've had uh, with the EDU program, I think that two things are worth mentioning. The first one is that, okay, I would, I would put it under the label of the a cultural change or the mindset change. Uh, uh, our program is built around four principles, four eyes, uh, and one of those eyes is internationalization. And here the question is how to understand it. And our understanding of internationalization hangs together on three uh, different tenets, I would say. The first one is that internationalization is not something which is an addition to what the university does. So usually you have uh, rectors or deans for research, education, something else, and then internationalization as if it was only an additional artificial thing. We believe that everything the university does should have an international dimension. The second point is that we believe in international collaboration which is more permanent, long-term and sustainable and not something which is, you know, a one-time occurrence, writing a paper together or something like that. And the third dimension of our understanding of, of what internationalization is, is that it should be multidimensional which means that it should include all uh, aspects of the university mission. So research, education, and what is usually referred to as the third mission. So we should try to combine those things. But of course, on paper, it's only a slogan. So what we try to do is when we make the, a selection procedure for small things or for big projects, we, tr we try to actively use this principle uh, in order to select the projects for, for realization. And the examples uh, vary from small things like mini projects that we, we finance more than 1,000 such mini projects within our EDU program. And uh, the internationalization criterion is always there. Uh, of course, it's not always the deciding factor, but, but it is there and it is taken into consideration. But also when we make big decisions, recently, uh, after the first two years of the EDU program, we decided to uh, reshape it slightly uh, and we uh, decided to go for what we call the flagship project, so big research and beyond research collaboration platforms, core facilities or, or excellence teams. And also here, the selection, one of the selection criteria was internationalization. So we, we, we selected those flagships which uh, offered uh, the biggest potential for the internationalization as we understand it. So long-term, permanent, sustainable, multidimensional, and so on. So this is one point. And my second point, a thing that I believe uh, goes much beyond the business as usual in international relations is the European University Initiative. Uh, the Jagiellonian University is part of Una Europa, which is a, university, a European University alliance uh, with now 11 universities from all over Europe, all very prestigious uh, institutions. Uh, and we believe that this is uh, an important part of our future as uh, an element of the international uh, research and education uh, community uh, within the framework of uh, our university alliance. Uh, of course, again, we do things as usual that all other European universities are probably doing, but there are some distinctive things uh, where we put much emphasis on developing special programs. Uh, when it comes to education, I believe a great, already a great success of this uh, European university, which is partly sponsored from our EDUP funds, uh, is the creation of uh, first two uh, joint BA programs in Europe. So far we've only had MA joint programs, 
So we've created the first two BA programs, one in European studies and other one in sustainability. Um, when it comes to research cooperation, of course, we are preparing our joint um, research and innovation strategy, but we also have um, set up a very successful seed funding uh, scheme uh, that is already in its fourth edition. And, uh, well, this is, uh, I believe, something which in the future will result in um, big European project, joint uh, projects. Uh, but we are also quite proud of the things we are doing in the, this final and often neglected dimension of the university mission, which is maybe called the societal outreach. Um, here, uh, what we do is uh, we invest in uh, MOOCs, uh, and we do it at different levels. So we've just launched uh, an Una Europa MOOC and artificial intelligence and society. Uh, but also at the Agenian University, we have our, our own MOOC platform, and we work together with our partners to, to publish 10 MOOC courses in the near future. We've prepared special uh, scheme for our students and PhD students to uh, organize challenge-based workshops. Uh, so the students and PhD students come together, either virtually or in, in physically, and they work on a social problem. They try to solve it, and they try to implement it. Uh, and maybe the final thing, uh, another distinctive feature of what the Aguilonian University does within Una Europa is the Future University Lab, uh, also partly sponsored from the IDU program. This is the first joint unit of Una Europa. It's a think tank uh, with the goal of envisaging the future of university in Europe and in the world, not in five years' time or ten years' time, but thinking even much uh, more long-term. Uh, so we are trying to imagine how universities should and will look like in 20 years, what the challenges will be there. Uh, and we are trying, and we are doing it in a very particular way, I would say, because uh, uh, we find the challenge, we find the, the problem, and then we try to ask the people we call visionaries, not necessarily working at our university. Sometimes these are people from businesses, they may be artists, uh, and they work together to provide us with what we call an envisaging, envisaging uh, report. And on the basis of this, we make recommendations and, and try to include those recommendations into the strategies and plans. So I think this is quite distinctive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and this already um, provided us with a lot of uh, important examples. Um, the, um, uh, the issue of uh, cultural change is extremely important, and I know also in, in the uh, report uh, by your university you've emphasized, you gave uh, relevant examples, uh, the notion of um, the uh, multi-dimensional um, nature of uh, internationalization, as well as um, the need to, op to institutionalize it, to make sure that it's not based on projects and dependent on projects, but that is long-term and stable. Uh, also, the European University Alliances have been mentioned, um, where there is, I would say, uh, an, an enormous expectation and many very positive examples also at other EDIB universities. But there are also at least two challenges. First, how can we um, further develop these alliances so that they also uh, can play a structural role in research collaboration? Because the alliances are initially funded by Erasmus+, uh, education-oriented, and education is, if I may say so, easier to organize in, in a uh, collaborative, um, partly top-down way than, than, uh, than research. And then another point, I mean, I'm from Norway, and the divorce rate in Norway is 50%. So what will happen uh, with an alliance after a few successful years when it falls apart with the uh, activities and joint uh, programs that you have developed? Uh, MOOCs also uh, use digital technologies, important, and we will come back to these issues in the discussion, but now we want to give the, uh, the opportunity to uh, the other members of the panel also to give a, an introduction, and I want to ask uh, Professor Martus to, to give her uh, introduction. Thank you. 
Now it works. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much. Um, it's really nice to hear that we share the same experiences. So that's the starting point with our uh, friends from Jagiellonian University. Uh, I would like uh, maybe before I start with the short introduction of EDUP uh, at our university to answer partly your question because uh, we also have joined the European University Alliance, ARCUS. Um, and I am extremely proud of this uh, co cooperation. Answering the question how to link the European University Al Alliance, which is, should be the teaching um, initiative with the research, uh, I would say we have established the uh, innovation, research and innovation fund financed by the Horizon Europe uh, program. Uh, so this is a parallel collabor collaboration between the partner universities of Arcus in order to strengthen not only the teaching um, uh, activities but also research which is important and I've just came back from Granada where we have our annual conference and we uh, a little bit fired the last success of, of the last call when we get 15 millions for the next uh, four years. So I would say, um, for me, it's uh, the space of exchange, mobility, but also exchange of ideas for research. It shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be understood uh, pure, as a purely teaching initiative. So it's just a small comment. I'm sorry, but it was a very interesting uh, um, your question. Uh, going back to, uh, to EDUP, of course, uh, EDUP is a key priority for the University of uh, Wrocław and it helped us to uh, support um, individual and, uh, and uh, team work. Um, for me, internationalization means exchange, uh, mobility and uh, I would say meetings with the outstanding scholars and researchers from other uh, universities. Um, the financing uh, of EDUP helped us uh, first of all to, um, to send over 100 uh, researchers to the uh, leading uh, research institutions uh, in the last year. Um, it's very pity that the um, pandemic of COVID-19 uh, stopped us a little bit and we started uh, the exchange programs uh, later than planned. Uh, but uh, the interest in the scholarships uh, is very high and uh, as far as I know from the, from the colleagues I spoke to, uh, they really um, highly evaluated the, the three months stays in uh, various um, universities and research institutions. We also, similarly to the Jagiellonian University, set up a, a frame for the micro-grants um, aiming at um, pilot research, and, but also visits in, uh, in the um, research, or, uh, research centers or, or institutions particularly important for the disciplines. Um, we also use the opportunity to invite um, outstanding scholars to our university to share their, their ideas and also give feedback to our um, young scholars in their early stage of career, um, of course, uh, about the potential research uh, ideas or publications. Mm, we. For me, um, one of the tasks which is, in my opinion, particularly important is the setup of uh, eight uh, academic incubators. And uh, for me, it is important that um, four out of eight leaders of this group came up to the University of Wrocław from, um, from, the European, uh, from, from other European universities. So inviting people from outside means that we strengthen the cooperation with, with other institutions. Of course, the incub incubators also um, uh, employed uh, young scholars, uh, PhD candidates and postdocs uh, from all over the world, which um, is very uh, important in my opinion. Um, we have also um, strengthened the um, support for, for, the, um, for our uh, research uh, project office and um, we managed to, um, to um, organize a training system for, for those interested in applying for both domestic and, um, and uh, European um, grants. 
Um, I know that, um, or in my opinion, um, EDUP is uh, not only a resource of money, but also a process of changing our attitudes towards uh, um, mobility, um, research, and publications. Uh, we have um, provided the support in proofreading and open access for over 200 uh, scientific papers in, in last year. So there is a lot of examples of, of the positive impact of, of EDUP. And last but not least, I truly believe that um, the cooperation and the European University Alliances as a priority for the European Commission uh, is, um, should be something uh, very important to create um, um, real European integration of higher education. Uh, so I was uh, involved in, uh, in the um, new application of our course, uh, and there are a lot of um, innovative uh, uh, elements as, um, of course, uh, related to teaching, but also to the cooperation with the stakeholders, uh, because, uh, as it was said previously, the societal impact of university shouldn't be forget when, when we talk about the future of our universities. I don't want to take longer, because uh, I think we are going to answer another questions, but that's just a few examples. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, also for uh, already answering <laughs> one of the more general questions about the uh, way in which Euro European University Alliances uh, also become important in developing ideas and uh, collaborative efforts around research. Uh, also, uh, your mentioning of outgoing mobility, in incoming mobility, uh, extremely important to, to look at the successes that the EDA program has made possible there. Um, the attitude or the cultural change that also uh, was mentioned before. Um, there we would have to look maybe later in this panel uh, into uh, some examples. What does it mean, cultural change, um, um, whether it's uh, related to research or to the organization in general. Uh, but thank you for, for mentioning uh, these important uh, dimensions that we will come back to hopefully in the discussion and maybe uh, also when it comes to the questions from, from the audience. And I want to go to the third um, presenter, uh, representative of one of the EDAP universities, Professor Dashikovsky. Um, please. Thank you. Thank you for inviting the University of Silesia. As you know, we are in the second league, so below the tenth position. So I'm very happy to join you on the stage and, and to share our thoughts about the, of the EDUP. As you, can, uh, as you know, probably, we have much less money than the other universities, so the scale of actions is maybe smaller, and that's why we are really thinking deeply how we can invest this money, how we can profit from this money, that are still additional money to our budget. So, of course, the, uh, the biggest uh, issue is how to make the international collaboration really working. Uh, well, it's easy, relatively easy to get uh, an agreement, it's relatively easy to sign a contract between different universities, but the goal is actually how we can engage them in a real scientific collaboration. So uh, we have managed to participate in this European uh, big agenda for the European universities. We are very lucky to have it. We have very nice partners from all over the Europe. Uh, but what is probably even more important, we were able to manage to get the other funding for, for really scientific part of the, of the project, so it's called T4 ERI, and uh, we also work on this project very hardly in order to find out what are the strengths and what are the potential avenues of future collaboration. Uh, we are very aware that transforming even a single university is extremely difficult task. And now we have six, seven, ten partners uh, situated in different parts of Europe with totally different schemes of ideas, thinking, and, and also the uh, scientific uh, background and, and the law background. So we have to somehow align those universities. Of course, it started with the, 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 the teaching aspect. So even such simple thing, how we can 
share the students how we can make our campus open for the foreign universities. Uh, this is really a challenging thing. So within this um, uh, European action uh, that is focused mostly on the, uh, on the scientific part, we were thinking in different panels of this uh, discussion about uh, opening our scientific community, including the, uh, the instrumentation, including our laboratories, including our minds, to start with the discussion about real scientific collaboration. In addition, of course, uh, uh, it's, it's also very interesting and I would like to mention we have uh, uh, initiated uh, a very interesting, uh, a very interesting uh, event. This will be held in 2024. The Katowice has received the European City of Science Award. So we have a consortium uh, from our local uh, institutions. So seven, seven universities located in Katowice decided to join within this initiative. And of course, they are bringing their own ideas. They are bringing their partners. So in fact, we have also uh, Silesian Polytechnic with their own European universities um, and the collaboration. So these are the, the, the biggest, I think, the achievements that we managed to, to develop during the COVID and during the war and during the, let's say, uh, very difficult period of increasing prices. This is also very important that the value of this money are drastically dropping down now. So we really have to be very careful how we address those problems and how we spend this money. So I think that I could speak uh, quite long about different things, but uh, uh, I would like also to mention that because there is this enchancing, so I think that this is also the role of the institution, of the university to stimulate somehow uh, how we are going to produce the, the good quality of the, of the scientific uh, outcome. And these things uh, we already see at our university, so we increased uh, over the last two years the top 10% cited publications, so we have like 3% increase, maybe it's not a big one. But also uh, I think that we owe this to the, to the idea of sharing money with people who are, let's say, the middle class of the university, but they have to really make some kind of escape from their own comfort zone. So we are really asking them to achieve something that they were not able to do earlier. So I think that these are the, the most important aspects. And if, you, if we are thinking also about the global community, academic community, actually, who are those stakeholders? It's, it's very difficult to say, but uh, personally, I think that these are not only students, uh, academics, or, or our partners, but this is also the society. And we have also a very nice initiative that is called Silesian Festival of Science. So within the last six years, we were able to collect 500,000 of visitors and we are promoting the science, we are showing them and trying to address different scientific problems and show them that we are very important in the, in the discussion and in sol problem solving. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, and also uh, thank you for reminding us that um, global scientific collaboration is not necessarily an aim in itself, but the way in which also the EDAP universities uh, enhance their global uh, scientific uh, collaboration um, practices and, and ambitions uh, should be done in a way that's of relevance, not just to science, but also to your local, uh, um, regional, national communities. And from that perspective, also the question, uh, the issue that you raised about the collaboration uh, with the global uh, community outside Europe, because of course, through the European University Alliances, as also the first two uh, speakers were, were, were emphasizing, uh, a lot of the uh, innovativeness in developing international relationship is positioned in Europe. And that's good. We have to position ourselves and make sure that we profit from uh, collaboration within our continent. But how about the relationship with the rest of the world? What does your alliance allow you to develop as a vision or a strategy when it comes, for example, to collaborating with, with China um, or the US or other parts of the uh, non-European world? Um, also, uh, your emphasis on, on the importance of thinking deeply that money is important, but it's not only about money. 
um, are, are very important and uh, issues that I'm sure we'll um, take up in the further discussions in our panel and in the other panel. So thank you very much again. And now I want to ask the last speaker uh, from the University of Lodz, Professor Bogotsky, uh, to give his presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm particularly pleased to be um, a member of this particular panel, not just because it's the first one and uh, sets uh, the scene in this way, but um, also because of the topic. Um, for years, the two main priorities of University of Łódź have been um, research and internationalization. At the risk of being accused of platitude, I will say that uh, Without state-of-the-art research, there is no quality education. And research cannot be confined. Um, in order for research to thrive, it needs to be globally disseminated, um, cited, read, reviewed. Internationalization, um, which is uh, my area within the University of Łódź, I'm responsible for um, developing this particular um, area. For us, it begins at home. It begins with um, developing an organizational culture um, towards achieving the goal that uh, there is nothing bizarre in going international. It's just the way you are. You are a member of the world and, um, and uh, international stuff and uh, internationally disseminated research and uh, international education should be um, not just goals, but should be um, everyday uh, business. I have to say that uh, even though we are also in uh, the second division of, of EDUP, uh, we consider um, this to be second best, but still best. Um, I must say that the excellent in initiative uh, research university program has been instrumental in the case of University of Łódź um, in achieving these goals. My words will probably echo the sentiments of my prede predecessors. Um, the topic of the European Universities Initiative uh, has reverberated here um, three times already and uh, I'm proud to uh, announce that uh, as of recently we are on board as well, so University of Łódź uh, as of this year joined uh, UNIQUE, the European University of Post-Industrial Cities, which if you have been to the city of Łódź, uh, sometimes dubbed the Polish Manchester, um, I think you will agree that this was uh, the best uh, choice. Um, as my colleague from Wrocław has rightly said, uh, European universities are not uh, merely about mobility and, and about teaching. There's more to them than that. Um, and the unique alliance uh, is unique, pun intended, in that uh, it has a clearly cut research component. Um, there is uh, a component uh, there which is called unique for ER, uh, which stands for unique for uh, engaged research, and uh, it tackles um, applied research uh, in areas such as sustainability, um, diversity, migration, and such like, but, uh, but goes uh, more broadly than that uh, to um, across a number of, uh, um, of disciplines. Um, UNIQUE is um, a year two alliance, so we have yet to receive the funding. We're only applying uh, with the extension bid this year, hopeful that uh, the funding will be granted. But we are now um, full partner involved in all the activities uh, of UNIQUE, uh, whether mobility, research, or organizational. Um, internationalization permeates uh, our internal culture uh, and, uh, and structure as well. We are uh, making adjustments to uh, the administrative structure of the university to reflect this particular priority. Um, we created something called International Hub, 
which I think is unique um, in the sense that it is not just uh, an uh, international relations office. We have an international relations office, it's not the same thing. Um, it is, as the name suggests, a hub or a joint, if you will, that uh, streamlines, connects, regulates um, all the internationalization processes uh, going on um, in the entire central um, and faculty level administration. Um, it has already started a series of interesting initiatives, for example, Science Inspires, which is a, a series of meetings of uh, researchers talking about their research um, in rather informal conditions, such as over a barbecue, for example. Um, and uh, International Hub has also been responsible for um, the well-being of uh, international staff. Um, thanks to EDUP, we were able um, two years ago and last year, even in spite of the pandemic, to uh, invite, to physically um, invite um, the largest cohort of international staff ever at the University of Łódź, 42 researchers from different uh, countries of, of the globe. Um, who are now um, doing short-term or long-term um, research uh, stays at the university. I have many more examples, but I, I think I'll stop at, at this point and uh, await your further questions. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you very much. And um, indeed, uh, I'm sure all the um, universities represented here could give additional examples, uh, because the, uh, as you indicated, um, both of you, um, the EDA program also has a very important um, uh, impact on um, what uh, are called the runners-up, which are the excellent universities who are in the, the second group. Um, also, you emphasize the European University Initiative. Uh, so definitely, if the four first universities in the panel that were selected on the basis of their, um, their responses, but also um, um, given the, the uh, the way we, we organize the, this conference is the first four universities already emphasize so much the importance of the European University Initiative that might raise a number of questions for the further development also of the EDA program and the way in which uh, the European University Initiatives contribute to the realization of the ambitions of each individual university here in Poland when it comes um, to the, um, uh, the implementation of the EDA program. And it's not just a, a Polish uh, experience. Also, my university, University of Oslo, is a member of a European University Initiative, and I experienced the same kind of expectations, enthusiasm, but also questions there. Um, so thank you uh, for your uh, contributions, all four emphasizing the importance of, of cultural change, um, giving examples of initiatives, um, new structures, programs um, that have been um, established um, as a consequence of EDUP, so it gives us a good insight into um, the, uh, the relevance and importance of the EDUP program and what has been possible uh, because of it, which might not have been possible otherwise. Uh, that leads me to the first question that I want to, uh, to raise. Um, obviously, in, in a session like, uh, like this, we focus on on examples, on, on uh, positive developments, on progress. But I would like to hear from you also, in addition to the successes and the, the progress achieved, what do you see as important challenges um, for the further um, uh, development of your university's uh, EDIP um, uh, strategy? Uh, what do you see as the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the issues that you really um, uh, feel might have an impact and that you're uh, not sure um, uh, how to deal with at this stage. If I can start with Professor Matos. Yes, of course. Um, sorry. Oh. We, we changed the order now. Good. Yes. Um, yes, thank you very much. Um, I think the, uh, the biggest challenge, in my opinion, is how to make EDUP uh, most uh, inclu inclusive for all the members of our academic community. As I said uh, previously, uh, it was important for us to um, do both. First of all, to um, 
support the early, early stage uh, researchers in their first attempt to, for me, uh, okay, I'm responsible for uh, international relations and projects. So for me, applying for grants is the key issue in my daily business. So um, for me, um, the supporting system for the early stage um, scholars to start applying for their uh, research grants, uh, I mean, from the very beginning, even in the PhD school, uh, as soon as possible, is, is the key issue. So uh, I use this, uh, I use the uh, EDUP uh, financing to support the training and uh, internal reviewing system um, for, for more grants. And uh, um, looking at the numbers, uh, I see the progress in increase of research grants, both domestic, domestic uh, and international. Uh, but and on the other hand, it's also important how to, let's use the nice word, how to coach the advanced uh, researcher to do more. Because um, the National Center uh, um, of Science uh, in Poland, uh, pro being the, the major the, um, grant agency in Poland, uh, was very successful to, um, to motivate and mobilize our research to apply for grants. But of course, for me, um, as a person responsible for this area, it is also important to um, convinced my um, scholars to apply for international grants. Um, as I said in the in the incub incubators uh, which we created, um, we um, employed people from abroad, and this is also a way of um, creating the atmosphere of co collaboration. Uh, to create an international consortia and, uh, for the applying of Horizon Europe and ERC, which uh, uh, is um, the uh, key priority, um, also in, in I, I guess, in all EDUP universities. So, um, changing the attitudes, doing the internationalization and cooperation with the global academia, the everyday activity um, for. Uh, all members of our community seems for me um, one of the biggest challenges. Um, but we are working on that. Yeah, it would be, thank you, and it would be interesting to hear more about, um, but maybe we can do that later, uh, how you are working on it, because it is, of course, an important issue. The inclusiveness, uh, preventing that you get these pockets of excellence which are only weakly connected to the rest of the university. So how um, do you see the challenges from, from the perspective of the uh, university, um, uh, Yaglo sorry for the pronunciation, no, Yaglonian sorry for University? Uh, sometimes it's quite difficult to hear exactly. We are, we are sitting too close to each other. Uh, that may be the reason. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, the challenges for internationalization, uh, I can think of three such major challenges. The first one uh, is the one that you have already mentioned. And, uh, so this is the question of whether we will have funds uh, and continued uh, support, uh, not only for the European Universities Initiative, but, but more generally for, uh, for international collaboration. Uh, and as probably every rector in this room will testify, the problem in the next year may be how to pay the electricity bills and know how to uh, enhance uh, international collaboration. But the hope is, of course, that, that the funds will be available, not only for education-related activities, uh, but also for intensifying research collaboration. I think that in this context, one interesting idea that has been implemented in Una Europa, in our alliance, I don't know how it is in the other alliances, is the seed funding. So we have this annual fee, uh, uh, quite substantial, I would say, and this is used to, uh, a part of it is used to finance uh, the seed funding, but it is also used to finance an association that we establish. So we, we are not only 11 universities, but we have another legal entity which helps to run uh, things. 
here, but this surely will be, uh, will be a, a challenge. Uh, the second challenge, uh, both internally and externally, uh, is the structure of management uh, and how to improve it. Uh, because when you have an, in, in a European University Alliance, you have 11 universities, the decision-making processes take ages. Uh, uh, it is quite difficult to, to sometimes to arrive at, 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 at a solution uh, quickly enough, uh, given the challenges that we have. Uh, so I think that, that this is a challenge to improve here, as well as to improve internally, uh, because uh, to be ready as an institution for international collaboration, I believe that uh, sometimes a different attitude, sometimes different procedures are needed uh, in order to easily accommodate this, this kind of cooperation. So, so here I see a, a, a big challenge we are trying to address, but of course uh, it, it takes time. Uh, the final challenge, which I don't believe is that big because we already see things changing, is, is the attitude uh, of, of the researchers, of students. Uh, I, I have a strong conviction that once we give our employees, the researchers, the students, but also the professional staff, the administrative staff, we tend to forget about them sometimes, but they are essential to the functioning of the university, and of course also they should take part in this international collaboration, uh, learning from their colleagues from, from um, uh, other universities, uh, going for study visits, um, developing together common standards with, 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 with uh, other European universities. So, uh, uh, so my strong conviction is that when we give them the tools, uh, uh, they will do the, the, their work in a bottom-up way. So they will, they, they will find uh, some people at other European universities or maybe even beyond Europe to work on a joint project whether they are research projects or administration-related projects. So, uh, so, so I think that this is changing. Cultural and mindset changes require time, so this will not happen overnight or even in two or, 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 or three, year, three years. But we are, are already notice the, that, that something is changing there, and there is more and more people who ask about the possibilities of, uh, you know, um, collaborating with, uh, with our uh, international partners. Uh, so the challenge he here is the smallest one. The, the, the first two, I think, are the biggest. So, so the financial sustainability and the other is the institutional structure uh, which will allow for this kind of cooperation to flourish. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, important points, the um, uh, financial continuity and support needed to uh, realize the, um, the EDEP uh, ambitions. The issue of management, leadership, uh, structural issues also there. We might come back to that in the discussion. There might be questions also from the, from the audience. And the issue of attitude also is mentioned by Professor Matush. Um, important um, challenges still still there that we uh, have to take into account. We also think of um, the, the long-term uh, further development as also the rector of um, Gdansk University of Technology was into the importance to, to think in a, in a long-term way and how can we uh, maintain and strengthen the sustainability of the EDIP initiative. Let's go to the other um, side of the panel, at least from my perspective. Uh, and I want to ask uh, Professor um, Bukotsky, um, what uh, does he see as the main uh, challenges uh, for the further uh, development of your ambitions within the EDEP framework? Thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm afraid I won't be original. I will echo similar sentiments. Um, so funding, fossilization of certain processes and structures, um, grants, we, we do see grants at various levels as, uh, as a major challenge. Uh, honestly, we, we, there is room for improvement when it comes to University of Łódź in this area. But I think an important um, task of the leadership of the university is uh, to persuade the academics to 
take the plunge because sometimes uh, they are reluctant to, to do so. One very positive example, very recently uh, a professor of our university has been awarded the European Research Council Advanced Grant, which is still a rarity in Poland. Um, it's the first ERC grant for WUJ and it's the first uh, ERC grant in Poland for humanities because all the others have been in uh, exact sciences, um, if I'm correct. Um, and again, um, the, um, the image that we have of ERC grants is that it, it, it's a growl, it's, uh, it's something that you, you simply won't get. No, you will. You've, I mean, obviously, you know, everyone, it, it's a very, very long process and, uh, uh, and not open to everyone, but um, I think it's necessary to, uh, to persuade people to, to at least try, obviously. If you don't try, you, you won't, but if, if you will, you, you very often fail, but, uh, but sometimes you, uh, you succeed. Um, again, falling uh, back on the example of uh, European universities, um, uh, it's a challenge from the point of view of thinking out of the box and uh, um, trying to adjust the fossilized structures that each university has. Um, in our case, it's 10 universities, so to... Um, um, for 10 universities to work together, to have joint uh, degrees, uh, double degrees, uh, programs where we uh, co-teach classes. Uh, it's a challenge multiplied, ten, multiplied tenfold. Um, it's a long, arduous process, but it's obviously a process that's, that's necessary. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, and also um, reiterating that the challenges uh, that you face are comparable with uh, challenges that uh, other universities, other EDUP universities face, which is uh, not necessarily surprising, but it's also important to take into account that there are uh, structural issues. The funding issue is, is always an issue, but certainly now with the energy crisis, um, uh, this is an issue that has to be taken very seriously. Um, also, thank you for referring to the ERC, which sometimes is identified as the Champions League of European research funding. Maybe that's a bit too much, but that, that it's an important frame of reference also to, um, to measure or identify success in your progress. That's, that's of course, um, obvious and, and an important uh, contribution. Thank you. Um, would you like to, to add to the, um, to the points that I've already raised or maybe elaborate some of them, Professor Dachikovsky? Just a short comment, maybe. So our university took a really difficult path to to this EDUP idea, and uh, as you know, we have really changed the structure of our university. And we are after this change, it took already five years, and I think uh, there is no going back. So we made really solid ground for, for a new opening, and this is happening, actually. But uh, the biggest uh, problem that I'm really afraid of is that we are mostly using external motivation. This is how we are using the EDUP money, we, as you were telling, you make seats and people are going around and, and they are picking up those seats, but how to make those people really happy with these things they are doing and how to uh, persuade them that they are raising their own ambition, actually. It's not the ambition of rector to make the university proud, but if everyone will contribute with his own idea, with his own excellence, then it will grow bigger, simply. And this is, I think, a big challenge because there is a lot of psychology behind this. A lot. Thank you. Thank you very much for pointing uh, to this issue, the external motivation, uh, the psychological dimension. Um, and I'm, I hope that it's possible over the next two days and, and uh, certainly also after the conference that more informally you also exchange experiences and try to identify good practices because all of you have uh, comparable experiences and challenges and it's important to get an understanding of what uh, the, um, the individual EDUP universities have um, uh, experienced as positive, um, positive uh, developments and, and initiatives and also to get an understanding of how that might be of relevance for others. And before giving um, the audience an opportunity to uh, raise issues or questions, I would like to ask or to elaborate on one of the points that was raised and that has to do with how do you connect 
your uh, success and progress in global scientific collaboration, which in many cases is uh, at the forefront of global scientific development, to your uh, internal um, changes when it comes to uh, attitude, understanding of the importance and the, um, uh, of the EDAP uh, program and the ambitions of the university in that. Um, one of the observations that I make in, in uh, going through the rich um, uh, answers to the questions that we raised in, in the report um, that is the foundation for, for or one of the foundations for the conference is that there are very few mentionings only one or two of the 20 universities of internationalization at home. You identified um, the importance of incoming scholars, but how uh, do you prevent that they uh, discuss only with their colleagues and then go back after three months or six months to their home university without having that impact on your university? What is your internationalization at home strategy um, and how does it um, uh, uh, relate to the to the EDEP strategy. Um, can I start on this side, um, Professor Bogotsky? Okay, thank you. Um, yes, as I said uh, during the introduction, it's uh, we see internationalization at, at home as uh, as the only way forward, but uh, it is a long process. Um, we all know the publish or perish um, adage, it has been done to death, um, and it's, uh, it's obvious uh, to us. Uh, and I think that uh, it's obvious to any academic um, now um, that um, work at the university, if you are a researcher, necessitates uh, publishing the results of your, uh, of your um, research and disseminating it uh, internationally, um, quality-wise as well, um, so um, impact factor and, um, and scopus web of science, again, uh, this is uh, obvious to, to all of us here. Um, it still requires uh, work um, from leadership, but also from, uh, from within. Um, sometimes uh, the simplest things are the problem. The English language is a problem. Um, not everybody is comfortable uh, with it, even though it has improved uh, drastically, I must say. And when you, when you compare uh, the general level of English uh, 10, 5 years ago, it's, it's much, much better um, um, as it is uh, today. So this is no longer a major concern, but still perhaps a, a, a minor um, concern. Um, Yes, it is true, visiting professors, by definition, come and go. Um, uh, but the new cohorts will, uh, will come. And uh, it has been our experience that um, um, individual exchanges never cease, so to speak. So uh, once a visiting professor is no longer a visiting professor, we still maintain contact, whether that person is on another continent or. Um, or elsewhere. So um, the spark that is the visit of uh, that particular professor at, at the university um, is the beginning um, of something that doesn't really have to end um, when uh, the, uh, the particular tenure, uh, tenure ends. Um, so um, internationalization at home is a challenge and uh, it does uh, intervene with uh, people's comfort zone. Um, it is sometimes uh, awkward to, uh, again, to, to think out of the box and to, um, to try to uh, instill certain uh, processes and certain mentality in people, but this is, uh, again, a necessary concomitant uh, in surviving. Uh, on the international stage, and uh, as IDUB is essentially a competition uh, for us, it's uh, um, of course we would like to be uh, among the first ten. Uh, mathematically, there are only ten seats there, um, so uh, it's a, it's a tall order, but it's a competition that we are very happy to, to embark mm -hmm. on. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And if I may ask, and that 
also I would like to to ask uh, the other panel members when they um, uh, address this question. Um, what role do, do your students play in this? Do you involve actively involve the students in the EDUP program and uh, your efforts to, uh, as you indicated, to strengthen your internationalization at home practices? Um, are students actively involved in, in your um, EDUP program activities? Um, perhaps students as such not always, or I must say rarely, but doctoral candidates do. Um, and uh, we have allocated uh, part of the EDUB uh, funds uh, for grants for doctoral candidates uh, um, on top of the standard grants that we have for young researchers and for, uh, for advanced researchers. Um, and uh, in terms of internationalization, uh, I think, uh, again, what I'm going to say will probably sound familiar to, um, to the other panelists and, and to the audience. Um, very often students, uh, at least as has been our experience, are reluctant to internationalize properly, such as uh, take part in mobility programs, because uh, they are um, bound by uh, work contracts, for example. They work. Uh, to support themselves, uh, and as such, they um, they are not as eager to uh, make full uh, advantage of uh, Erasmus exchange or similar exchanges as we would like them to be. Uh, perhaps short-term mobility is the answer to to that problem. Uh, to that to that problem. Uh, perhaps the the age of uh, long-term mobility uh, semester or an entire year um, are gone and uh, short-term mobi mobility is, is the answer. So students are not as involved as we would like them to be, but again, this is something that we're working on. Yes, the, the last point about um, the um, uh, difficulty of students to be physically mobile is an, another argument to uh, take your internationalization at home strategy seriously and, and develop um, the kind of structures and activities that allow all students to be part of the changes that are taking place. Professor uh, uh, Dashikovsky, what is the internationalization at home strategy and practice of your well, university? Maybe I will refer also to this PhD students. Of course, as everyone here probably in this room, we have uh, extra scholarships for motivating PhD students. We also engage these international PhD students to come to visit us. Uh, regarding the regular students, well, the two years, uh, two last years were actually gone due to pandemia and, and it was really very difficult to, uh, to engage students uh, distantly or remotely. But we are starting to think about these uh, problems once again. Uh, so we are initiating the, uh, the master thesis programs and, uh, and bachelor thesis programs that would be more oriented on problem solving uh, regarded to the tra transition of our region from the coal to the, uh, to the future, let's say no one knows which one, but apparently uh, the science and, and, uh, uh, and teaching or uh, gaining new experiences, this can be a nice industry of the Silesia region. So we would like somehow to, to engage all of the people in this idea and to, to, to promote this. Of course, we are putting a lot of emphasis on the international collaboration also uh, through the scientific writing. So we have uh, groups uh, who are collaborating with partners from abroad and we are really happily welcome every publication that has uh, foreign groups inside as, a, as a members and, and I have to tell you that this number really increased over the last two years. So even the pandemic was not able to stop the, the individual collaboration from, from using the Teams or other platforms. So this was really working uh, nicely. We have also a pro program that is really designed for the mobility of our staff members. I can tell that this program is uh, really very nice because it provides you with more money than NAVA or any other agency in Poland. So they are simply going abroad for three months to renowned institutions and we are really hoping that they will be back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, understandable focus on doctoral candidates with some reflections on, on um, the uh, a bachelor and master level uh, that uh, is of importance um, and we might um, also in the discussion with the um, 
with the audience, come back to what does international, uh, internationalization at home actually stand for. Um, and maybe, Professor Martos, you could um, uh, reflect on your university's experience, strategy, uh, challenges when it comes to internationalization at home. At home. Um, few things. Um, start, uh, starting with the um, guest lectures and guest visitors. Uh, I mean, of course, they are short term, but uh, we should think about taking uh, as much as possible from the outstanding scholars coming to our institutions. So in our case, we proposed the um, lectures not only for the, uh, let's say, narrow group of its own discipline, which sometimes it's our case, we love to speak uh, to, to members of our research community uh, and exchange our ideas, but we, uh, we proposed the um, meetings with our PhD uh, candidates in order to discuss their research proposals or ideas for research. Um, if we speak about the um, excellent researchers coming to, to our institutions, um, I mean, it's the added value, how to, uh, how to exchange views on the research proposals. That's the first idea. Um, how to mobilize, uh, mobilize um, in, uh, internationalization at home. In our both program, the mobility program and the micro grants, we ask um, those um, making use of these uh, resources um, to collab collaborate uh, um, through the visits uh, to the um, top universities with uh, the, the best scholars and, I'm sorry to say it, to come back with uh, the excellent paper, so uh, this is not a simple visit. We expect to, uh, our scholars to be back with the publications. Uh, and I truly believe uh, that uh, the visit, um, the, as I said, up to three months to the leading universities always uh, bring an added value in terms of contacts uh, and also uh, ideas for both research and publications. If it goes to students, um, we have allocated our resources to uh, scholarships for the best students and also money for um, organizing conferences and workshops um, led by students. And uh, this kind of meetings are very useful always because I just came up uh, with the idea that I'm going to push them a little bit to involve our partner universities for, for, from Arcus in order to make this kind of conferences uh, more international uh, and uh, comparing these both um, resources from EDUP and European Alliance, uh, we can uh, make uh, this kind of student-led activities even more international. So just an idea from now. Thank you very much for... Uh, for the new input. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, maybe I will try to be uh, slightly controversial. Uh, I don't like the concept of internationalization at home. I think that th this concept should belong to the past in the sense that uh, it still is connected to this view that internationalization is something which is, you know, an additional aspect of uh, the functioning of the university. And we send people out, we bring someone uh, to our uh, university, we ask them to... If, from the perspective of the Uni European Universities Initiative, if we are really thinking of building pan-European campuses, uh, our student or our researchers should feel at home in Krakow, in Bologna, Edinburgh, Madrid, Paris, uh, Leuven, and wherever else uh, Una Europa universities are located. Uh, we, are, we also live in the world in which we do not necessarily have to physically bring someone to Krakow to take part in the, take part in the educational process or collaborate research-wise. I think that's one of the very positive things coming out of, of the pandemic that we've learned how to collaborate virtually. Uh, and for instance, Una Europa had this virtual mobility in emergency where 
hundreds and hundreds of students from all eight universities back then participated in online courses uh, um, from all eight universities. Uh, but this shows that, that we, I think, live now in a different world uh, in which uh, we should not think uh, of the way we function in terms of home and abroad, uh, you know, a post-institution and, uh, uh, and where we go to visit an institution, uh, at least as a, a mental exercise or, or as a thought experiment we should start thinking differently that uh, that internationalization is maybe even we should get rid of of this word and and say okay we just collaborate with our partners everywhere uh, and the goal is for uh, our students our researchers to feel at home everywhere uh, and the important thing is sustainability of those formats and the structures because if they will be sustainable uh, uh, both financially and in institutionally, then, then the change will occur. Uh, we will have better education, we will have better research projects. And uh, I remember just, just one last sentence, I remember the first meeting of Una Europa I attended, uh, and it, this was the kind of the very beginning of establishing the, the alliance. <clears throat> and uh, I think that uh, uh, the then president of Paris, Pantin sur Bon Georges Haddad, uh, said that his dream is uh, for a student in Paris in 10 years. When he enrolls at uh, uh, Sorbonne, he at the same time becomes a student in Krakow, Bologna, Levin, uh, Berlin, and other universities. So, so this is this is what a European university means, and uh, and and I think this is a, a nice picture, showing the dream. But uh, what are we without dreams? So I think we should keep sure. dreaming. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you for this um, important uh, reflection. But as you indicated, it's a dream. So I would argue that internationalization at home is still a very important concept because. Um, whether I go to my university or your university, that are also a member of, for example, the Guild, many universities are active, and you talked about hundreds of uh, students participating in. Um, but um, in all universities, also your university, there are students that have not that kind of experience and have not been embedded in this uh, understanding of uh, intercultural um, uh, value importance of being part of an international community. So universities have to constantly make sure that as much as possible, all students will have the same experience or at least comparable experiences when it comes to the, the international dimension of the arena and the, um, um, the science community that we're all part of. So uh, I wish we could say it's, an, it's something of the past, but I'm, I'm afraid we're not there yet. Uh, but um, um, yes, yeah, sure, please but go ahead. If, if, I, if I may, because I think that words have power uh, in the sense that if we construe it like, you know, there is internationalization at home, then, then I think that the perception of those students who uh, um, otherwise cannot take part in any kind of international collaboration or would have no international experience would say would feel that you know it's something artificial so i'm not saying that we should not do that uh, but uh, we should not put emphasis on it as you know one mm, isolated unit this is a part of a broader whole and this whole is you know living together and working together and experiencing things together in a broader uh, international structure. Thank you. We'll continue the discussion after the session. Uh, but now I want to invite the audience um, to uh, raise their questions or observations or comments. Um, please, um, anyone in the audience who would like to uh, either uh, raise a question to one or more of the panelists or uh, would like to uh, share uh, some of your own experiences in uh, this important uh, area of um, uh, enhancing collaborations with the global scientific community. 
Yes. I'm, yes, Plus I comment. see a hand. Um, I, so I, I don't see we the have person two because I look into can the you light, but, but can use you give the microphone. the microphone? Yes, please. And can you introduce yourself and then raise your question or comment? Yes, I'm, I'm Marek Fick from, from Poznan University, uh, steering committee of Edup. Just, just one comment. When we talk about internationalization at home, it's certainly research, journals, publications, collaboration in research. When we send people out and we receive people here, scholars, and when we collaborate, it's usually focused on research. We need journals and we need articles. And specifically, when we look at uh, indicators of EDUP, we remember the indicators. The toughest ones concern uh, journals, especially top journals, the upper 10% in Scopus or the upper 10% in, in Web of Science. So research is everywhere. And when we talk about collaboration with a global community, this global community is research community. We, we talk about publications, we talk about the jo jo joint projects to get money, to have publications. Publications are everywhere. So one more, one more dimension of this internationalization at home is just publishing an international collaboration publishing it good in good global journals, which is not so much obvious in Poland, even though it might be obvious uh, in many parts of the world. So we need to repeat and repeat again. Globalization of science, global journals, global publications, international collaboration as writing together. Just very short comment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any of the panel members who want to respond to that? Uh, I just want to say that, of course, I agree about the research community, and it's my understanding of internationalization of our uh, research activities. However, uh, I would join you with, uh, with the idea of thinking about our students' community uh, in a global way. And uh, I agree that um, this is my dream as well. Uh, I thought, uh, when we joined Arcus, I thought I want my student in five years' time to think about themselves, that they are part of a, a European family of our partner universities, and not only a part of uh, University of Wrocław, which is, of course, close to my heart, closest. Uh, but uh, uh, this uh, shouldn't be related uh, just to one semester mobility. The international uh, collaboration of students should be uh, added to our uh, daily activity in terms of introducing a new uh, methods of uh, teaching, like blended uh, uh, teaching, hybrid, etc. So the students know the other uh, international students from the very beginning in uh, each and every course, and not only once uh, in a while, while going to, to the semester Erasmus uh, abroad. So just a comment. Thank you very much. Thank you um, for this further elaboration of internationalization at home. Um, and I can um, just share a, an experience um, with you uh, from, from Norway, where the government about um, 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, introduced uh, the, 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 the structure of center of excellence in education. And one of the requirements for, uh, and universities, colleges could apply for uh, getting a center of excellence in education, one of the requirements was to have uh, a strategy for uh, stimulating students to develop uh, projects. And some of the most uh, remarkable products, innovative products, also when it comes to stimulating the understanding of the role and importance of internationalization as a foundation in teaching programs, in um, innovation, in, in research, etc., came from students. And so there are ways in which we can uh, think um, um, without going into a discussion of whether the term internationalization at home is outdated, it, that might well be, but how to, to move forward to make sure that all students, whether they're physically mobile or not, get the same experience, certainly in the EDUP universities where, uh, as we all agree, such a uh, progress is going on when it comes to the collaboration with the scientific community. Is it, for example, uh, already a practice in EDUP universities that visiting scholars give public lectures for the whole university or for specific faculties or maybe even for the whole um, uh, region? 
Um, and if so, um, what are the experiences um, also when it comes to the, the feedback uh, achieved? So how can you use the success, the progress in the enhancement of um, collaboration with the scientific community also to further stimulate this uh, attitude and cultural change in your institution, even though um, it's not always seen as a huge problem, but still there are differences in the way in which various communities in your universities experience uh, and also can profit from the progress that you've made uh, in, the, in the EDA program. Are there any other questions? Um, I see I another hand there. I'm glad we have more and more questions. Ladies and gentlemen, in the meantime, just to encourage you, those of you who are watching us online, you can also ask questions. Those will be conveyed to us during the session, this one and the ones that follow. Sir. Przemysław Wojtaszek, Ademickiewicz University. Uh, still internationalization at home. Uh, I think that this is a, a little bit, I would say, national problem. Uh, because what we are, uh, I think that this is a kind of misunderstanding or uh, uh, parallel thinking or, or something like this. Because uh, what we are really should think about is uh, to think how our universities are prepared for internationalization at home. And this is something completely different from sending someone abroad. And this is something, and I am afraid to say it, uh, that this is national problem because there is nothing in the requirements from the Polish Accreditation Committee uh, that uh, the Polish universities are required to be prepared for internationalization. They are always questions like here, so how many students went abroad, how many researchers went abroad, how many, we are mobility, so the mobility is a question, and uh, the best answer is the mobility running out uh, in the uh, direction abroad, but n n no one is asking how we are prepared for it. And uh, I think that at least in Poznan, uh, the two initiatives which uh, were the online lectures, or lecture series rather, we are always asking the lecturers to uh, uh, come into contact with PhD students and come into contact with students. So uh, in addition to, to moving into the research-based learning or, or, or uh, programs of studies like this, we are also asking students and asking PhD students to interact with all the lecturers which, who are coming online but the lecture series are always organized by faculties, but they are open to all the students and all the PhD students. So this is one of the examples. Of course, for the physical presence of students or PhD students, there are also some organizational issues which can be done. So some kinds of welcome centers and all the uh, facilities which allow students to blend a little bit more to um, uh, experience the intercultural studies or uh, working within the international context. This is something which is really difficult to do at home and this is something which needs to be done to make our universities more hmm, host uh, or more visitor friendly, uh, or especially in international context. Very important comment. Anyone would like to respond? A question is always good when it makes the panelists speechless for a while. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I mean, um, the, the issue of internationalization at home certainly raises a number of questions and, and kind of reflections. So that's definitely something I would recommend to, to include uh, in the uh, further development of EDIP. And one um, maybe experience elsewhere that might be uh, of relevance to look at is, is Germany, where the German Rectors Conference for more than 10 years now has organized uh, accreditation of the internationalization of, of universities and Fachhochschulen in Germany with clear also indicators uh, related to the area of internationalization at home. As an experience, um, not of course as a blueprint or, or as, a, as a model, but how does 
this uh, apparently controversial or multi-interpretable notion that um, uh, in Poland um, has not as, as um, matured maybe as in, in, in Germany because amongst other things is a accreditation process. How does it um, uh, relate to the overall national and institutional strategies in internationalization? Might be something to, to look at uh, further. Um, are there any other questions, um, um, assuming that we will further develop the, um, the, our, our uh, discussions and ideas about internationalization at home uh, afterwards? We still have time for a few crispy, piercing questions, so. Uh, my name is Arkadiusz Wojs from Wrocław Tech. And from a tech university, I have a question to comprehensive universities. Uh, when we measure success uh, through the strive to internationalization and global impact in both research and education, maybe, do you see any um, rele do you see re equal relevance of internationalization and global impact for all disciplines, of whom you have more than tech universities, or are there certain problems, challenges, difficulties? in striving for internationalization and, and at the same time keeping university coherent and equally happy, satisfied and harmoniously developing. Yes, the comprehensive universities. Um, all four are comprehensive, so <laughs> who wants to start? Yeah, I, I, may, I may try to. Uh, I think that it's not only in the context of internationalization, uh, but generally in the context of the functioning of the university, that we need to realize that there are differences between the different domains of science, and they vary, you know, from the way research teams are organized, because you have big research teams in the natural experimental sciences, with completely different research culture than when you, you know, go to, uh, I don't know, uh, people specializing in, uh, in, in the ancient philosophy, for instance. They usually sit in, in a chair and just think. Uh, and so they do a completely different, uh, different thing and completely different methodology, different research culture. Then when it comes to measuring success, Again, not necessarily in the context of internationalization, but just to uh, understand how well our researchers are doing. There are huge differences uh, between, uh, let's say, medicine and, and, and the natural sciences on the one hand, and most of the social sciences and the humanities on the other. Uh, for instance, one, because I'm active in three different disciplines, one of them being law, uh, there is no uh, scientific data or journal database which would have any uh, reasonable picture of the uh, the quality of publications and so 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 you cannot really looking at international databases you cannot assess the quality of of legal scholarship uh, not only because law is quite uh, local, so there is a lot of publications which are devoted to, to, to the local uh, uh, legal systems, and they are extremely important because they influence those legal systems, but also because most of the of, 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 of law publishers do not want to enter Web of Science or Scopus, but because they don't have to, they get the money they want from elsewhere. And, so, so this is, there are big differences. And when it comes to internationalization, uh, I think that the same, or maybe the, the differences are smaller than in the other areas. In the sense that we see the same eagerness and willingness to participate in international collaboration, whether you speak to uh, a, a biologist, a lawyer, or a philosopher. Uh, maybe they need different kinds of tools to help them to engage in this kind of uh, cooperation because in the case of the natural sciences and the big teams you need big, fund, big, big funding, uh, um, you need access to, to expensive equipment, so, so, so this must be organized in a different way. In the case of a, of a lawyer or a philosopher, you just need to give them some money to, to meet somewhere 
uh, and to discuss the potential joint paper or, or uh, research project. Uh, so there are differences, but I think that they are smaller when it comes to initiating and animating international collaboration than when you think of other things which research culture, uh, the amount of funds needed, or uh, or, uh, or or how to measure the performance. Um, the question how to make every and each of our uh, member of community happy, it's one of the philosophical one, uh, but uh, how to engage people in the uh, in the research. Um, I think um, thanks to, to the finance, uh, financing from EDU, uh, we had the chance uh, to implement, um, I would call it step-by-step -step, uh, um, method for those who, ha who have never applied for grants. To start with the micro grants, to develop the first uh, internationally recognized article, and to step-by-step go towards the um, world-recognized um, scientific community. So, I mean, of course, the disciplines in a comprehensive university, we are lucky to have, uh, in some cases, more than 20 disciplines in one university, which means that we have different way of working because uh, not everyone is working in a big research teams, uh, having support from the, let's say, more advanced scholars. Um, but um, working as a research university, we have the chance to, um, to give the helping hand to those who are not uh, that advanced. But I truly believe that through this step-by-step -step method and financing the, the small grants, we can push uh, uh, all of us to, to do better um, and be more recognized. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Just a very short answer to the question, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, yes, I think that there are uh, discrepancies between uh, disciplines in a comprehensive university. If uh, you are a professor of 19th century Polish literature, you certainly have fewer opportunities to uh, disseminate your research uh, internationally. Um, but fewer does not mean none, so um, it, it will be difficult to compare that to a biologist or to a migration researcher, but, uh, but that should not uh, confine one to um, not thinking internationally and, uh, and not disseminating uh, research at an international level. So discrepancies, yes, but not, uh, uh, not singling anyone out uh, as uh, completely 100% non-international, I think. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, before we come to um, the final reflection uh, of the panel, I would like to um, further uh, elaborate and then both referring to this last point as well as to something that was mentioned about management. The, the work on your global strategy uh, when it comes to working with um, the, the scientific community um, as well as the, the, the general EDEP stra strategy requires top-down as well as bottom-up uh, successes and activities and, and uh, contributions. Now from your perspective, as being involved in the leadership, in other words, the top-down um, requirements and uh, um, contributions to the development and implementation, operationalization of the EDOP program. If you would have, um, uh, let's say, the opportunity to, to change some of the conditions or to improve some of the conditions under which you have to work to realize uh, the top-down contribution, the leadership contribution, the managerial contribution. What uh, would you like to do? In other words, where do you see some constraints that you uh, would would um, uh, prefer to to um, to change so that you uh, have a more effective way of uh, fulfilling your role in this? Um, can I start with uh, with you, Professor Lewandowski? Yes, I think that the communication scheme is very important so to get through the, the lower levels of the university. And uh, we are doing this by the so-called newsletter. This is maybe a primitive and, and very naive form, but actually it gets to everyone by email. So um, let's say we are communicating all the initiatives or the ongoing uh, problems with the EDUP through this newsletter. 
But we are also putting our ear on the phone. We, ha we are very happy to have Veronica with us today, and she is really calling those people and asking, how are you, what are you doing, and do you think uh, we can improve something? So we have this from bottom up and top bottom approach uh, on both ways. And of course, we discuss a lot about those different issues that are appearing. But uh, uh, improving these things uh, is always about the communication. It's not only the EDU, because the EDU was only a part of the, of the business. I would say we have also other programs that are, let's say, reinforcing EDU or vice versa. So it's, it's really important that everyone uh, knows what's going on. And this is difficult. This is difficult. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. This is, of course, um, uh, something we all agree upon. Communication is crucial. But I was thinking more of some of the um, structural features of um, the way in which uh, the leadership um, and governance structures in Poland are organized and um, the the kind of barriers or challenges that you face in, in your role in the in the EDA process. So in addition to communication and the way in which you have managed to, to uh, improve the uh, communication with all the um, actors involved. If I may, because uh, we, during the realization of our EDA project, we have made such a change. Uh, so initially, when we established our seven priority research areas, uh, a lot of autonomy uh, was given to uh, the self-steering committees of those uh, areas. Uh, and of course, it, it resulted in good things, because people got to know each other. They, um, they started understanding that you know there are people at a different faculty or in a different institute working on a similar issue. Uh, they established contacts, so it was very good to overcome inter-institutional barriers. On the other hand, what we realized uh, was that uh, they tended to finance a lot of extremely small, sometimes extremely small, but rather smaller projects. Uh, and at this moment, so, so, so the autonomy resulted in you know, uh, a lot of small things going on, important things. I think also very important for this cultural change and understanding how universities, uh, uni a university can work together. Uh, uh, but not many initiative, bottom-up initiatives uh, uh, looked like they, 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 they had a chance to turn into a, a center of excellence or something like that. So at this point, uh, we decided to, uh, to change a bit the scheme to leave it, roughly a half of the funds for those bottom-up initiatives, uh, but, uh, but to use the other half to, to think of what we call the flagship projects. Of course, the way they were established was also bottom-up because there was a kind of competition uh, for them, but uh, in the criteria and the framework we created, the insistence was on uh, putting together something which is more permanent, uh, which may turn into an important research or collaboration center. Um, and uh, well, we will see in a year, I think, how, how it works. But the, the first reactions are, are quite positive, so, so, so we will see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but you feel that um, in, in, in what you describe, the kind of adaptations that uh, were necessary were, were able um, to, to be realized? Uh, I, I think that uh, because this is a, a, the question of the balance uh, between top down and bottom up, uh, and we might have been, you know, dreaming too much at the beginning. Believing in the ability of, uh, of, for the people, for the researchers, for uh, for uh, the, the professional staff uh, to organize, to self-organize themselves, uh, to to have the ability to communicate in such a way that you know they will uh, they will establish something really new, uh, really fascinating, really innovative. Uh, and in some cases they did, but generally speaking, uh, we thought that 
we need to move this balance a little bit towards top down it's not fully top down it's not like you know the uh, director decided that we should have those flagships and no others uh, uh, but this kind of and i think that this is what management should do when when we realize that not everything is going as we uh, expected uh, the decision was to to use the instruments uh, we had uh, to try to instigate, let's say, a, a slightly different structure which we believe will be more beneficial uh, for the university. Ladies much. and gentlemen, we started ahead of time. Let's make sure we don't run behind now. <laughs> Closing remarks, please. Yes, but would it be possible for the final two universities to briefly reflect on this? Because I think it's an important issue. Lunch can wait two minutes. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll make myself very, very brief then. Um, University of Łódź is a decentralized university, so considerable autonomy must be given to the deans of the 12 faculties in the 13th faculty, which is a branch in Tomaszów Mazowiecki. Uh, so it's not a linear, top-down approach. Um, exact and experimental science, uh, sciences are a minority at our university, yet they require the most funding for their research because of the, uh, the characteristics of uh, experimental uh, laboratory uh, research um, and also uh, planning ahead is not always uh, a possibility um, this year we allocated uh, a certain chunk of, of EDUB funds uh, for uh, grants uh, for researchers uh, from Ukraine uh, where we invited tw 28 uh, researchers for Ukraine and we gave them grants this was something that could obviously not have been planned in advance so we, need, we needed to think on our feet thank you and then the final words, um, Professor Martyrs. Thank you very much. Uh, very briefly, uh, for me, um, looking at the EDUP uh, from the management point of view, um, the implementation of, I would call it, culture of application was something which, is ve which was very important. We uh, allocated the money through the open calls uh, in each of priority. And it was important because step by step we built the um, awareness that if you want to get money, you have to apply. Uh, it's important not only to, to, for the distribution of money within the EDUP, but also to build the um, attitude toward the external research, uh, resources, which are, of course, uh, very important for every um, university. So before uh, every, uh, before every uh, op open call for proposals, uh, steering committee has organized um, the, um, let's say, uh, meeting with the, with the members of community to explain the aims of the calls, etc. So every time we got more uh, people, um, you know, trying to understand the philosophy, uh, and of course there were more and more uh, applications, which uh, for me, uh, as a member of the steering committee, was of course uh, very, very nice. And uh, the last word. Um, we, I, I'm fully aware that it's still enormous work ahead, uh, but I keep my f finger crossed for all the 10 universities and the next 10, um, and let's do our best. Thank you. Yes, fingers crossed, that's what we all do, uh, and um, for all the 20 universities. And I want to thank you before uh, some final reflections. Thank the members of the panel enormously for their contributions, the introduction, but also sharing uh, experiences, points of view, uh, also some challenges uh, with us. That was extremely helpful, so thank, thank you. And to, to briefly summarize, uh, I know that um, the, um, the last speaker before lunch always has a challenge there, but um, I will not keep you away from lunch too long, but what we have um, uh, identified as important issues, perspectives, practices, experiences, First of all, the European University Initiative. Being a member of a European University Alliance opens up uh, possibilities for also the Polish uh, universities, as we heard in the panel this morning, to uh, develop uh, ideas, uh, practices, uh, initiatives that were maybe difficult to realize within your own university or even national setting. So that is an, an, an important experience that uh, we have to uh, look at very carefully uh, also when it comes to uh, linking it um, to the further development of the EDUP program. A second um, important area is this area of uh, structure and culture. There are some who say uh, culture eats structure for breakfast. 
I will not go into that uh, discussion, but it's clear that uh, for all universities, the uh, issue of attitude, of um, uh, trying to convince uh, your senior, your junior uh, researchers, involving students, creating changes in attitude is an issue. Uh, and it's an issue where all universities also have uh, noted success and uh, progress. And I think that relates overall to the data that uh, partly were reported by you, but are also um, uh, available through international databases. EDIP has had an impact on the 20 universities. Their productivity, um, certainly in the area of publications, has increased. They are uh, operating um, uh, because of EDIP differently than the other Polish universities. So there we see the impact of um, the efforts that uh, leadership has made to influence uh, the attitudes, the culture, uh, the positive influence, and the further work ahead. Because of course, um, as we uh, all said uh, when the EDIP program started, the kind of changes that the, the, the government, the ministry, the institutions uh, want to realize is not a change that you um, uh, can achieve in two, three years. Uh, this is a long-term investment that is needed and that we already see these important also cultural changes is a very positive kind of outcome already of the process. Uh, internationalization at home, yes, maybe a controversial term, but a term that represents, as also uh, was um, uh, clarified by the interventions from the audience, uh, a term that needs attention. What does it represent? What does internationalization at home present? Is there another way in which we can approach uh, and realize the ambition that not only the most active staff members and students who uh, do go abroad and who are part of, of global networks and who do publish uh, a lot or uh, move on to a PhD and postdoctoral position, but all students can profit from the changes that uh, the EDIP uh, program at uh, all the participating universities is already um, leading to and can be expected to, to, um, uh, to uh, continue. So the management, uh, the leadership notion is also important. Um, the flexibility needed to identify uh, what works and maybe what doesn't work that well, where were our expectations realized and where maybe did we see other, other outcomes than we assumed uh, we would see. Uh, it's important that the leadership, the management of the universities has the tools um, and not just the, um, the experience but also the tools to uh, uh, realize the changes in the setups, in the um, balance between bottom-up and, and top-down that are needed because the EDA program uh, requires important strategic choices of the universities and these choices cannot be made bottom-up only. You need a very important and strong uh, leadership component in there. And the experiences and examples we heard are rich, are important, and as I said before, I hope that we can uh, also informally uh, continue um, the uh, reflection on this global scientific community collaboration and the enhancement of that, and that uh, there will be uh, possibilities um, to exchange uh, experiences uh, and good practices also informally. And with that, uh, I want to thank the facilitator, again, the participants, and uh, assume that we now can move on to lunch. Thank you very much, Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to lunch, just two quick, quick things. We have put on display some of the more interesting projects so you can take a look, interact with project leaders and guests at the university here in the main hall. And of course, for those of you watching us online, please feel free to ask questions in the sessions that follow. Once again, Professor Peter Maassen, thank you very much for summarizing uh, the outcomes of our opening sessions today. And let me also thank the participants of our discussion, Professor Bartosz Brożek, Jagiellonia University, Professor Patricia Matusz, University of Wrocław, Professor Michał Daszykowski, University of Silesia and Katowice, University of Łódź, Professor Łukasz Bogutski. Once again, thank you so much. Enjoy lunch, ladies and gentlemen. And see you in 50 minutes.
Szanowni Państwo, zapraszam na lunch na dziedzińcu Fahrenheita.
Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be starting shortly. Kindly take your seats, make yourselves comfortable. We're starting in less than one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, time for the second panel of our Progress Review Conference. And I'm sure after a delicious lunch like today, climbing a staircase, a long circular st staircase or two, like the beautiful ones here at Gdańsk University of Technology, may be quite a challenge. So I hope everyone's enjoyed a cup of coffee after lunch. And time for our second discussion of the day, searching for the optimal research portfolio. Quite a question here. Changing the research profile given the university's potential, the current global challenges and emerging opportunities. The panel discussion will be, we have a change in the program. Eva Kondorossi is going to reach us in the next few minutes, hopefully, but Professor Lauris Holm Nielsen has agreed to chair this panel. Professor, kindly join me on the stage. And it is, let's welcome Professor again on the stage with a round of applause. <laughs> and again, it's the luxury of, of you, Professor, to choose the seat where you want to stay. And it's a big discussion point here. We are going to talk about what it takes to achieve a global leadership position in a number of fields is always limited. You cannot be, it should be on technically. So a good idea is generally to leave it as it is. Hopefully it should be working. Yeah, now it's working, great. So we're going to talk about the importance of particular research areas and how they evolve, as I understand it, developing ways and means to measure success. It's always good to be able to measure your success, but also failure, I guess. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you have to <coughs> bear with <coughs> me because I'm not Eva. Uh, Eva is, uh, I believe... That we have surely acknowledged by now. <laughs> She is somewhere in the air between Frankfurt and, and uh, Warsaw, I guess, or maybe Gdansk. She will arrive later, so when I should have been there, she will be there. So now I'm here instead of her. But um, back to the question. It's, of course, uh, impossible for any university to become leader in all subjects. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> yes. And even those who think they are, they are not. Uh, so uh, it, the challenge is to, be, to find out what to do. It would have left all of us jealous and frustrated if it were the case. Yeah. Uh, jealousy and frustration is not good feelings. <laughs> exactly. You should be proud and, of what you do. And I guess that um, if a, or when a university would, would like to, to become visible, uh, also visible globally, what they need to focus on is, is their own strengths. What is it that we do and we can do that nobody else can do as well as we can? And all universities, they do have features uh, that they are themselves proud of, and then they can show, maybe show off a little bit 
to the rest of the world. Professor, experience shows that preparation can potentially lead to over-preparation and some of the most interesting and engaging panels out there are those where you also need to improvise and improvise quite a lot. Yes. So let us hope you will enjoy the improvisation part yes. of it. Yes. Please choose your seat, make yourself comfortable while we'll introduce the remaining guests of this panel. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us for the second panel of the day, University of Warsaw, Professor Zygmunt Lalak. Let's welcome Professor with a round of applause. <laughs> Representing the Medical University of Łódź, Professor Lucyna Woźniak. Madam, please join us. AGH, University of Science and Technology, Professor Marek Gorgoń. Last but not least, University of Gdańsk, Professor Michał Harciarek. Madam, gentlemen, the stage is yours. The panel is uh, discussing how <clears throat> to search for an optimal research portfolio in changing or not changing the research profile um, relate, uh, relating to the potential of the university and maybe also positioning universities vis-a-vis -vis the global challenges. And as we all know, who knows? what the challenge is next year, because we have experienced global challenges that wasn't foreseen, the pandemic, the war in Ukraine, and so forth. But I think personally that any university can achieve a global leadership position um, in some disciplines, or at least become among is the centers of excellence globally in some disciplines. And I have one um, <laughs> concrete experience from my university. You probably know that we went through a major restructuring and also consolidation process with many mergers and so forth some uh, 15 years ago. And one of the suggestions from the dean of uh, social sciences was to rename uh, one of our institutions, uh, one of our institutes, we reduced the number of institutes to, from 110 to, to 20, some 25, 6. And he wanted to change the name of the Institute of Political Science to uh, Institute of uh, Public Administration. And of course, the institute or the staff, the faculty was resisting. They didn't want the change even in the name of the institute. And the dean said, OK, but why not? Because you are an institute of public um, uh, management, of public administration, plus some more. And the irony is that it, the name was not changed. But this year, in the science, uh, in the Shanghai ranking, this institute came out as world number one in public administration, even though they don't want to have the name. And so uh, I think it's an interesting experience because even though they did not want to be that, they are the best or they are very good in, in this field. So sometimes we need to be brave as uh, leaders in universities and maybe go against what the faculty think they want out of their comfort maybe. So uh, how do we find uh, these areas of excellence within the universities and how do we support them? See, my university would probably think that our medicine and some of our natural sciences were much more globally important than public administration. Um, but even in spite of that, public administration is visibly. It's, it's a, I suppose that public administration is also a national thing, like law of, often is. But still, it's possible to become globally visible in, in humanities and social sciences. It's not 
only something that science and technology and medicine can be. So, what do you do about it? Um, I, can you say something about what changes has happened? Uh, maybe, did you change anything? Uh, and why, um, how did you change, how, why didn't you change? So I think we maybe should start with our, our colleague from um, Professor Lalak from University of Warsaw. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. It is a great pleasure and honor to be here, to, to be in this uh, panel. Mr. Chairman, thank you for, for your attention, for addressing this uh, question to me first. Uh, I hope I won't cover all the interesting issues. I will leave something for my colleagues. Uh, well, first of all, I have to say that uh, I have to start uh, with the historical note, namely at the University of Warsaw, for the purpose of this, uh, of this uh, program, of the EDUP program, we have uh, identified five uh, research, priority research areas. And it turns out uh, the identification which we have performed a few years ago uh, was the correct one. I mean, I have to say that the idea behind the choice of the priority areas was actually the possibility of obtaining the uh, highest impact and highest progress within a finite within a finite time. So we have identified uh, five priority areas concentrated around various disciplines. The first one uh, is concentrated around biology, climate, uh, life sciences. The second one, exact sciences, so chemistry, physics, the issues of uh, new energy sources and uh, related. Uh, the third one is essentially uh, mathematics and informatics and large data sets, machine learning and so on, which also turned out to be very relevant over the last years. Uh, then the last two priority areas, they were concerned with the developments in humanities, uh, the fourth priority area, and uh, in social, social sciences. And it turns out the identification was the proper one because essentially all the major issues which have arisen over the last years, they somehow fit in at least one, if not more, of those, of those priority areas. Nevertheless, I have to say at this point uh, that, that this is the, the development of uh, scientific research at the University of Warsaw is a concerted effort. So it's not only EDUP. Uh, we are participating in many, uh, in many strategic programs. Uh, the, the overall objective of, of those programs being the, the strengthening of the international and, uh, uh, in general, the strengthening of the research position of the university, of the position of the university as the uh, research center. Well, we are also a member of the, one of the university alliances, so-called For, uh, For, For You Plus Alliance. Uh, we have other programs which, has, which are oriented towards the development of the, of the environment for doing uh, perfect science, so for the strengthening of, of the capacity of our administration and uh, to, towards uh, building the proper infrastructure at the university. However, among those programs, certainly the IDUP, IDUP is, the, is the program which is oriented towards excellent science. It's essentially as the way we are introducing, we are running the program, it is, it is all, about, uh, all about science, all about uh, scientific research. Uh, that's, 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 uh, that's one remark. So really EDUP, uh, EDUP and, uh, and uh, science is uh, synonym at the, university, at the University of Warsaw. Uh, having said all that, of course, we have observed over the years that the new issues have arisen. Well, the, the ones which we all know. So there is the issue of, uh, of pandemic, uh, there is your is the issue of the unrest uh, 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 along the Polish uh, eastern uh, border. There are, there are various challenges which are arising as, as the life goes on. And we had to find a way to address those issues, those, those issues who are pressing, which are pressing. And also, we are, we are addressing the issues arisen by our colleagues. I mean, 
by people who, who identified the interesting uh, new research areas, research topics, research projects, and uh, expected from us that we extend certain support to, towards, uh, towards those issues. So we have invented essentially two vehicles to address such needs. Uh, first one is sort of institutional, namely we allow for creation of, uh, for creation of center of, ex of excellence. Uh, uh, we have planned the centers of excellence from the beginning, so we were thinking of at least one big center of excellence uh, per each uh, uh, research, priority research area, but turns out, it turns out that the, the life, uh, life uh, um, is more complicated, that instead of, a, of one center, so-called imposed on the, on the whole structure, it is, uh, it is uh, better to listen to the needs and to create uh, small centers which eventually, uh, which eventually join the forces and we hope uh, at the end will come under the auspices of, the, of, this, of, this big, uh, of these big centers which were planned from the very beginning. So those centers, they allow us to address uh, the programs, the projects which are interdisciplinary and are, which are realized by the teams which do not fit into single uh, university, university units, organizational units, but the departments of institutes. And we have seen such a need and we, uh, we address that need this way. Those are at this point uh, informal associations of people uh, to which we are assigning certain amount, uh, certain of, um, amount of money, we are assigning certain in, uh, administrative support, and we are watching the way they develop, they, they, they run their own, their own projects. Uh, well, of course, the big, the big centers, they, also, they are also at work. They are addressing the issues which are sometimes uh, risky, which need special attention, which need special understanding. And those are also, also pretty successful centers. Though, those, are, those are the centers which uh, host uh, uh, postdocs and the future leaders, which we are appointing on the basis of the, of the EDUP, EDUP funds. By now, we have appointed in all those centers about 30 uh, researchers at the early stages of their careers. And we expect at least half of them to remain with us at the university to develop their own research groups and to pursue their research beyond, even beyond the limits of the, 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 the scope of the, of the uh, EDUP uh, project. And the second major vehicle, more individualized, is the series of so-called so new ideas uh, projects. So we have invented that series to address sort of individual ideas, not necessarily, uh, uh, not necessarily large group of groups of people, but well-pointed individual projects, individual, uh, well, as precisely as it is called, research, research ideas, um, sometimes which are arising sometimes spontaneously and uh, sometimes on the basis of, uh, of certain needs which uh, appear from the external, which are voiced by external agents. And this is a, uh, this is a great success. By now we have, uh, we have, uh, we have had about 300 uh, applications within three or four by now editions of this new ideas uh, program. And uh, roughly half of them got, uh, got uh, financed, at least, uh, yeah, I think between 30 and uh, 50. Uh, percent uh, of the success of the success rate, depending somewhat of the character on the on the area uh, where the programs uh, that the projects are formulated, where the projects lie, and this is this is a great uh, this is I think the great thing. Uh, this this works really well, also because uh, it allows a wide audience, wide wide uh, membership in the EDUP program. Uh, by many people from various institutions, from various places, which are somehow located somewhat outside this uh, main research priority, priority research areas. And uh, due to the circumstances, sometimes also in this, in this uh, not so centrally, centrally oriented areas, the nice interesting ideas, nice interesting and pressing programs uh, got formulated. 
uh, we have uh, we have organized this uh, this uh, this new program. Uh, well, we are trying to to direct to orient slightly differently each issue, each edition of those programs. So there was an edition which was uh, oriented towards young scientists, up to seven years after after the PhD. There was. There was an addition which was oriented to the projects which are directly related to what is going on beyond our eastern border, so Ukraine, new ideas, Ukraine. But there were also the, the regular editions which were uh, wide open for any type of, uh, any type of uh, new idea. Well, those are the new, the new vehicles, the ones which we have slightly modified during the, during the running of the, of the uh, EDUP uh, program. In addition, we have uh, we have uh, we are running uh, other projects. Like, for instance, we are inviting uh, mentors and uh, we are forming tandems of excellence between Polish researchers and uh, foreign researchers. And we are in this area. We also have, have certain successes. We managed to 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 uh, create bonds with uh, established scientists from the. US from California Institute of Technology, from established uh, European European centers, we are, we are receiving visits from distinguished by distinguished scholars. Not well. Over the last four months, we uh, we were visited by uh, one uh, very active still uh, Nobel Prize winner, but by two Nobel uh, uh, field medalists. So essentially. Uh, those more standard uh, ways of uh, enhancing the quality of uh, our research, they are also at work and uh, there is a lot of activity also in this, in this area. Uh, well, I hope I will go to the details perhaps somewhat later. So I guess that's as much for the first round. Thank you, uh, Professor Lalak. Um, I think, of course, I have many questions for you, but I think we should take a round first and then we can maybe have a discussion and ask questions. Um, I, I think I will change to the other side and ask uh, Professor Hasiarek um, yes, to, yes. yeah. to tell us a little bit about how you, uh, how do you go about um, changing, if you are changing, the research profile of your university. Um, is it all bottom-up, or do we also have a mm -hmm. strategic view mm -hmm. uh, to it? Okay, so f first of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm really delighted to be here and represent the University of Gdańsk. Um, and uh, when I was listening to my uh, to the previous speaker, uh, I thought that when you started from the hi historical perspective, I also start from the hi historical perspective of the University of Gdańsk because uh, university was quite uh, kind of diversely distributed, uh, especially during uh, communism, because who usually rebel students. Okay, so now uh, we are trying to join uh, and put all these pieces uh, that belong to the university, like different unis, uh, faculties, and so on, uh, together in one campus. And uh, that's, a, I think, a very good example of how we uh, try to, uh, right now, conduct interdisciplinary research. Uh, so this is definitely something that we are focused on right now. And uh, hopefully, this will bring uh, important contribution to, to the science. So uh, the question about changes is, uh, and how we address the changes, uh, is that uh, we definitely uh, put all the effort, or at least uh, a lot, to uh, conduct interdisciplinary research uh, within the university, so between different disciplines. And uh, I'm actually, um, uh, from my education, I'm a psychologist, neuropsychologist. Uh, so I guess uh, maybe this is the reason why I represent the, the University of Gdańsk because I represent interdisciplinary research uh, within the university because we uh, collaborate as a, a faculty of social uh, sciences and psychology, uh, specifically with uh, biology, for instance, uh, chemistry, uh, but also uh, Medical University of Gdańsk. Uh, technical university uh, as well, uh, because we cannot uh, design specific 
programs uh, to conduct research without help of uh, basic science. Uh, we cannot analyze uh, specific uh, information without, uh, without the help of, uh, let's say, uh, MDs and so on. Uh, and especially uh, right now, uh, the, the thing that I'm doing is uh, to try to answer how we all, or why we all behave the way we behave and how the brain works. And you can't simply do it without help uh, of uh, different disciplines. So this is definitely the aim uh, where we are um, going and uh, trying to ask uh, for help uh, also. So uh, we are just looking for collaborations uh, within the university, but also outside the university, uh, not only here in uh, Tri-City, uh, but also uh, we collaborate with different units in Poland, but also abroad. Uh, and uh, even right now at the, our, um, the Faculty of Social Sciences, there is a huge conference uh, um, on uh, social psychology and we have uh, many uh, guests uh, invited from different countries, not only from Europe, uh, there are uh, people who present research from Israel, from United States, uh, and definitely the research that has been done, especially since 2019-18, uh, uh, has highly contributed uh, to the, the, the academic discussion. Uh, in basically any any field. So I think this is when you go uh, and uh, just search in the internet, you can see that uh, in the uh, number of citations uh, from the University of Gdańsk, in the number of collaborations, uh, especially international collaborations. So uh, we did a, a kind of a analysis, uh, and it looks like uh, over 40% of papers uh, that has been published. Uh, uh, published since 2019, uh, uh, published uh, in collaboration with international institutions. So uh, this is definitely uh, the aim uh, that we would like to answer some basic questions, uh, but approach that uh, from different angles. So uh, also uh, from, let's say, social sciences and, uh, and other uh, perspectives. Uh, do it in collaboration with different universities and uh, one of the, I guess, good examples of that is the CU program that we have. Uh, CU, it's not like CU like bye-bye, but it's associated with uh, C uh, because uh, this is a, li a liaison of universities uh, that are uh, associated with the C uh, but are within the European Union. So uh, we have like right now six uh, universities uh, in that program and uh, there are three more to join us. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's a very, um, very good um, collaboration so far. It has been, uh, or has a huge promise. Uh, we meet basically like uh, every month, every uh, two weeks, depending on the discipline. Uh, and uh, we exchange information. It started basically uh, from the basic science and all that that is associated with the sea. But right now we address, again, as I said, previously, uh, the same questions from different uh, disciplines and different angles. Uh, so I think uh, this, uh, this is one of these evidences showing that uh, the University of Gdańsk is definitely uh, way more recognized than a few years, um, a few years before. Um, and uh, apart from uh, aiming to be a part of this uh, excellent, uh, excellence initiative, we also have certain programs that promote, um, let's say, uh, very, very good science uh, in the University of Gdańsk, and those programs uh, simply support those researchers uh, who apply for grants, especially international. Uh, I th I think, as far as I remember, we have five Horizon grants, um, and uh, the total sum of uh, the funds that we got is over uh, 1.5 uh, million euros. So uh, I think uh, this is, when you look at, the, at that data, this is the very uh, good example of how we develop and uh, where we are going to. And we also uh, have, uh, 
programs that promote uh, equal development, uh, which I think is also very important. So that, uh, let's say, when you come up with the issue of gender, okay, uh, we really try to uh, make it possible for everybody, uh, regardless whether this person is a woman, man, uh, with uh, any kind of physical disability or any kind of a problem, to have the same chance to study. So uh, while putting uh, all the faculties together during, uh, on one campus, we are also trying to design that in a way that also people with disabilities uh, have access to, uh, to basically every lab and can uh, take part in, in research. Uh, and we got more and more grants, which is uh, very easy to check. So, uh, so I think this is, this is another, uh, another example. Um, and uh, I, I really believe, so I'm proud to be, uh, first of all, uh, born here in this city, but also uh, be a part of, uh, of uh, the team at the University of Gdańsk. Uh, so uh, I cannot imagine simply uh, working at a different place because uh, I think I'm, I'm also a good example of uh, how you can develop, uh, starting from uh, a student and ending uh, all the time being at the same university uh, as a dean of uh, the Faculty of Social Sciences, uh, which just happened uh, like a few months ago. Uh, and uh, I always got the support. Uh, from, uh, from the university. Uh, and uh, coming to the question how we react to certain situations um, and adjust our research to what's going on around, uh, I think uh, pandemic is a very good example. And again, uh, not only basic science, but also social sciences. So we've done a lot of research uh, trying to answer some uh, questions how people react to uh, this or that situation, uh, why they react, uh, let's say, with anxiety, uh, why there is all this fear around uh, vaccination and so on. So uh, it's not only uh, populism, but it's actually uh, checked in uh, studies uh, that has been con have been conducted uh, uh, at our university, and the same with Ukraine. So, uh, of course, it's a huge European and world crisis, uh, but also it's uh, an amazing possibility, opportunity uh, to learn something from that. And uh, the, the thing is that we uh, hardly ever learn something from the history <laughs> because we still cannot prevent uh, such events like a war. Uh, but uh, still, this gives us some opportunities uh, to test some hypotheses that in uh, other circumstances would not be possible to test. And uh, for example, just coming back to, I don't know how, how much time I, I have left, but uh, okay, I'm just, just finishing. So just to give you an example. So uh, we collaborate, for instance, uh, with uh, um, uh, Ukrainian uh, Society of Neurology and uh, Neuropsychology. And uh, uh, I know it's, uh, uh, it, it may sound weird, uh, weird to some of you, but to address the question how the brain works and how we behave the, the way we behave, uh, we need to address this question from different perspectives. And of course, we uh, mm, design experiments. Uh, we use uh, neuroimaging and different techniques to, to do it. We do the testing. Uh, but also, we learn from, uh, let's say, patients who have neurodegenerative diseases. So patients uh, or people who age um, and how aging contribute to how we behave, but we may also learn a lot from uh, testing patients uh, who had uh, brain injuries due to uh, gunshots and things like that, or PTSD. All right, and uh, war gives us such a possibility. So we uh, collaborate with those units in Ukraine uh, who test uh, those victims uh, who had injuries in the brain, depending in which part of the brain, and we may actually do some things that have not been done before, or we may replicate some of the findings that have been found uh, using neuroimaging uh, right now uh, in uh, patients who had uh, 
uh, wounds in the brain. So uh, I think this is the first mm, uh, a good example of interdisciplinary research, but also uh, taking advantage of uh, some also sad situations that are uh, around us uh, reacting just immediately. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, and of course we could have a long discussion based on that, because when you refocus and use more energy, for example, in the research on brain damages, mm -hmm. uh, the question would be, do you take those resources from some other fields? But we will return to that uh, discussion. But I would just remind us all that this panel is first and foremost about how to be selective in terms of disciplines and how to rebalance uh, the profile of the university, e even in light of what happens without we, our, we cannot plan. Exactly. Nobody can plan a, a pandem pandemic or a war or things like that, but how do you rebalance the profile if you rebalance it? So now I think I'll turn to Professor Lucina Wozniak um, and to hear what is happening in Wuj. Uh, before I answer a question, um, I would put some uh, numbers. Uh, uh, Medical University in Łódź uh, had the uh, 20th anniversary this year and uh, has been created after a merge of two medi medical academies, uh, Medical Academy and the Military Medical Academy. Um, we are evaluated in three disciplines. Uh, all of them connected with the field of medical sciences and health sciences. It means that we have three faculties, all of them dedicated to the disciplines, more or less. Therefore, uh, we have two prior, prior, prior priorities. First of all, this area uh, priorities are prioritized. Uh, first one was connected with aging which we think is a real challenge, global challenge for future. And uh, with this, of course, chronic diseases, and this is the first area. The second area is connected uh, with public health and biomedical sciences. Um, so um, this is difficult to say about uh, changing the areas because they are connected, interconnected, each with other. They are inter interdisciplinary, so for operating properly in them, we need uh, specialists from different other fields. Therefore, collaboration is uh, quite crucial for us. I will talk about it la later. But uh, putting this na these numbers, uh, I want to go to uh, something that had forced us to remodel our work for two years. This is the pandemic. Uh, because uh, more than 70% of our staff, academic staff, these are also active clinical doctors. And they were involved, first of all, and we understand it, in a fight with the pandemic. The same is with our students, um, because uh, having this tradition of military, military uh, uh, medical academy, we have currently more than 700 students that are um, uh, getting uh, scholarships from the Ministry of Defense. And they, with their uh, teachers, with the academic staff, they were immediately completely 100% active only in fighting with pandemia. So this was the basis. Um, we were very scared at the very beginning uh, because of the conditions, but we started uh, following um, analysis uh, connected with uh, our situation. And the situation is that within these two years, the amount of papers from Q1 and Q2 increased almost 15%. Uh, the amount of uh, grants increased, uh, European grants increased uh, almost twice. And the second part, these are grants connected with COVID. Very broad uh, area of research that is connected with COVID. Among them, uh, also clinical trials, 
clinical studies uh, connected uh, with, with COVID. So uh, starting from that, I would like to say that uh, uh, we worked uh, quite uh, hard because we are not in the first group, but in the group that I can't call pursuit or pretending group. So we have to work much harder because our ambitions and our expectations are quite high. So we monitor uh, regularly um, uh, the achievements and we introduce several uh, uh, projects that are financially supported by the EDUBDAN money, but we also created kind of the uh, seed money, seed uh, fund at the, at the university where we decided to um, open opportunities for the most talented young generation, both students, PhD students, and the young researchers. We start from researchers, so I will tell you that uh, within our university we have 77 zero group that are uh, connected uh, within a so-called students, so, uh, students, um, um, students scientific society. These are small groups of students connected very often to, clinic, to clinics and want, who want to do research. So we support these groups with some pocket money for starting research. What's more, in the new institution in our, um, which we opened this year, uh, uh, funded by partially st structural funds, partially from our funds, uh, so-called BRAIN. Uh, uh, it it's, has no connection with BRAIN. It is just a research, a research uh, study in Polish. It's acronym of Polish uh, name. Uh, we decided to open students' research laboratories. We think that we have to invest in our students from the very beginning. Why? Because there is such a demand on the market of our uh, doctors, of our graduates, that it's very difficult to keep them at university unless they are involved in research and they taste the, the opportunities or find opportunities in studies. So we support um, our, our um, definitely the most talented and the most enthusiastic student groups uh, with some pocket money for the research and we open special laboratories um, dedicated for them for research projects. I must say that uh, there is quite interesting statistics because almost each of these students who finishes the university has at least one or two papers, research papers. So that's, that's, that's a good investment. On the level of uh, PhD students, we have several, several projects um, or uh, activities that support them. First of all, it is in individual mentoring. We offer to all people who are interested in applying for Maria Skłodowska Curie funds. Uh, we tutor them, we support them, we arrange for them some preliminary meetings. So we hope that uh, the first group of good uh, students going for Maria Skłodowska Curie uh, uh, exchange will uh, appear soon. Uh, I will, um, then I started to talk about BRAIN, about this, our center of excellence. This is organized in such a way that only people who have uh, projects which are inter interdisciplinary and international can apply for having uh, for location in this facility. It is really up-to-date, uh, state-of-the-art fa art facility, and we have several laboratories. I'm, I'm pleased to say that first two groups already work there. One of them is Polish-American in collaboration uh, with Faber and, uh, Bo and, and the Harvard School of Medicine. The second one is an is, uh, international group connected uh, with uh, the, uh, uh, center, um, center of Research uh, 
National, National Research Center in Bologna. So we have two, and there is a new call uh, which, uh, will be, which will start in a few days, where we offer long-term support for group uh, who pro provide really accelerating programs, uh, which involves international collaboration, which involves research and innovation program. We are very much uh, uh, interested in creating synergy between research and innovation and working in this knowledge triangle, education, research, innovation. So this is, this is, this is quite, uh, quite a good support, I think, for the groups. We expect also international uh, candidates uh, for uh, these this, this funds. Uh, so this is a kind of support uh, we do. We also uh, organized, uh, uh, based upon the chances that COVID gave us, and these chances are, as for all universities, this jump into online activity, hybrid activity. Uh, we started a lot of collaborations using the new tool uh, which is which has been given by the by the by the covid situation otherwise it probably took much much longer now uh, i can say that we participate in one of the european projects which i'm very proud of maybe it's worth to talk about it it's called alliance for life because it is a project organized by 13 um, leading uh, universities, medical universities or institutions in the eastern and, uh, uh, in eastern and central, eastern and central Europe from EU 13 countries. And this is second stage of the project uh, where we, for the first, in the first part of the project, we identified the major reasons of the gaps. And then we prepared uh, two white papers and the position paper, uh, which was um, um, presented uh, during EU, EU meetings. And now the project is changed into the research project. So we offer laboratories, our facilities to all partners, and our researchers can travel to 12 places around the Central and Eastern Europe to do joint uh, projects. Uh, I think this is, this is a, very, a very good initiative because the second edition of this, uh, of this kind of activity demonstrates that there is potential in building, in building a kind of uh, collaboration that is steady and that is uh, interdisciplinary. Because a situation of medical universities in Poland, as you know, is quite unique. We are quite, quite unique on the map of education in, in Europe, uh, having all these, only these three, three um, disciplines operating. But uh, what I can say, uh, out of uh, our 11, 11 European projects, in three of them, uh, we are also involved uh, with our artificial intelligence uh, approach used for uh, analysis of patients' data, analysis of high throughput, throughput technologies that are used. So uh, we are building this kind of, of collaboration, and we think that the primary definition of the prioritized uh, activities um, of the university is more or less more or less proper. So what we would try to do, if we analyze analyzing, for example, rankings, different rankings, uh, like ResearchCom, for example, that is analyzing the uh, personalities or researchers. Uh, we uh, identified several very interesting uh, areas within immunology. So now we try within our, our, uh, uh, our uh, priority uh, area, we try to build a sort of very strong group supporting them uh, in, the, uh, uh, in uh, 
building up strong group, but also in uh, collecting additional uh, knowledge, additional expertise that is required for interdisciplinary research. Because uh, our areas of, 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 of uh, uh, focus are interdisciplinary. Each topic there is interdisciplinary topic. We can't say that uh, we focus on philosophy, uh, we focus on uh, some of very specialized disciplines. We need tools, in, and these are interdisciplinary tools. We need uh, collaboration, and we build it. We also continue uh, our activity uh, in uh, the international, um, uh, international uh, programs, like KIC. In, we have uh, EIT Health. Uh, n knowledge of uh, of uh, knowledge uh, center of knowledge that we have and innovation, but uh, we also pr hope to join this this in the next call to the European European uh, Alliance uh, of uh, Universities. We have to remember that it's very difficult to place medicine into the university perspective. But I hope um, we will go with our second uh, area of, uh, uh, of a second prioritized area, healthcare and public health. We, with this, we will go to one of the existing already from the second call uh, alliances. And we started already discussions with them because it happened that we have a lot of programs from EIT Health together. So there is a basis to start discussion. Otherwise, as medical university, uh, we can't really find a wide platform to collaborate with uh, general universities having uh, many, many uh, different disciplines. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Wozniak. And then oh, our, our first round takes a little time, but nevertheless, we have time for, um, for you, uh, Professor Marek Gorgon. OK, thank you very much. Uh, and I would like to start uh, from a first important consideration. At the beginning of the new law after Constitution 2.0, we made a lot of discussion and we finally discussed the new structure of the university. But uh, our final conclusion was that we are going the way to make an evolution, not the revolution. So uh, we just identified some good and I would say bad uh, sides of our university, strong fields and drawbacks. And uh, we constitute such a mission and such a strategy that we will develop in a very harmonic way. So we keep the faculties, but on the other hand, we establish a new scientific centers. And it is our way. So it, it, it is a first consideration, yes? So what, what, is, what are our uh, strong side? First of all, we have uh, a very good link to the society, to the industry, to the local and uh, I would say global industry. And uh, it, it is why our budget is, consists of a subvention and of, of a big part which is coming from the industry sources. So it, so it is our strong field. On the other hand, we have uh, as maybe not enough money from the um, grants, from the projects, which is maybe our uh, drawback. Uh, on one side, we have a lot of candidates to AGH. Our limits are full, and we are on the right place when we make a ratio between the 
students and uh, the staff of the university, so we, we, we are simply in the good place. So we don't need to make any changes in this. On the other side, our international, internationalization is not very strong uh, point, yes? Uh, we are uh, doing uh, some, some uh, consideration about this, and uh, we, we have a first effect, but of course it is not easy to, to um, definitely change the strategy because we have a lot of candidates from uh, the south part of Poland and globally. And sometimes we consider that our candidates are better than from other countries. But in the doctoral school, we reach this year 20% of internationalization uh, in uh, the candidates group. Yes, so it is a, some, some kind of a progress. So uh, coming to the other important thing, how to, to solve the problem. The problem in, in, in Poland now is, in Kraków particularly, that the salary in the industry is very high, at the university is relatively small. So all people from AGH think about some uh, income, about uh, working in the industry. I mean about uh, our alumni, I think about staff. So it is a problem. How to address this issue? It is a real problem. Another problem in the Polish system is that the salary is relatively flat. So when you are coming from the group of assistants to uh, adjuncts and to the professor, we have some levels and there is a very little uh, differences between in one group, yes? So how to motivate people to work harder? It is an important question. And as you can compare the data from, I look to the Imperial College, yes? And in Imperial College, the salary is, consists of the three parts. The constant part, the part which is coming from activity, and the part which is coming from some social advantages when you are working there, yeah? So in Poland, we have these two, the constant one, and maybe this which is coming from the social benefits. So we definitely need the third one. So it, it was our trial to give some motivation part of a salary in our system. And I think it was successful. So we motivate people in such a way that we are asking about the good papers. And it is what Professor Kwiek said, that we need more good papers in good journals and more projects. So it is what we are thinking about. And I think with some success because the ratio of the paper in the top 10 journals is much higher. And the structure of the journals, it is much better. Yes, we, we lost many journals article uh, in the group of five points, 20 points, 40 points, 70 points. And on the other hand, we have an much more papers for, for 100, 140, and 200. So it is a good size. But it is interesting because the total, level, the total number of papers at the university is very stable. Just a few percent up. But the quality of the papers shift to the higher points after the motivation system started work and very rapidly. So I would say 30, 40% in the group of 100 and 200. So it is relatively good. I will be happy to show you some slide about this, but not today. Okay, so oh, it, is, it is one issue which was important for us and I think help us to make a better results of the evaluation pr process. And uh, we also think that we, we should address some, some, some gaps in our systems. What is our gap? That we have a very low ratio of success in the National Center of Science application. So we think that it will be good to give our research group some bridges. Some bridges to the better grants. 
So we offer the medium range grant, but the ratio of the success is more than 50% in that the university. So it, it is not too easy to take this grant, but it is a reasonable way, and if you want to improve your application next year, you can. Every year one uh, ability to make an application. And the next field, we think that uh, in that technology university, I think we are technology university, but in fact we are in a four uh, scientific fields and 17 dis disciplines. So it is not only, uh, it is also some science, it is also some uh, uh, societal science and so on and so on. So our curricula is quite wide. But we, we think the modern university of technology needs such a curricula. Because there are some aspects of uh, introducing the technology and uh, uh, which, needs to be, which needs to be coordinated with uh, psychologists and so on and so on. So we made such a curricula. And of course, in, in Krakow, we have a very strong market. So we have Jagiellonian University, many smaller universities. And uh, we have a Krakow Institute of Technology, which also has a part of the market. However, we think our mark is good, and we have a lot of candidates still. So uh, the, the next thing is to, to support the uh, research groups, to support the PhD students. In the world, we, we think that the PhD students have uh, a crucial role in the research. So we make a motivation system for uh, PhD students too. And the next step is to have a collaboration with the Student Science Club. And the Student Science Club, which we have several of these, has also some support from the EDU program. And uh, it is a very effective way to uh, make uh, new ideas into the research, I would say. Uh, and uh, another strategy is that we address the IDUP uh, funds to uh, all of the fields scientific fields and all disciplines. So we would like to give a chance for everyone from the community to apply. So it is another point in our strategy. And the equal rights in the process of the application, transparency, it is also important for us. And I believe we got the success with it. And at this moment, we are in the middle of the process, so it is not of the end. We got some successes. We still think there are plenty of things to improve, but we are quite happy at this moment. Thank you. Thank you very much to all four. I think that it's obvious that, of course, um, um, you are also um, addressing some of the other aspects of, of EDUP not only how to deal with the uh, problem race and fall of, of uh, priority fields. And I think it's natural. And some of these other issues we will, of course, bring into the discussions of, with the, of the other pa panels. But uh, I would still like to see if we could, before we open the last 10 minutes for, for the floor, have just one round where you could shortly or briefly explain how success looks like. What is a success in the academic world? What would you, as university leaders, see as success for you in your particular university? And maybe we will start the other way around now. So first you. Okay. Uh, well, First of all, I would like to say that there are many aspects of success, yes. So I think we have uh, some, uh, first one for me, it's uh, uh, that the community of the university uh, is satisfied of his work and have a feeling that they make sensible 
uh, research that uh, they are understand, that they have a contact with the society. It, it is maybe one important process, but of course we need some factors, external factors. And uh, external factors could be, go to the different way. Cita citation, you know it very well. The quality of research, the number of degrees which is uh, given by the university, and uh, of course, in our case, we are in the global league, uh, so uh, Shanghai ranking, of course, and uh, maybe it is it is nice to to say that we are 100 places up during this process. Uh, also, uh, if you would like to know, we have a more uh, prestigious paper uh, in good uh, journals. Uh, we have a highly cited researcher at the AGH University. So there are many, many factors which we can say, okay, it is external factors. Ex external factors, uh, and, th and now I'm talking about the research, yes, because it is our focus at this moment. So, okay, maybe our colleagues give some more. Um, for for last uh, two years, uh, I can uh, consider a success that we survived, that we did not uh, reduce our activity, that we positively concluded and took advantage and took a chance from the pandemic. Uh, for example, uh, our, um, our laboratory, diagnostic laboratory, opened as the first academic laboratory for uh, COVID, uh, survived as the uh, group um, of uh, uh, virologists, and uh, they started a new initiative, a regional in initiative, so we will hopefully have um, a local, local activity um, on, in this field. And, uh, uh, instead of uh, just closing the laboratory, they decided to apply for the European grants, for national grants, uh, for some structural funds because of that. So this is something that gives a lot of satisfaction. Uh, success is measured when uh, there is interest in people who want to come and work at the university. And this is very difficult task today because all you know, uh, what is the gap between uh, the, uh, the, the, what we can offer as university and what can our doctors and even uh, nurses can get outside the university. So when we can keep people going and working, this is a success. When we, when, when we look at the external measurements of the success, uh, my great satisfaction is that in um, the Polish ranking of Perspective, we are um, located as the most effective, uh, and most efficient um, group, uh, university for um, research efficacy, uh, which uh, takes um, uh, under consideration quality and quantity of papers, citations, but also the success in getting external funds. So this is, this is something that measures. Uh, this, last year we also uh, lifted uh, to the second hundred uh, between, uh, in a global rank uh, of Shang Shanghai global rank. This is also very much satisfactory. And um, the th one more success, uh, it is somehow when you observe individual researchers growing up, uh, building their, uh, their um, accomplishment and uh, getting success, international successes. And we are number one in immunology in Poland, um, according to ResearchCom. So, so this, is, this is how we measure it. Thank you. And we move to the University of Gdansk. 
Okay, so uh, it's a tough question. <laughs> it's a very tough question. It's a little bit like with the happiness. So it means different things to different people. Uh, and uh, depending who you ask, uh, you, may, you may hear a different answer. But I definitely agree. So uh, what have, uh, has been said is also true for the University of Gdańsk. So uh, the position of the University of Gdańsk, uh, among other universities, the number of publications, and so on and so on, uh, so no question about it. But I think, personally, uh, the success of the University of Gdańsk is that uh, this university has been able to gather people who share uh, very high intellectual abilities with passion, and they simply try to answer questions that they are interested in uh, getting an answer for. So uh, that's uh, what the university uh, should be about. And uh, I think the, uh, both the atmosphere and the resources, uh, the, the help, the, uh, the ability to join forces between disciplines uh, just generate this kind of atmosphere where uh, this passion can come true. And uh, then everything that has been said uh, follows uh, because people see that uh, this uh, person or that team uh, has the potential. They really ask questions that, as I said, success means different things to different people. It's all about the meaning. So the success of, I think, the University of Gdańsk is that things that have been done at the university are just meaningful. Uh, and uh, of course, there is always standard deviation. But uh, in general, uh, I think this is, this is something very important. And because of that, uh, also the number of people uh, or business that would like to uh, take advantage of the results uh, of those studies is growing. So I think this is another uh, benefit uh, of the or part of the success, that the information, uh, the results are not just uh, to increase the position of the university among other universities, but also uh, that uh, the results can uh, be implemented and can uh, simply help uh, to solve problems of uh, every uh, everybody among the society. So this is how I understand that. Thank you. Thank you. And back to Warsaw. I hope now you can hear me. Well, uh, Warsaw, University of Warsaw is the classic university. So we recognize uh, classic measures uh, of success, the ones which are traditional in the academic world. So first of all, we, we are happy that uh, the level of publications, of, our, of the publications by, by the members of the universities becomes higher and higher. So over the last two years, for instance, the number of papers published in the f journals from the first two quartiles on the Scopus list has grown by 5%, so by now it's 80%. Um, the same happens with the number of citations. Uh, depends that, that the growth depends on the on the discipline, but we have a certain discipline. Then the growth is of, at the level of 50 percent over the last two years. So broad under, broadly understood, the domain of uh, energy or material science broadly understood chemistry. I mean, th those are those are the areas where the pa our papers are. Uh, rapidly, rapidly getting rec recognition and uh, the higher and higher number of uh, citations. So this is this is important because this this shows that our research is recognized, that people working at the University of Warsaw, that the work is recognized worldwide, and that also means that the impact of our of our research of uh, of, of the university is growing. Other measure is perhaps the number of prestigious grants. I have to say that uh, this year we have obtained, our people working at the university obtained five individual ERC grants. Last year it was three individual ERC grants. Uh, as the university we are running at this point about 80 grants supported for by, by, not necessarily individual grants, <laughs> supported by, by uh, international European, European funds. So the fact that uh, people 
that the rate of success in these international competitions is growing. This also encourages us and tells us that the quality, the, the, the quality, quality enhancing system which we are trying to build at the university uh, is, uh, is working, that this is a successful and uh, right way of uh, doing things. I have, to say, I have to say that the University of Warsaw never paid per paper. I mean, we were always uh, putting stress on a systematic approach, so we were trying to build the right milieu, right environment to, to rise uh, the overall quality of our production. So it looks like, like that works, works, and the numbers clearly show that's, that's the case. Well, the other measure of the success is that uh, the conferences are back. So the, the, the departments, I mean, I can, I can see because I am signing the bills very often, so I can see there is a crowd of people visiting the university, various departments of the University of Warsaw on the, on the occasions of, of various international very high level uh, conferences, also the number of uh, people interested in the positions at the university. I mean, the number of foreign applicants uh, at the, well, for, in the competition for the postdoc positions or other positions, also those uh, funded uh, from the EDUP. This number clearly grows and these people are really winning and coming to take those positions. So. This, this I would count as, uh, as a very, very clear measure of, of success. It's not uh, yet, we are still not at the level which, which we would like to see, but it looks like it's not hope, 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 hopeless. Yeah? You can go this way and you can, you can reach uh, very, very, very high. So that's how it, how it works at the University of Warsaw. Thank you very, very much. I think we have uh, time for one or maybe two uh, questions from our colleagues. Uh, please just raise your hand and we will try to attend to it. Maybe not providing four answers to all of to you, but try to answer anyone. Our lunch is too heavy still. Ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to ask questions. Now is your time. It doesn't matter, because I think we are almost on time. We have time, I have time to uh, some kind of uh, conclusion of, of the discussion. I think we have some general observations we could do. Listening to the four universities and maybe also to the four uh, we had in the first panel, um, the um, process is much more a, an evolutionary process than a revolutionary process uh, in the Polish universities. You all work in a steady way, as far as I can see it, on evolving your system from wherever you are, whether you are a medical university or a technological one. And this is what you like. I think this is uh, probably also uh, in some ways, the most su sustainable way to do it. I also think we can observe uh, uh, that you have an ability to seize opportunities. Uh, for example, the medical university uh, have uh, seized the opportunity that came out of the pa pandemic, which is, by the way, still here. Um, and you have tried to accommodate the new demands uh, uh, to serve the Polish society, but still maintaining uh, your core uh, activities. And uh, it, it, of course, the same has been true uh, for several of the universities vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, what happens in Ukraine. You have responded to it, uh, not only here in Poland, but Poland has been first and largest maybe in the response, but also in the rest of Europe. Um, the universities have been good in responding. So there is a capacity to seizing opportunities. And, and by the way, opportunities are rather random. It, it, it is not a strategic uh, decision by someone that these opportunities should arise. I also think that there is a tendency for you all to focus on bottom-up um, uh, incentives, many kinds of bottom-up incentives 
to change maybe behavior, to uh, um, underline or uh, support new ideas, uh, to maybe motivate staff uh, in dif different ways. Uh, and it's all kinds of stuff, young as well as established staff. So bottom-up incentives. But it leaves me with a question mark. I think that um, you all have an issue regarding the balance between uh, your, the capacity building, so to speak, of the university and the um, specific activities you have. What is the, how do you support, how do you distinguish between um, the, the core activities, uh, the, the base, re basic research, and uh, the, the different opportunities. We st I still do not have a clear picture of that, but maybe we will get that through the next couple of um, di uh, panel discussions. And I would also say maybe in the future, um, I think some of the universities have mentioned that you are balancing, and I, I remember from the previous panel, that the Jag Jagiellonian University has sort of witnessed the pen pendulum to move a little bit backwards to top down from the, from the bottom up uh, um, situation. So maybe, uh, maybe this is something uh, to discuss. How, where should the balance be between bottom up and top down activities? Um, if, for example, EDUP money, whether they are big or smaller, is only used as a kind of internal research council or um, a part of money that can be used bottom-up, then maybe you're losing out a little bit on the strategic opportunities, strategic opportunities. So, so how to balance between the bottom-up and the top-down, having a top-down strategy? And it relates to this panel because you have new fields arising, maybe from interdisciplinarity. Um, but something had to be phased out. And of course, it's very hard to phase out. How can you phase out a professor who has not any energy left? Um, and I, I guess we all have seen examples of that in our own university. So it's, it's, not, it's not an easy task of face out or face into something else. How can you, in, in a positive way, make use of the experience of a sort of um, fossilized professor in the team of a young energetic researcher? So shifting roles. Um, it's, they are not, it's not easy to handle, but it's still something that we probably should be better at handling. Uh, it, I say we because it's all across the university world. So, so we have some observations that I think are pretty firm and also some question marks that we can put and we should look at uh, during um, discussions in the coming days and years and maybe also the next phase of of the EDUP um, program. So thank you all very much. And we are off, I don't know, for a coffee break or just uh, for the next session. Exactly, perfect timing. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a 15 minute break, but allow us to thank properly our guest today. <laughs> Professor Zygmunt Lalak, University of Warsaw, Professor Lucina Wojniak, Medical University of Łódź, AGH, University of Science and Technology, represented by Professor Marek Gorgon, last but not least, University of Gdańsk, Professor Michał Harciarek. Thank you all and thank you for chairing the discussion. And see you in 15 minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting in less than two minutes, so please join us in the main auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start. Please join us in the main conference hall. Ladies and gentlemen, it's three minutes past three o'clock, and we are about to start the third discussion during the third progress review conference, lucky three, let us say. Striving for balanced progress in performing universities' missions, that's the topic of our next debate. The statutory mission of Polish universities is to provide the highest quality of education and scientific activity and to contribute to the development of their social and economic environment. Improvement in the quality of research and education are specified as the explicit objective of the excellent initiative research university program. Next up, we have a discussion about this topic, striving for balanced progress in performing universities mission. And here to chair this discussion, please welcome Ms. Mariana Kionchel. Madam, join me. Yes, a round of applause, please. 
PhD and senior lecturer at the University of Bucharest and a policy expert for the Romanian Executive Agency for Higher Education, Research, Development and Innovation Funding. Her main areas of expertise include research and innovation, higher education policy design and evaluation, material science, nanotechnology, smart specialization, innovative startups, scale-ups. What an impressive list. Madam, welcome. How are you today? It should be working. Hello, Give it a everyone. Try. Do you hear me? Okay, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Thank you very much to Professor Loris Holm Nelson for inviting me to be part of the expert panel, also to my uh, expert colleagues, and uh, to the Ministry of Education and Research of Poland. I have to say that I have a very mixed uh, background, so I have full empathy for researchers and academics, particularly when coming from a new member state, so I fully understand when means the pressure of uh, performing uh, outstanding research when eventually you don't have uh, the best support condition and you have to compete with uh, traditional um, EU member states. Uh, also, maybe international mobility, not only that is not re rewarded, but can be penalized, also interdisciplinary research. So I have full understanding and empathy also for this uh, uh, for answering sometimes a difficult question. Uh, as an expert providing support to the policy making, I also can say that changing the perspective, uh, I realize how difficult it is to create a good policy. It's a learning process and very much helps this co-creation, support from the academic and scientific community. As a policy evaluator, I worked for the European Commission for seven years, and I was doing exactly this, uh, monitoring and evaluation of research and innovation uh, policy mixes in uh, member states, and uh, particularly those uh, aimed to enhance European research area. And I have to say that from what I read and I understand, Poland has done a great uh, many step forwards, uh, a proper reform, and I think this is a common uh, success of the policymakers and the academic uh, community. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this panel. And madam, we are delighted to have you with us today. You do have a mixed background, and it does prove you are a naturally curious person, so you'll be asking a lot of interesting questions to our panelists. Uh, if you look at those armchairs, which one makes you most comfortable? The one in the middle. So you want to have both groups of panelists on your left and right. Ladies and gentlemen, let us introduce the panelists for this discussion. Silesian University of Technology is represented by Professor Marek Pawełczyk. Please welcome, Professor. Good afternoon. Wrocław University of Science and Technology, represented by Professor Arkadiusz Wuis. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> Joining us from Poznan University of Medical Sciences, Professor Michał Nowicki. Sir, good afternoon. <laughs> Łódź University of Technology, Professor Łukasz Albrecht. <laughs> good afternoon, and all I'm left with is to wish that you enjoy this discussion. Uh, so during this panel, we are going to focus uh, on a difficult um, topic, I would say, striving for balanced progress in performing university's mission. Uh, why is this? Because I think lately the main focus is on uh, performing uh, outstanding research. Uh, it's much better and much easier monitored. We have indicator. It's more difficult to monitor and assess uh, teaching performance on one side, and uh, it's much more difficult even to assess the third mission of universities. From my point of view, I think the main mission of university is still teaching. We have to, the main goal of a university would be to um, support the formation of uh, strong and well-equipped uh, specialists to Support for, to, to create a better future for the society. Uh, so, um, 
Another difficult aspect in this panel, I would say, is that uh, I saw a diversity of approaches in answering these questions, the three questions uh, in this panel. Uh, some of them are very, uh, very direct to the point. They provide indicators, clear actions. Uh, some answers are kind of uh, broad, providing generic answer. Uh, assessing impact like uh, enhancement, um, improved, uh, increased. Uh, this can be also due to the question. I can understand the difficulties in answering uh, the question. Uh, so during the discussion, I hope uh, we would be able to clarify this aspect. Uh, I'm very curious uh, how the teaching performance is assessed, because I saw that in most universities appear this answer that the uh, teaching performance is assessed, and is assessed uh, due to the student uh, surveys. Uh, and obviously here we have a bit of ethical issue, because students have, uh, can have biased uh, feedback, uh, not only constructive and objective feedback, I'm not sure from the answer which I read uh, how these uh, uh, scores are considered in the evaluation. I understand that they are considered in the evaluation, but I don't understand uh, how they are considered in the career progress. Uh, I saw that some universities have different patterns for teaching and uh, research careers, which is a very interesting aspect. Uh, I'm curious how uh, much flexibility universities have in uh, setting this kind of different uh, career paths. Uh, I read uh, about the project-based learning, which is a wonderful uh, uh, activity. I'm again very curious to find a bit more about this. Uh, also, I have many questions, but probably I will put at the end of the uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, so, if it's fine, I will give um, the floor to the professor. I'm sorry, I will not pronounce the name because I will pronounce it wrongly to the rector of the Silesian University of Technology. Uh, <coughs> Madam, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, panel. And uh, first of all, I'd like, I'd like to say that uh, uh, the university is very proud to be in this, uh, in this community of the EW universities. It was a pleasure to uh, compete with the 20 university, and, and, and this is very, very motivating to us, not only in terms of research, but also teaching. Uh, in the uh, survey which we provided uh, for this for this progress conference, we also reported our activities um, about uh, teaching. Uh, you, you mentioned the project-based learning. Uh, I think that this is one of the most important approach we are applying to our education system, which we are changing totally as compared to what was done a few years ago. Uh, in fact, after a kind of uh, preliminary trials um, on some study programs, uh, now it is going to spread uh, over the whole university. So also using the funds from uh, the EDU program, we, uh, j over just last two years, we ran um, 500 PBL projects. Each project is for five, six persons, uh, in, and they are supervised by three tutors. Um, now we, after that uh, successful approach, which in most cases resulted in joint publications with students, which is also very important because students bring some uh, refreshed uh, view to, to the research area, and they are also considered to be future staff for our university. And now we decided to include the PBL to every study program. So this is one of the most important change we are just implementing. Um, I also would like to mention that uh, about the PBL, uh, we um, came to another level. And now the PBLs uh, in many cases are becoming international. So we are inviting students, both students and supervisors. It should be these two, not only students, not only supervisors, but both students and supervisors from um, foreign universities. So more and more projects are performed in, in this way. And also we joined um, a PBL school at Stanford University, and we are a member of this. 
and we perform also projects together, which is very, very interesting because uh, those PBL projects are very structured. They are by, by assumption uh, interdisciplinary and uh, by assumption very international. Uh, they have uh, three students from Stanford and three students from different universities around the world. So we are participating in many of such uh, projects and our students receive the highest grade. So this is also motivating to extend this, uh, this program. Uh, I said that these projects are by assumption interdisciplinary, so it also results in, in better collaboration between the tutors. Uh, if the students have three tutors representing different disciplines at our universities, the people got to know each other, yes, and they start also collaborating. Uh, another way of um, involving the students into some specific and interdisciplinary aspects at our university is just to uh, currently increase, uh, largely increase uh, the number of, uh, of uh, elective courses which are uh, uh, not related to the study program they are studying. Uh, this uh, broadens uh, the, the vision of the, of the, of the students and uh, makes it even more interesting to study and develop their own uh, career. What we are also trying to do um, uh, recently, I think which is also very attractive, is not to have strict uh, specializations for the students. The students may f uh, form their, st their own uh, study track, being on um, the certain um, study program, and after uh, this track is finished and after the thesis is, uh, is, is performed, finally we decide what the specialization was. So it's almost the same like of all PhD students. And um, um, another um, quite advanced uh, way which we try to adapt for, for students' training and also in collaboration with, uh, with researchers is uh, students' uh, scientific clubs or associations. We currently have over 180 at the university. But they are not just being created to uh, to give up in a while, but uh, all of them uh, should have very uh, strong uh, foundations. So the projects coming should follow from collaborations with industrial partners, which we have a lot in this region of Poland. So uh, the advancement of, uh, of uh, teaching in collaboration with industrial partners, um, motivated also by large projects, I think is, uh, is the right way to involve students into, into also research and also increase the, uh, the indicators of, 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 of research. Uh, I want that you refer to that uh, in the introduction that um, the EDU program is evaluated in terms of different uh, aspects. Uh, obviously, the basic one is research. So our main motivation uh, was to uh, propose and uh, run, uh, implement such uh, incentive programs which would uh, significantly change the outcomes of the university researchers. And uh, I'm very happy to, to say that uh, the evaluators, the international experts trusted us and appreciated the program when we presented that uh, during the competition. I would like to just mention only, only a few results, but to be, uh, to be detailed, I would like to say uh, field-weighted citation impact. In 2019, before the EDUP started, we were on the 17th place uh, out of the 20 univer EDUP universities, and currently we are the second in CIVAL, according to CIVAL. Uh, if you consider top citation percentile, in 2019, we were 14, and now we are the second. In top journal percentiles, we were 16 in 2019. So the a team of experts really trusted us that we can do something about that, and currently we are the third. Uh, top one citation percentiles, we were 19, currently second. Top one journal percentiles, 14, currently four. Uh, so, uh, the thing which we need to really work on, which is very important also to further continue our advancement in uh, excellence in research and, and modern education, is the collab international collaboration. So this is still a lot to do, but, uh, uh, but uh, I think that the, uh, that the trend is very good because we were 19, currently we are 12. So we started with 15% um, uh, of publications to be, uh, which were published in collaboration with in international partners. Now it is for over 40%.
So I think this is, this is the right way. Now we need to work on, really on international collaboration. That's why the engagement of international uh, teams uh, for the PBL project. That's why uh, many intensive programs to uh, ask uh, to let and uh, provide opportunities for our researchers to go abroad. And we prefer the top institutions in the world, yes, because uh, in those cases we believe that, uh, uh, first of all, the, they will work in very, very good uh, teams, but on the other hand, the dissemination may also be, be better. Uh, also, uh, we appreciate very much uh, uh, our partnership, and um, uh, we are a member uh, of um, Eureka Pro uh, European University Alliance from the second call. And uh, we, we are currently nine universities, including Lorraine from France, uh, Hassel University, Petrosani from Romania, Technical University of Crete, and, um, and Freiburg University, and many, many others. We are still un in the process of, of further expansion. So this also uh, offers very, very good opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, a quick question. I will have probably more questions at the end. Would you recommend definitely PBL as a good practice to be implemented by other universities? Uh, excuse me? Would you recommend? Uh, PBL? Yes. yes, absolutely. I think that this is, uh, this is uh, first of all, uh, teamwork. On the other hand, uh, the groups of students are very small. And on the other hand, they may f uh, plan uh, uh, how they work on the project, yes, because uh, the time is much more flexible. In fact, they spend much more time than uh, on a regular program but they like doing that, yes. So they can come in the evenings, the laboratories are open, yes, and they can work on the project. Uh, what is also important that first of, uh, that uh, they can see and better understand the subject, because the subject is set at the beginning. And then the uh, tools, uh, uh, some teaching tools and some, some methods are, are just offered and oriented on solving the problem. But the main idea behind PBL is not, not just to do the project, is to learn doing the project. So it should be provided in a very specific way. That's why we first train the tutors. They need to know how to do that. Not everybody is able to do this. So uh, the process is very much, very much structured. First, we collect uh, proposals from the tutors and we evaluate them at only the best are funded. And then those who, which are funded are then offered to students and we are looking for, for the students. So uh, um, also, what is important that uh, the subjects of the projects come from industry and the industrial partners uh, really like this collaboration and uh, strengthen the collaboration with the university because they offer quite sophisticated subjects. If uh, I would like to compare uh, this subject, for instance, to a master thesis, one PBL like, is like three master thesis. But master thesis is done for over a year, one and a half. But PBL project is three months. So after three months, they can receive some outcome. They can also participate in the project because uh, not only the tutors uh, are helping the students, but also uh, as many uh, consultants as necessary. So the uh, people, the companies, the other partners who offer the projects are fully engaged from the very beginning. They can have full access and to monitor what's happening. Also, they can observe the students how they are working. And it's, uh, it's also uh, um, uh, a, a nice um, a recruitment strategy for the companies because it's not just an interview uh, during the recruitment process, but they can observe how the students work over a long time. So this is also very much appreciated. We are living in the Salesian region, so there are very many companies. Uh, it is said that they are half a million of companies. We are in the center of the Katowice Special Economic Zone, uh, according to Financial Times, uh, the second in the world after Dubai Economic Zone. So the companies are around. That's why, uh, that's why the projects are really well, uh, um, uh, well defined. Not, not, not simply theoretical projects, but they have very nice background and, and there is a need to do them. That's why it's also implementation of the third mission. Because it's teaching, it's research at the same time, it's all, and also there is somebody who, uh, who benefits from the problems being solved. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we move to the next uh, speaker, uh, the rector of Rocklow University of Science and Technology. Thank you. Uh, okay, so when I think of balance, uh, like in the title of our session, uh, I have in mind 
uh, balance between the res research and teaching and the third mission, or balance between excellence and median performance in each of those areas, or between like senior professors and early researchers, or other other ways that that, other, that the university has to be balanced. Also, like mission for the outside or mission internal mission of the university and so on. And in this sense, let me tell you a bit what happened over the last year or so at Wrocław Tech. So on one hand, without numbers, uh, there is a significant rise in research, both activity and efficiency, like probably every EDUP university. Uh, there is a significant transformation in terms of invol involvement of people, uh, uh, both uh, in each dimension, or in, in each dimension in a sense of responsibility for the university's success. So this means both research activity, research excellence, so more and more people have nice results. Uh, and also uh, the development uh, of strategy and individual operational decisions at the university. Uh, now, one area is the uh, research area, so priority areas, which then later stem on to teaching. And we, of course, define those uh, priority areas reflecting on one hand performance, so where we are good, let's say, in international subject rankings, and then also look at social responsibility of the university and its placement, its geographic location, so areas like climate, energy, resources, artificial intelligence, and so on. And now simultaneously with this uh, priority areas, we are now defining the large uh, kind of um, uh, landscape of all areas and activities covered by university as a whole, uh, both in teaching and research. So. Our university, which is about 25,000 students, uh, historically a technical university, will, has and will always have at its core engineering. So now we cover all nine disciplines of engineering. Uh, and now this has to have a strong base, which means fundamental sciences. And we have mathematics, physics, and chemistry, and computer science. And they have been very well uh, evaluated recently. And now, important thing is to also surround engineering with disciplines, uh, with create a borderline or interdisciplinary areas on the others on the other side, not from the fundamental basis, but into applications. So naturally, it's a natural ex expansion of science to go into more complex systems. So what we learned from engineering to go to social sciences that already exists, but also to biosciences that already exists and into life sciences, which we are now defining right now. I hope next year I will be able to tell you that we are active also in and not strictly life sciences, like medical, but also on this fruitful border between engineering and this thing. So in this, in this way, we aim to cover all disciplines and most specialties of engineering, and essentially all of, all of its crucial border around, around engineering. And this will sort of define the landscape, which is sufficiently broad, coherent inside. It's logical for a major technical university. And it's clear to the surrounding economy, surrounding um, society, also to our candidates to, to study at our university. Uh, now, this process of expansion is ongoing. And there is some extensive preparation. There is some legal, legal process as well. And um, I hope they will serve the society better in this way. Now, uh, again, going to the next step uh, in terms of balance, we have Academia Juvenum, and I, I, I advertised this, this idea last year. Now it has, this program has entered the second year. This is the selection of young scientists that are like the best in all disciplines and taking care of them. So now they reached, after, in the second year, they reached, after the recent enrollment, the, the full size of 48 people, which is about one-sixth of all young scientists at the university. And now there is uh, already plenty of evidence that this pro works very well as an excellence program. So these young people have most success, grants, awards, papers. This is also uh, evident in internal excellence uh, programs that just reward. Like we, we like select top 100 best young people or top people in each discipline or, or best papers. Now, in terms of balance, this is just one side, the primitive side of the story. There is a professor from Torino, and in our discussion we were joining the university, European University, we learned that rewarding excellence is just the easy part. Creating excellence is something uh, that takes more time. And now this program, Academia Juvenum, again, that I advertise to all our other Polish universities, 
is aiming at, at training of, of people that, that have uh, potential and not just rewarding them for success. So it's not just recognition, exposure, and benefits, it's also big training. And then this training spreads onto the whole university because some programs like Nature Master classes and so on that is advertised or requested by those young best people is then used by everybody at the university. Now, one major uh, achievement of our university or, or, and that prom promises bright future is joining UNITE. UNITE is a European university, and it's composed of very elite tech universities in Europe, such as Catehai or, or Torino, and also there is one uh, excellent comprehensive university of Lisbon. Now, main goal is teaching, so again, we have this balance between teaching and research. Uh, and for example, here, in direct response to this, we're switching com immediately to completely English uh, doctoral school, starting two weeks from now. Uh, and we are, we are preparing to do a lot of um, virtual campus uh, activities. For example, we have invested uh, millions of zloty into um, classrooms that are fully uh, kind of video, audio, whatever, uh, computerized. Mm. Now, we, based on some of an experience of some of our partners from UNITE and other universities that we kind of partner with, we uh, are preparing to introduce challenge-based learning, so it's kind of a next step after what uh, Marek said a minute ago. Um, then to, um, to find the balance also in, in, in taking advantage of participation in UNITE in this European University program, uh, we want to convince our partners from UNITE that this should also be a research platform for sharing labs, resources, establishing exchange programs for young researchers especially, and so on. Now, uh, this was already advertised to today uh, earlier by my colleague, rector from, or vice rector from University of Wrocław, that at the same time that, Wrocław Univer that we have joined UNITE, Wrocław University joined ARCUS, which is equally elite uh, university um, alliance. And so our city, in, in sort of one jump from having zero universities now, are, is in two super elite alliances, which puts us where we belong on the map. Now, next thing, if I may, um, is that we, we have recently, all universities, we are evaluated in terms of research. Uh, we are evaluated every year in terms of um, teaching by ranking of perspective. And of course, we cherish this every year. Now, after five years, there was evaluation of research output. Uh, to say it mildly, there is some opening between the results of EDUP and the results of evaluation. Uh, we are now waiting for the appeal, so maybe this gap will somewhat close. <laughs> we all rectors kind of uh, laugh at this uh, a bit among ourselves. Now, what we have achieved. So we have introduced material science as the last discipline in engineering to have full academic rights and we received a category B plus or higher, which means those academic rights to grant PhDs in every evaluated discipline. Uh, we have received A plus in both mathematics and physics, which gives the strong fundamental for engineering, and place five or six nationwide, depending how you count those categories at the moment before the appeals. Now, this all happened while we have, let's say, minus 8% of funding and plus 20 or so percent of teaching and some blow to the prestige. And unfortunately, the fears, my fears, that this will, the result of being placed in the second tenth of EDUP will mostly be discouragement, it didn't materialize. So, fortunately. Now, we have done, achieved this thing in evaluation with 82% of our academic teachers being evaluated. Different university played this game in different way. Uh, I know that major Polish universities very strongly believe in balance of research and teaching. So they believe in the idea of the university, like, like I do, that people who teach at the university should be researchers. That uh, the teachers that only teach should be just a little complementary thing. Most teachers should be active researchers embedded in the process of creating knowledge. So our university sort of submitted 82% of our academic staff for evaluation. I am aware that not every university also of EDUP did the same thing. Uh, now, also I hear, let me congratulate University of Wrocław, our sister university. Uh, we, in one ranking, we are number five, in the other they are number five, depending how you count. Wrocław, as a result, as the academic city, is now safely number three in the country. So we, again, we are where we belong. Now, going back to two last little items. 
uh, about balance between education and, and research. So um, we have uh, two um, uh, f programs of study that are number one in, in the country again. Uh, one is civil engineering that's eight time in a row and then um, a chemical process and process engineering is the, f is the first, the best in the country for the second time in a row. And now, and this, I, I wonder what is the perspective of the other EDUP universities, but we have areas at our university that are excellent in teaching. Uh, so there are faculties that, are, that, that excel in teaching, but not so in, in, in research, and others that excel in research, but not so well in teaching, and some others that excel in the third mission, which is kind of more local responsibility for the economy, for, for, the, for, the, for the industry around the city. I mean, technical universities like ours have this strong third, mostly local mission, not just to create global impact, but also to help our industry in the surrounding. This is also, also what Marek mentioned. So we have to balance at the university not to put emphasis only on one kind of the success, because we have three equally important missions. Medical university also has a different mission, probably this will be mentioned separately. Last small item, uh, we have started last, last year LEM Prize, so Stanisław LEM European Research Prize that we as the Polish University give to a European scientist, a young scientist that excels it's in something that has to do with technology, vision, humanities, well, like Stanisław LEM writes about, wrote about. And now, so we have presented the first, we have awarded the first award to a fabulous professor from ETH Zurich, from, to Randall, Randall J. Platt for work in uh, genetical engineering. And now uh, we continue, now the, 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 the call is open right now, and the, the, later this year we will announce the second laureate. This is against another kind of balance that I see. It's not only that we receive from European partners, but we are already grown to the point to appreciate excellence somewhere else and not only hope that somebody will discover it at our university. Uh, if I was too long, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Um, I will um, ask vice, uh, the Vice Rector of Research and International Relations, Professor um, from Poznan University of Medical Sciences, sorry. <laughs> Difficult to pronounce the name, so I apologize. I just give the position, the fun. Okay, thank you so much. Name, my name is Michał Nowicki, um, and I represent Poznan University of Medical Sciences, and exactly I am again glad to be here on, uh, 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 on this meeting. And uh, I exactly do realize that the word which was very frequently repeated here, this is the balance. And uh, the balance which is completely different at, at, at present time, especially in our university after COVID pandemic. And also uh, it is uh, related to the economic crisis, which is right now present, not only in our country, but to some extent also in European Union. And if we are talking about the balance, about the balance between teaching, education and research, we should recognize this balance on two levels. The first one is related to students and the second one to the employees. And uh, what is difficult in our university? It means we, uh, uh, we uh, not only educate and make research, but also we treat patients. And 70% uh, of our academic teachers, these are doctors and the clinicians. And uh, 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 what we have a trouble with, with, with doctors and clinicians at this moment, that for example, our one month salary at our university, this is one day salary on the duty when he goes, for example, to the hospital. So the salary is at the level of the hospital since the level of the university even we are not able to compare. That's why exactly there are very little, a very small number of doctors, of clinicians who are really interested to stay in the university, who would like to teach students and to make research. They are interested in research after PhD or, for example, when they are postdocs and they are interested in the habilitation procedure. So we are not able to increase the salary because simply we have no, no funds to increase the salary. 
but uh, 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 this constant element, the constant part of the salary is simply the same like in the other universities. But uh, thanks to the excellence initiative, the research university, we were able to give, for example, some extra salaries for the scientific achievements, uh, which are measured by the number of publications which were published, for example, last year. So all of our employees who regularly publish, and they have the publications which are 100 points of the Ministry of Science or more, they are given the benefits. And the benefits they are given, for example, uh, uh, month to month. Uh, of course, uh, we have a part of, uh, uh, of the, uh, 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 our academic teachers who are exactly not interested in the research. They want only to, to educate. And it was also, uh, I think, important in our university to find an, uh, a different path of the evolution for these um, uh, teachers. And uh, of course, we can uh, employ such a person on the level of the professor uh, but this is extremely rare situation. But uh, we also found the position of the of, uh, of uh, uh, didactic adjunct or the teaching assistant. He has a, a lower teaching load, but the salary is uh, uh, higher as compared, for example, to the lecturers. So in that way, some people they know that they have possibility to increase the salary, to have a lower teaching load, and maybe to have a bigger satisfaction. And uh, if we are talking about the satisfaction, the, 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 the people or academic teachers who identify themselves with our university, we are from the basic science, we are from the pharmacy, and maybe from some of the other theoretical uh, subjects. But as a matter of fact, and uh, it's very sad, but uh, as a matter of fact, the clinicians and the doctors, uh, so most of our academic teachers, they are not identifying themselves with the university. And uh, uh, if we would like to talk about the indicators, last year we finished the evaluation of all the academic teachers. And it was the first year when 17% of all of our academic teachers, they did not pass the evaluation. They have the negative, uh, uh, negative mark. And uh, first of all, it was the, uh, they did not pass the evaluation because of research. They do not perform research. They are simply not interested in this. And uh, some of them, uh, they, want, they, are, they think they are so unique like, for example, neonatologists or maybe psychiatrists who say we will not work at the university at all. And one day, all of them, they decide to stop working. And these are the problems which were not focused, for example, which were not able to maybe define three years ago. So what to do from, uh, from our, our side? Uh, at this moment, we, we see we have the two groups, the teachers, academic teachers, and the administration of the university. We expect from the teachers to perform the education and to teach and to make research. The teachers expect from us uh, not to give the stable position or not even to, uh, to have PhD diploma or something like this. They just want to earn money. And at this moment, we try to find another ways to stop uh, academic teachers at, uh, at our university. And um, it's easier with the younger people who are still before PhD. And for example, we started also the three years ago uh, such, a, such a program in which young teachers and the uh, students of the medicine they perform uh, research together. And for example, on the first year of study, they are uh, to uh, prepare an original work. On the second year of the study, a research work. And on the third year of the study, they are uh, to prepare the grant application. And uh, thanks to the, to the funds which are given from EDUP, we are able, for example, also to, to pay for publication of the papers which were performed by young uh, students and the young scientists. And uh, at this moment, when we see that such a young scientist, a young academic teacher, 
uh, had a success and he works together with students who are treated more or less like colleagues, it is a kind of the uh, a kind of the network, a new network which uh, maybe helps to 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 keep this young teacher and uh, uh, young uh, researcher in our in our university for a, a longer time. The next problem, it is related to the balance. It's the number of the medical students uh, we have, and the three years ago uh, we were preparing to to to, to this program. Uh, usually, the number of the medicine, uh, 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 the students from medicine, it was uh, 300 or 350. Right now, at this moment, this number increased by 50 percent. So, and we are relatively small university. We are not technical university or classic university. There are all of the students, they are 7,000, and the number of teachers is about uh, 1,000. But relatively. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the teachers and uh, the doctors, clinicians, they are, they are not even confused. They are already tired by the students. And um, at this moment, exactly, without some extra funds from this uh, excellence initiative, we would be in trouble. But uh, 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 thanks to some extra funds, uh, we are able to um, uh, go over these uh, troubles and maybe find new, new, new solvations. But uh, I am really interesting also to, to other panelists and uh, to other experience from other universities. What you do simply to keep your teachers and to keep your researchers at your university. Okay, thank you very much. I see already, okay, also from the answer which I read, uh, some specificity for the medical school and uh, uh, homogeneous school. So we go to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Łukasz Albrecht. I'm from, I'm Vice Rector for Science and Łódź uh, University of Technology. It's great to be here. It's great to be a part of uh, IDUP uh, initiative. And, of course, for our university, as we are not in the top ten of universities, uh, we are facing a bit different challenges uh, when it comes to realization of IDUP initiative. Because for us, it's not only a question what to do within IDUP initiative, but we also have to um, acquire additional funding for, for our ideas, and this, of course, is a challenge and takes uh, additional efforts and, and time. If we talk about the balance between uh, the research and, and ed education, it is a very important topic for each uh, of the universities. And it's very important to create very clear, I would say, development pathway for uh, scientists who want to um, build their excellence either in didactics or in research, because of course not everyone, uh, not uh, every academic teacher has to be an uh, excellent researcher or excellent teacher. There are some who are really good teachers and uh, they uh, can uh, develop themselves in this direction. And of course there are some researchers who uh, are, don't want to, to do uh, didactics uh, obligations. So I think it's very important to show that there are two pathways, and uh, doing uh, this didactic pathway is not a punishment for, uh, uh, for the academic teacher, but it's somehow equal path uh, of his or her uh, development. So within this uh, part uh, at, at our university, uh, we are creating some uh, very clear rules that um, somehow uh, uh, somehow uh, show this uh, show our academic teachers which path they can they want to go and how they can uh, develop within these paths. So, for example, the rules how to become a university professor in the group of. Uh, uh, didactics employees and, for example, researcher employees. And, of course, these rules and requirements are different. We have also uh, established uh, various awards, awards for 
researchers for uh, best publications, for best patents, for uh, re receiving research grants. But then, uh, in order also to enhance this didactics path, we have established uh, also some uh, didactic rewards. If you are good at didactics and you want to uh, develop yourself in this way, you can also get it an, uh, uh, a reward and there are cert certain rules you need to fulfill to, to receive it and this include uh, implementation of active learning and teaching schemes in your um, uh, in your curriculum um, and also yeah, developing some uh, books for students and so on and so forth. So there are clear, clear rules and our uh, employees can uh, can follow those to uh, develop their their careers in one or or another direction. Uh, when it comes to uh, to teaching, uh, which University of Technology is um, very much engaged in development of acting uh, of active learning and uh, teaching methods and. We have project-based learning. We have been developing these methods uh, for um, many years. We are also uh, acquiring funding uh, in order to uh, organize um, to, to organize some um, special courses for our teachers to implement these methods uh, in uh, in their programs, in their uh, in the in their subjects. But we are also uh, moving forward. We have this case teaching methods that we are implementing. For instance, uh, we are now changing um, our approach to um, passing uh, the final exams to uh, obtain master or bachelor degree. So we are moving away from a classical uh, exam when there are questions about the knowledge of the student, st student. Instead, we want to check his competences. So we organize something that is called competence mm, exam. And uh, within uh, this uh, exam, the student is not answering questions. He's solving a problem, a real problem. And he has to use his competences he was able to acquire during studies. So it's a, a, a new and a very, I would say, uh, modern approach. We are also enhancing flipped education model. Uh, for instance, in this uh, approach, uh, we have uh, established program where uh, we have um, we have now uh, 60. Uh, teachers from all around the world, from various universities, who are experts in um, flipped education. And we pair them with our academic teachers. And they exchange uh, experiences in flipped education. And they uh, are encouraged to uh, make their subjects according to flipped education model based on uh, the, the experiences of um, the, the, the person from uh, other university who is uh, very experienced in, in, this, um, in this field. Now, uh, as uh, which University of Technology has uh, joined uh, European University framework, uh, it is called uh, ETU, so it's a European uh, consortium of uh, innovative uh, initiative. Uh, we are also changing our approach, uh, and we are implementing something that is called challenge-based learning and challenge-based research, both, both models. And ETU is actually has this innovation in its, in, the, in its name, in its core, and it's not just an empty word, uh, because uh, they are striving to build, um, I would say, uh, this type of smarter regions where the H University is in the center of it, but then H University collaborates closely with uh, both the city and the, the business stakeholders. So we create uh, this kind of smart regions within H framework, and then these smart regions from different uh, H universities are. Uh, collaborating. So this is a, a model we are implementing now at our university. We are implementing this challenge 
a challenge uh, based learning and it's also about um, we, we have changed our uh, regulations uh, regarding uh, studies and uh, this is also about so-called uh, micro credentials uh, we want uh, our students to pass subjects they, that give uh, them these micro credentials uh, and this is something that they can show when they go when they want to find the job they show we have acquired these micro credentials already during some some of our uh, subjects and these subjects are about solving a problem given for, in, for instance from from the business or, or from from uh, the uh, for, from, from our business stakeholders. So I think it's also a completely new approach and we are also um, going um, in this direction. And it is also when we talk about excellence in, in, um, in education, I think it's also very important uh, to engage students in it. And we are also uh, very much uh, involved in this process. Uh, we are um, developing uh, academic tutoring schemes, so we are preparing our academic teachers not only to be the teachers, but we want them to be mentors, we want them to be tutors to, to their students and to uh, work in, in pairs with the, with the students and engage them uh, in research that is performed um, at the university. and. To accomplish this task, we have um, developed this uh, E-Square e Top uh, program. So it's called Excellence in uh, Engineering, uh, Talents in Research with Opportunities program. And again, the best students who have entered our university can enter this program, get a, get a mentor from the beginning, from the first year of their studies, studies and uh, work with their mentor in a very close relationship, uh, acquiring uh, knowledge about modern science. And this is also improvement for our researchers because then uh, also they, they have this uh, very unique opportunity to work with uh, talented, um, talented students um, in, in a very unique um, relation. And finally, we, we have also student si circles uh, that are involved in, uh, in uh, scientific projects that realize uh, very, I would say, important research-based projects uh, and uh, also they are able, uh, capable of getting funding from ministerial source, uh, ministry sources uh, for their ideas. So it's also, I think, important way of engaging students in, in, the, in the research community and in such a way uh, building the, the excellence of the university. Okay, thank you very much to everyone. Uh, it seems to me that uh, there is a clear shift also in the educational teaching approaches, which is wonderful, I think. Uh, I was wondering uh, to which extent uh, these achievements could not have been realized if you didn't have the support from the EDU program. The, did the program help you in uh, doing this? Uh, I know that I, it was a question which I wanted to put uh, when you were talking. Uh, how strong was the resistance of the staff in uh, undertaking these new approaches in teaching, project-based teaching and so on? Um, it, uh, it helps uh, 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 um, uh, enormously because, for instance, uh, we also d did uh, some of the programs before, but I will give you the scale for comparing. Uh, for instance, we ran uh, before EDUP uh, 25 PBLs uh, a year, funded from the university. Currently, we fund 200 a year. Uh, we um, uh, supported uh, about 20, 25 also uh, programs for the student scientific circles, currently 200 a year. Uh, also, if it goes about the research incentives programs for, uh, for the staff, um, which uh, 
um, allow them to try to publish in top journals and also try to break through research, which was uh, which wouldn't be possible to get uh, finance for that from any uh, agency. Uh, these programs were increased about 10 times or more. Be so uh, before EDUP, there were just some only extraordinary programs allowed for a very small group of people on a very, very competitive manner. And uh, because we were successful in that pro those programs, we extended their scale uh, with EDUP. So I gave the numbers of the indicators and it shows that it is, it is very effective. Uh, in fact, currently we run over 30 uh, different pro-quality programs and uh, they are all um, to invest in the human capital, in fact, the university, because um, about 90% of the funding we got from EDUP is spent for the human capital. So we don't finance any infrastructure, nothing like that. So this is uh, just for human capital, because <clears throat> we believe that if um, some attitude to research is changed, to collaboration, to international collaboration, also, uh, let's say, a courage is gained to try to publish in uh, top journals because, uh, because the people are supported if they are trying to do this. Different kind of support, starting from, uh, from proofreading uh, to different kind of, kind of financial support. So they have a chance, they may spend more time, they can devote to that, and uh, finally they will benefit. Uh, also, in case of applications for, for projects, we offer different kind of support. Uh, it wouldn't be possible without EDU because, uh, because the, otherwise the money which could be spent for that would be much, much, much smaller. Obviously, uh, I don't say that uh, without EDU no progress would be possible. Yes, absolutely, this is not true because m many universities in Poland who don't have uh, EDU, they, they, they have very good progress. But I think if we want to progress um, in a very rapid way, because if we want to be a, research, a real research university and if we want to be a partner to um, leading European and world uh, universities which are far away ahead of, before us yes so we need to in fact uh, progress very very fast okay thank you very much uh, okay directly not uh, because through EDUP we were put rather in a disadvantage compared to universities you would naturally compete with or compare with or play similar role in the Polish academic landscape but uh, indirectly very much helped us. Uh, I already said it last year, and now I'm even more, more convinced that uh, just realization, uh, what is important, and realization that there is competition, and that uh, aspi even kind of local aspirations, like which university is better within Poland, uh, how meaningless this is in the European landscape, all this uh, changed completely attitude of researchers at my university. So I attribute this to, to EDU program and indirectly I think this, this, over, this, this uh, benefit is huge. Uh, I was joking last year that I probably would never be a rector if not for EDU because uh, the sense of heart pride at our university was so strong to call for some major change at the university. And I'm now witnessing and not only making but witnessing a huge transformation of, of, of thinking about values at our university. And also participation of young scientists and, ser and, and search for, for excellence and internationalizations, all those natural um, twingled um, effects. Um, now money-wise, uh, as I said, it's a disadvantage because 2% uh, is really not much compared of extra funding compared to about 50% we get from ad additional income beyond governmental subsidy. Uh, so I rather count it as a minus 8% toward uh, compared to where we, uh, I hope, belong. Uh, then the more serious problem is this uh, disadvantage in teaching load because uh, we simply have more students. Uh, but we don't really worry about this at our university when I talk to our deans or vice rectors because we strongly believe that a tech university in an economy developing like Polish, uh, it's really important to educate many engineers. So while it probably would be more comfortable for us to conduct research had we had less students, but we kind of gladly or honorably accept the mission of educating more students as a service to Polish society and economy. Okay, thank you very much.
I would say we, uh, we do not observe the resistance in, in young teachers and young researchers. And uh, it was very well visible. We could observe this uh, two years and two and a half uh, year ago when we had to switch one day into another day from the stationary mode to online mode because of the online pandemic, uh, of the COVID pandemic. And uh, it was just the young teachers and young researchers who were able to switch from one day to another and start to, uh, to, to teach students in, the, in this way. That's why that most of uh, our EGIP or IGIP funds we are exactly uh, transferred to the young researchers. And uh, one idea, which is uh, the, the third year right now, it is giving them extra grants from uh, uh, people, for, for researchers who are after PhD, and they want to applicate to ERC, starting grant, and they are given the, the internal grant of uh, 150,000 Polish water, they can spend this uh, whatever they want. If they want to go abroad, if they want to have some expertises and so on and so on, they, they have their own funds. Uh, still, we are waiting for the first ERC grant in our university. Uh, maybe uh, it will be within uh, a couple of years. And um, uh, I think that the transferring the, the funds to the group of the young researchers it's, uh, it's in our case, this is the, the best way. They are still full of enthusiasm. They still, they want to, to work, to, to perform research. And of course, if they have good mentors uh, uh, from the departments, uh, I think it can, it can work. Uh, talking about the uh, IDUP funds, uh, I would say 30% they are just for the infrastructure and the 70% this is just to transfer to young researchers. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yes. So, um, of course, um, IDUP program is uh, our, our pro uh, IDUP actions are, are mainly focused on, on research. Um, as, as I already mentioned, we have limited resources, so uh, for all these extra actions, especially uh, in the field of, of, of education, uh, we need to uh, look for external funding, and then these are mainly from Ministry of Education uh, and Science, and also from various European programs um, such as Erasmus Plus or, or some, some um, other uh, programs, and this uh, we are trying to use to, to develop the schemes. Uh, within uh, IDUP actions, we are also investing in people, so uh, most of them go into uh, rewards uh, for the best publications, the best. Uh, patents and projects, and we uh, observe a uh, gradual increase uh, in uh, the quality of, of uh, our uh, research publications and, um, and other scientific achievements, and it's, it's a very nice uh, feature of, of uh, this, this project um, realization, because yeah, we, can, we can really see um, the, the results that people are uh, trying to publish in higher uh, ranked journals, uh, so it's, it's really working and uh, moving uh, the, the, our researchers uh, forward, so, so it's very nice. From uh, the EDUP initiative, uh, in terms of education, uh, some actions within this uh, E2, uh, E Square uh, top program, so, so mentoring scheme for students uh, will be financed because we think it's very important um, for, for students uh, to become, these talented students to become active in research as early uh, as, as possible. And importantly, these awards for publications, they are inclusive. So uh, you don't need to be employee to, to uh, receive these awards, but they are also 
for students, they are also for our uh, PhD students. So they are uh, all, uh, all members of our academic community are somehow included into the, the uh, IDUP program. And I think it's also uh, yeah, very important that the entire uh, community is, is working for the excellence uh, of, of the university. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have uh, an additional question. Uh, which, uh, from your point of view, would be the, the main challenges regarding uh, this uh, um, striving for um, balance between the stream mission of the universities uh, in general, considering the national evaluation framework for universities, uh, also the European um, system, uh, but also the EDUP program. This is one question, and because the uh, third mission, I guess, is not, uh, well, it's, a new, it's the newest one, uh, I wonder how this is perceived by the academic uh, community. Uh, and the last question, uh, or if you want, we stop here because you may, okay, I will put uh, later on the last question. Whoever wants to start, sorry, I look, whoever has the question. So the balance between the three mission, uh, considering the evaluation framework in Poland, in EU, uh, but also regarding the EDUP program, which come with specific requirements, which are the main challenges, and how is the third mission perceived by the academic community? Did the ED program, for example, help somehow breaking the silos of universities, you know, communicating more with the society uh, and economic environment? <clears throat> yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I will not repeat about um, the collaboration with industry, about different kind of projects. But also I would um, like to uh, say that, uh, first of all, uh, the university is a real community. And if we want to make also a progress in communication with the uh, external stakeholders, we need to involve as many people as possible. That's why with the aid of uh, EDU program, we just offered uh, uh, to, we just offered and sponsored 2,400 individual grants and uh, 1,100 people uh, got the grants, uh, which is 80% uh, of our community. So it was not that the same at the beginning, because at the beginning it was quite uh, an elite program. Yes, uh, many people, because the criteria were uh, strong from the very beginning, not everybody felt uh, uh, they were able to participate, but because the program is long lasting and we already are over two years, so uh, having the same rules for the time, people uh, can uh, develop themselves and join the program. So this shows that more and more, and we believe that about 100 will, will join. And thanks to that, because different people have different connections to the, uh, to the, to the society, to the, uh, to the uh, to the industry, to, in other also aspects of collaboration. So uh, in this way, this uh, program may also be spread and we may get uh, m more benefits. For us, it is, uh, the challenge is uh, international collaboration and, uh, and internationally funded projects. Um, that's why we uh, just want to focus more uh, on, on this. Uh, th therefore, different participations, uh, participation in different networks, not only European University Association, but also we are looking for different networks also outside, uh, uh, also beyond Europe. Um, the strategic partnerships, a new program which we, which we offered. Um, but um, from the other perspective, we also want to have uh, uh, um, more in international project, projects. That's why uh, we strongly um, encourage people to go for international um, scholarships. Uh, this, this is the very important aspect, and uh, I think that this is uh, the best invested money. I think much better investment than investment into uh, into um, uh, financing uh, some, some, not all, some open access publications. 
because for the open access publication for a single one, sometimes not very, uh, not, not, not very good. Uh, we pay uh, over 10,000 zloty for this money. I can send somebody for one or two months uh, to another university, and the, peop the person staying there may gain really a lot being in that community, trying to, to get to know how the people work, to make uh, some friends, and uh, even not at the beginning, but after some time uh, developing the collaboration, it may result uh, in uh, various benefits for the whole university. Also, it is uh, important to engage um, young, uh, the young generation. That's why different uh, in initiatives. We have Center for Popularization of Science, but we also run two academic uh, high schools. This is a, a, a new initiative. We also support collaboration with the high schools, and we also offer projects to those people, trying to integrate them with the with the university and showing them perspective how to um, be engaged with the university and what what is afterwards, uh, uh, what kind of uh, contacts with the industrial partners and perhaps uh, employers may get after. And I would like to mention, because we, we were really not really sure what will be the result of running such school if the people will come to our university or go to some other universities, to larger cities. Uh, but uh, from the first graduation years, it follows that 70% 70, 70 of those people stay at our university. So it was uh, a really uh, important. Even in, if not, we, we, we meant that it is uh, just performing our third mission of the university. It is important to go into the society and training also the, the other people. So different kind of collaboration. This is, this is, the, this is the challenge for the university to, uh, university to, to spread uh, the results of, of our research and education uh, locally, nationally, and worldwide. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Among many challenges, uh, one is obvious, this is the inflation, and it enhances the challenge that's uh, normal, obvious, for tech university in a uh, quickly developing economy like Wrocław, Syria, uh, meaning that the same economic pressure or mechanism that demands more highly educated engineers, like computer scientists or civil engineers. The same economic mechanism sucks people out of universities uh, that could potentially be teachers or researchers. So, so balancing this thing is a challenge that's now only enhanced by high inflation and kind of losing attractiveness of a research career or a academic career at the university. Another major challenge um, is time. Uh, we will now start getting funded by this European university, and we only have some time to transform as quickly as possible, as much as possible, the whole vision of education at our university. Uh, educating engineers of the future, people who are able to take jobs uh, at any European, in any European country, not necessarily with specialty they thought of when they started university, and that, I, that are aware of big global challenges, and maybe the ones that don't yet exist. So things like uh, broadening the intellectual landscape of the university to include more human aspects rather than just hardcore engineering also serves this purpose to prepare, to transform even like, like the, 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 let's say, the intellectual landscape of the university to make it more complete and useful to the society. Then there are challenges of balancing uh, different things like uh, you asked like the chairman about the third mission, I already hinted at this, that we have some areas at the university, some faculties that are very good at working with local business. Uh, and now then we have some people that are passion, passionate teachers. And uh, it's very easy to measure research output and give awards or recognition or, or exposure to successful scientists. But university has multiple missions. And I'm just curious what uh, Med University in Poznan, how they deal with the fact that doctors have dominant mission of curing people, <laughs> and uh, how to equally appreciate people that form a university for all contribution they make uh, in their own heart serving mission of the university as well as they can. And, um, and that uh, comes to the, the last challenge that's probably present at every university in every country. Uh, how to improve health of the society, how to make people engage, contribute, uh, op in, be interested in the success of the university, be aware of each other's success, and so on. So how to, how to help to grow a healthy society 
of the university so that it's it's not really serving not only serving the goals the outside external goals like producing uh, graduates or producing papers or solving particular problems of the economy but just being a fruitful intellectual society able to collaborate uh, and produce new thoughts new ideas and be a free thinking society and that's a huge challenge especially uh, when we are under strong pressure of competition about scientific papers competing for money competing in rankings and also under big stress of financial discomfort okay thank you Uh, I think uh, the expectations of the Ministry of Science, the European Union, and finally the IDO program uh, are just similar because uh, all of these areas they want uh, not only our but all the universities uh, here in Poland to be excellent. So uh, I think that uh, these elements are, are, are really parallel. But uh, of course, uh, when we are talking about the third mission, so the, fir the third mission is, uh, is simply encoded in our name, the medicine. And, uh, and, and this is, of course, the natural. But um, what we had a trouble uh, the, uh, three, four, five years ago, it was exactly the trouble to cooperate with industry. And uh, what we were able to, to, to recognize, to define uh, with the uh, IGO program, that uh, we are exactly very strong uh, accordingly to innovative uh, pharmaceutical technologies. And thanks to the funds, we were able to finish last year after 70 years of expectations Collegium Pharmaceuticum in our, uh, in our city. Uh, our pharmacy uh, faculty uh, was spread, I think, in 10 different localizations in our city. And uh, because uh, of the uh, communist system and so on, if people are spread, they are weak. If they are together, they are stronger. And uh, finally, we were able to, to, to build a one localization. And many people uh, who uh, known one another only from the faculty councils, they were able to cooperate, they were able to exchange knowledge and also to introduce industry to the cooperation. So I think this is a, a very important element, the IDOP funds and also the recognition of our strong points uh, to uh, also to be active in the field of the industry, especially in the moment when uh, 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 <coughs> during COVID pandemic, we found out that many of drugs and the active substances they are produced in China and India, and there are no uh, places which produce such an active substances here in Europe. So it was also important uh, to find such a cooperation with our local industries to keep the production or come back with the production of the basic subs uh, active substances to, to our country. So I think this is a very good benefit. Thank you. Uh, okay, so um, first of all, um, about this third criterion of evaluation and how it was taken by our academic community. I must say it was taken quite well. I mean, people were really uh, happy about sharing uh, their applied uh, science results uh, and, and preparing these this descriptions of, of influence and uh, gathering um, evidences and so on and so forth. Of course, they were a bit confused because we were doing it for the first time and uh, the rules were not maybe very clear to everyone. So in order to, to, to help, to prepare, uh, we have organized um, this contest for the best prepared uh, description of influence. And um, I, think, I think it had very positive influence because people started to discuss and come up with uh, various ideas uh, how to present uh, their uh, achievements uh, from different perspectives. And uh, also, uh, I think it uh, gave them this, this feeling that um, 
what they do is, is important and uh, this uh, and for, for a technical university or, or university of technology as our university I think it's it's very important to somehow uh, have these actions and encourage uh, our scientists to do uh, applied uh, research uh, and of course the, the challenges I would say uh, when it comes to, to third mission, I think it's, it's the crisis that is uh, ahead of us, the, the energetic crisis, the, the, the inflation. It's very, uh, I think it's very difficult. And getting funding for this uh, applied research is or, or may be a huge problem. In Poland, we have a national science uh, for research and development that uh, finances this type uh, of research and now some, some news that come from, from this agency are a bit, I would say, discouraging because uh, the programs that are going to be launched uh, will be different than they were before. And for example, our university is in top five universities that was acquiring, uh, that was in terms of success rate uh, in, in uh, acquiring uh, funding from National Science uh, for Research and Development. And now uh, many programs will be directed uh, to, uh, to the industry and not to the universities. So I think uh, establishing you know, partnerships and partner collaborations uh, with uh, our industrial partners uh, will be uh, much more uh, difficult now. So I think it's also uh, a question to, to, to our authorities to maybe rethink uh, these uh, this financial schemes and support universities and not companies uh, in this uh, applied, applied sciences because it's very important uh, in particular for, for uh, universities uh, of, of, of technology. And I think it's also important to apply for European funding within Horizon Europe uh, schemes. There are possibilities to enter uh, big uh, consortia with uh, large uh, companies from all over uh, Europe. And yesterday, uh, for instance, uh, we got the news that next two projects from Horizon Europe for which University of Technology realized in such uh, consortia um, has been um, accepted for funding. So this is at least uh, a, a direction uh, we, we, we have to follow, I would say. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the last question from my point of view. Uh, what are the specific aspects related to particularly uh, particular to um, typology of university comprehensive technical medical university for example which eventually should be considered when assessing the performance in the stream mission do you think there are this kind of uh, aspects which should be considered we have to come uh, we the university have to uh, combine the three mission, but giving the profile, the typology of the university, obviously the approach may be different. Do you consider that these aspects should be um, considered in the evaluation, in the monitoring and the evaluation, or all of them should be assessed with the same ruler, let's say? Uh, I, I don't think it is a problem because um, uh, uh, one of the largest benefit of EDUP is that uh, we were encouraged to define the priority research areas and we did that. And I, I'm very satisfied about how they work at our university. We, uh, we have six, they were very carefully defined. But what is within the priority research areas is a bottom-up bottom, bottom process. So, so they have many sub-areas, but how they work? Uh, because we have, um, uh, in fact, uh, 15 faculties, 12 scientific disciplines, and six areas, we wondered 
um, from which faculties the people will enroll to the to the priority research areas. And it turned out during our first meetings that uh, each priority research area is in fact represented by people from six to 12 faculties. So in each uh, area there are people from just representing the uh, core technical sciences, but also people representing social sciences and science, uh, like chemistry or physics or, 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 or the other aspects. Uh, and they started collaborating, they found uh, common interest, and uh, depending on uh, what they are currently working on, you know, the, uh, 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 the contribution is different from this part, but anyway, uh, they have this, all these aspects being, being uh, considered and joined together. So I think that, that because of this definition of priority research areas, uh, the collaboration of these different fields uh, becomes a reality. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Right, so you ask about specifics of tech med or comprehensive universities. So I, I think that the fragmentation of universities in Poland uh, doesn't serve us well, and everybody knows that the best uh, medical university in the world is Harvard, and that the so-called best technical university in the world, MIT, is truly a comprehensive university, and so on and so forth. Uh, so especially in, in, with today's uh, aspirations of candidates to, of students and uncertain future, uh, a big uh, and, and rich and broad intellectual society uh, is important. It's very difficult to, um, to produce high quality research, to have good big ideas in one specific field without having neighboring fields present in the same thinking society. Uh, I imagine that Poznan University of Medicine uh, counter or fights this problem of isolation with intense uh, collaboration with other universities, but it would be probably much easier uh, to be simply in, in one uh, university with faculty of biology, faculty of chemistry, faculty of computer science and so on. I know it's a painful process and I, I, I don't know if it will happen in a decade or two, but I think looking at the world's best universities, we also have to go in this direction, and that all happens, for example, at Warsaw University, with opening of Faculty of Medicine. And uh, I just hope that this question will be obsolete. Thank you. Just answering in, in, in three sentences. Yes, the priority research areas, they were important for us. We redefined them last year because they show our, uh, our strong uh, points and the, 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 the strong sides of our university. But what I think we still fail, uh, fail in communication with the, with the society and the stakeholders, because uh, we think we can uh, perform some research and so on, and it will be useful for the society, for the industry, for example, but we simply, all the time, we do not hear what the industry and society talks to us. And I think this is the, the, the very important element to be improved yeah, this year or the next year, simply to, to have a better communication. It will be a better way to, to perform the third mission. Thank you. Yes, so I would say that we live uh, in the community uh, that is uh, based on knowledge and modern techniques, science is uh, in everyday life, it really uh, changes the, the, the quality of, of uh, our civilization. So I think it's very important that this third mission uh, is realized uh, by universities and I think we, we need to do what we can to somehow uh, enhance uh, this uh, this uh, activity and uh, somehow merge these two words, the, the word of science, the word of academia, and the word of industry, because I think on the um, merge of these two uh, words that are sometimes uh, not communicating uh, very well, we create new quality and we build uh, excellence uh, of, of, of uh, modern uh, science. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have to close. I just want to say thank you to everyone who 
uh, put the efforts to answer the question. I know that was not very easy, uh, at least one of the questions in this panel. Uh, I see a lot of uh, achievements, uh, particularly regarding uh, the rewarding uh, uh, teaching performance. Uh, probably it's more to be done regarding uh, the way to better monitor the submission, I would say, because it's very difficult to compare the performance of different university based on the answer which were provided. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. One of the outcomes of a situation where our experts are enjoying the conversation on a given topic is that there is no time left for questions from the audience, as is the case now. So if you happen to have any questions, please approach our experts individually during the 15-minute break and let us just thank them now. Silesian University of Technology represented by Professor Marek Pawełczyk, Wrocław University of Science and Technology, Professor Arkadiusz Wójs, Poznań University of Medical Sciences, Professor Michał Nowicki, Łódź University of Technology, Professor Łukasz Albrecht, chaired by Mariana Kionczel. Thank you very much. And let's meet again in about 12 minutes or so.
Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be starting the closing panel of the first day of the third Progress Review Conference. Join us in the main hall. <laughs> Madam, how do I pronounce your name correctly? Kondoroshi. Or is it, is it Eve or Eva? Eva. 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 Eva Kondoroshi. Yes. Thank you. But you can help me with your other names. Pardon? You can help me the pronunciation with your other names. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mar Mar Małgorzata Lewandowska. Lewandowska. Małgorzata Lewandowska. Yeah, but I have to learn your name, yeah? Okay. And uh, which one was? You can skip my first name. Uh, no, no, this one. Anna Helmonska. Helmonska. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Soita? Soita. Helmonska. Helmonska. Would be Maybe Anna is the same. Anna is, 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 is the best, I think. <laughs> Margorzata is already Margorzata difficult. Is, yeah, difficult. Yeah, it's difficult, Eva Kondoroshi. So, you, you, you can just Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start. Kindly take your seats.
on a purely structural and strategic level, it's always a good idea to leave a truly important topic as the last one in a day's agenda. And that is exactly what is about to happen here. And now we are going to talk about developing efficient and effective staff development programs. I don't think any explanation is required here. We all know, just like in any major international business environment, so also in a university or research institutions, it's absolutely crucial that employees, top talents of that institutions have prospects, possibilities to develop their careers for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the panel will be moderated by our special guest today. Allow me to introduce. She presides over a symbiosis and functional genomics unit at the Biological Research Center in Hungary. Since 2020, she has been a member of the group of chief scientific advisors of the European Commission. And since 2022, she has been the chair of the life sciences class of Academia Europea. And that is only a part of a very impressive biography of academic and managerial experience. Please welcome Professor Eva Kondoroshi. <laughs> Madam, please feel free to take one of the microphones and also choose your favorite seat. It's the one in the middle, I presume. All right. How are you? I'm glad you've made it to us. It should be working. Let's I see. hope. Is it working? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. It is. Yes, I am very sorry that I am late because yesterday there was a big storm in Frankfurt. I came from Milan and the flight was so much delayed that I could not reach a connecting flight to dance. So even in Frankfurt there was no hotel. It was already midnight. I was sent to Wiesbaden, but finally I managed to come here and I am very glad to be here with you today. And for me to follow actually the success and the progression of this uh, uh, excellence uh, research uh, university program, it's, it's really something which is even more interesting for me probably than maybe other member of this team, because I am from Hungary, we are facing similar problems, so I can understand very well how the university should develop and uh, how to reach really international standards. We are facing very similar problems. Which is all the more reason for us to be happy that after all that struggle and logistics issues, you eventually made it here to Gdańsk University of Technology. So you're Thank glad you to have you. Would you say this. that this topic of staff development is a challenging one or is an easy discussion ahead of us? I don't think that this is very easy. And actually, when I read the report, I had some questions because when uh, this program started, all the universities talked about success, uh, uh, getting higher ranking of the universities, and partly it was mentioned that this will be via ERC grants. And except uh, the report of the Jagiellonian University, I did not see any report where it would have been mentioned, but it was really a great pleasure to see that the Jagiellonian University, when it started, they had no ER grants, and now they have five ER grants. Maybe the others did not mention, because I am sure that at the University of Warsaw, they have also ER grants, but it was really something nice to see. And because I was, uh, uh, in the ERC Scientific Council and also Vice President for Life Sciences, and I was really working for the widening European uh, participation. And for me, it's very important to see that Polish scientists will be successful in ERC grants. I know many of them, many talented people, but somehow, for some reason, they did not apply or there, there is some problem. So the discussion ahead of us is not really about the rankings or publications, it's about research centers and universities' ability to develop a true culture, essentially. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the speakers for, for our last closing panel of the first day. Please welcome Wrocław University of Environmental and Life Sciences representative, Professor Anna Helmoyska soita Madam, please join us. <laughs> welcome. Now, still a lot of seats to choose from. <laughs> 
Warsaw University of Technology, Professor Małgorzata Lewandowska. <laughs> Pedagogical University of Kraków, Professor Michał Rogosz. A round of applause, please. <laughs> And last but not least, Medical University of Gdańsk, Professor Michał Markuszewski. Good afternoon, sir. And the stage is all set. Enjoy. So thank you very much. I think we all can agree that the success of universities or research uh, groups depends on the quality of the people. Uh, it depends on their motivation, engagement, and really the curiosity-driven uh, thinking. So I think uh, to create really an atmosphere in uh, university department, in groups, where the people will be motivated and even the young people encouraged to do really challenging uh, research or work, it's, it's absolutely important. And nowadays, when the science is really advancing very, very fast, there are new technology, there are many, many challenges, and also uh, many emerging scientific fields. So it's a question how the university can be flexible and adapt it to that one, and also engage young people and also the senior people to change their attitude and really jump on the hot topics and then developing something which is specific for the university and can lead to a, a higher international recognition. So <clears throat> I don't know who would like to start. I am very happy, by the way, that we have now a female dominance in this panel. So it's, it's very encouraging also. So who would like to start? Uh, I can start if okay, you agree. Can. Thank you very much uh, for the ability of taking part in this uh, panel and in this uh, conference. And um, at our university, we run various um, programs uh, towards developing uh, soft uh, skills of academic staff, especially young uh, staff. This is oriented both on international mobility, uh, where the scientists can develop their experience and um, run new research projects. And this activity is um, supported uh, di directly by the sources coming from the excellent initiative research university from and via the program um, up to the top. The last program is uh, devoted to uh, synergetic uh, merging of uh, teaching skills and conducting research projects in the framework of the up to the top university offered many special courses, workshops on auto-presentation, which is very important for young researchers, modern methods um, in um, teaching IT competences, language competences, on, but only on C1 level in English, and design thinking, um, case study methods and also um, the part of the um, mobility program we supported a number of researchers at our university providing them good uh, financial um, conditions in order to run short-term internships abroad. And this uh, program gained a lot of attention especially from young uh, scientists and we were very selective in our decisions. We took into account the um, scientific excellence, the international experience, especially in context of holding short term positions abroad, and the scientific programs that the applicants wants to conduct during the internship, and it was the, the, the most um, important, important. And it was so um, interesting for young scientists that we are going to increase the budget for the forthcoming year edition of uh, this uh, program. And I think that this um, program also helps them to uh, 
uh, applicate uh, for uh, scholarships because it's like, it's like a little scholarship and uh, it's, it can um, make them more eager to reach higher. And um, because I think also that um, they can be very easily success in, in, in this program. Um, Short-term goals of this program is uh, to provide uh, suitable conditions to tighten bonds and run new research projects in the international groups. So it's very important for uh, young researchers, also for more experience, but especially for young to, to, to cooperate with um, groups, international groups. And then it will have a direct impact on publishing results in uh, recognition, uh, recognized international uh, journals. So it helps them to uh, make a, a really very important um, move in in the scientific field. I, I mean, publication in in in, in um, eminent uh, journals. Um, and uh, apart from that, uh, right now we are working on regulations devoted to uh, promoting the best uh, scientists achieving their goals both in teaching and in sciences because in our university 98% um, of the staff are also working on the science field and on teaching field because we think that that it's very important to connect these two activities. And in, in order to increase their involvement and um, appreciate their work uh, for our academic environment, and we uh, do not afraid to promote um, young uh, scientists, even on the uh, professor um, level, uh, but of course they have to show us that they have um, special achievements in publication and in, in engagement in, in, in international um, scientific environment. And uh, they have to be really good, but the edge is not a uh, um, the, 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 uh, uh, key for us because I think that um, it was a uh, custom in Poland that um, professors could be only a person who was uh, in, 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 in at least middle age, but, but we try to show in, in this program that even young scientists, and we see that it gives uh, them more uh, power and, and, and it, 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 it helps them to develop their own groups and, and um, some of them, uh, a few of them, some of them also um, have ability to engage students to, to, to scientific work. So it's really a very successful idea in our opinion to promote young scientists uh, very gifted to uh, such level. We do not afraid of this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe I will ask uh, okay, Mark Orza. Yeah, okay. So, University of uh, Warsaw University of Technology. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to explain how we approach this topic at the university. Of course, we all want to make uh, the university the uh, nice place uh, of work, and. Um, uh, I, I would like, first I, I, I have to say that Warsaw University of Technology is quite large university. We have more than 5,000 employees and uh, half of which is academic staff, right? So we have more than 2,000 uh, uh, academic uh, uh, staff. So uh, for such a large community, there are various needs. Even for academic staff, depending on the, on the, on the stage of uh, their career, uh, they, they have completely different uh, uh, needs. So we have to design special programs uh, for uh, various uh, uh, people. 
So let me, uh, let me briefly explain what we do, and I will divide our activities uh, by goals, let's say. Um, uh, so uh, uh, first, we would like to bring our own staff to the highest possible level. So therefore, we provide uh, courses. Uh, which, uh, focus, uh, which focus mostly on improving teaching and management competencies of our staff. Uh, uh, in the last two years, we organized more than 100 such courses uh, with more than 1,200 uh, employees participating in, this, uh, in, in these courses. May I ask you that yes. this is voluntary or...? Yeah, yeah, it is voluntary. No, so no, no. They yeah, they, 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 they wanted to. Okay. Yes, uh, no, no. <laughs> Absol absolutely, this is, this is vol voluntary. In addition, we organized more than 20 didactic internships for our staff, uh, more than 50 uh, our uh, employees participated in postgraduate studies. Uh, then uh, we organized a competition for research grants to, f uh, not research grants, for grants to finance innovat innovative teaching activities, and uh, we gave uh, more than 20 such uh, grants. And we also organized uh, around 20 foreign uh, training uh, uh, courses, so two courses which uh, took place uh, abroad. Uh, Okay, this was, this was first goal. Then we would like to, uh, we wanted to strengthen uh, the, uh, the research capabilities of existing research teams. Uh, and uh, therefore we, uh, we launched a special program within uh, EDUP program, uh, which provides funding to employ uh, postdoctoral researchers. And uh, uh, that, that there is no limit of age. They, they can be early stage or mid-term uh, uh, career researchers. And um, uh, it, that, that there was already two editions of, of this program, and we employed uh, more than 20 uh, outstanding researchers, uh, recruited and employed for maximum two years' time. Uh, and uh, it should be noted that the majority of them were international. So we increased... When you talk about international, so because usually our countries, I mean, at least Hungary, is not so much attractive. So if you talk about international, what does it mean? Are they coming also from... Uh, Oh, for, for, yes, yes. Also, yeah, we, 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 for example, we have one uh, researcher from United States, uh, one from, uh, or, or maybe two or three from Germany. Uh, of course, there are also from India uh, as well. Yeah. And, and the salaries, are they compatible? With their demands? Uh, well, they, 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 well, they, they are uh, attractive enough that, that they, 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 they join us. They would like to, 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 to join us. Uh, then uh, we, uh, we, we want to support the formation of uh, new research groups by, uh, by, uh, by, by um, uh, young researchers. Uh, and uh, uh, in such a way, we would like to search from, for new, new leaders, research leaders. So we designed a, also a special program within uh, EDUP. It is called LabTech of Excellence. And uh, this is uh, uh, exclusively devoted to, to young uh, uh, people up to seven years after PhD. Uh, and and in, in within this uh, program, the, the, the young uh, mm, uh, the young person uh, uh, mentored by, by an experienced experienced professor from Poland or from abroad uh, is supposed to build a team with uh, competencies uh, which which is uh, complementary to the existing ones. Uh, uh, of course, they, they they have money to to 
purchase some small equipment uh, to, 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 uh, to, to, to hire uh, to hire people and we had uh, now one uh, call for such proposals we obtained 14 applications and uh, three of them were selected for financing this is a project for three years uh, the fourth activities are related to promote uh, to promoting international collaboration and uh, as many of uh, uh, EDP University we also have a, a mobility program and uh, we finance uh, research stays, uh, stays uh, in prestigious prestigious universities or, or research centers of course in 20 20 and 2021, this program was uh, uh, suspended, but uh, uh, this year more than uh, 30 people uh, went uh, abroad uh, for um, one to uh, three months uh, stay uh, abroad. Uh, as uh, we are technical university, so our activities are focused also, on, or mostly focused on applied research. Uh, so I, our goal is also to facilitate technology transfer and uh, formation of uh, uh, startups or spin-off companies. Uh, and we, we think that uh, such an option uh, would be very attractive um, career path for especially young generation. And uh, we created uh, programs which, uh, uh, which uh, support, uh, uh, which support uh, first um, international patents, legally and financially international uh, patents. Uh, we also offer internships in uh, uh, technology trans transfer centers in uh, Europe or in United States, and we also create. An, um, an, an accelerating program to build a new ecosystem of uh, companies uh, which um, uh, benefits from research results from IPRs uh, uh, developed at the uh, university. Uh, in this program, we now have uh, 17 teams which would like to, to, to create a, a new company and uh, 10 next in the pipelines and in the pipeline. And last but not least, uh, we consider our doctoral candidates as a part of our staff. <laughs> Uh, or at least future academic uh, staff. Uh, so we offer, uh, I think, that substantial support to, to our um, uh, uh, doctoral candidates. Uh, we are able to, thanks to EDUP funds, we are able, able to finance more, uh, uh, more scholarships. We also offer an additional scholar scholarships to our, uh, uh, to our doctoral candidates, but of course money is uh, not uh, enough to attract people because we, we will never be, uh, 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 we will never offer better uh, uh, salaries than uh, in, in industry. Uh, than in the mar market, uh, so we offer also them uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, programs to develop soft skill, uh, skills in, uh, in a program called Researcher Workshop. And, um, uh, and we also support mobili mobility of uh, 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 doctoral candidates. Uh, each, uh, each of them uh, 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 have two packages to be spent to participate in a conference, a workshop, summer school, whatever is needed for their uh, development. Uh, and uh, I think that our doctoral program is quite uh, uh, successful because we were able to maintain the same, the same number of uh, doctoral candidates at, at the university, uh, although in Poland uh, th there was a decrease, a substantial decrease by 18% or something like that. Uh, okay, that, that's... May I also, ask you what yes? was the reason of the decrease? 
of the doctoral students? Uh, uh, well, uh, I think that there are, there are two reasons, uh, or, or, or maybe even three reasons. First, the population of, uh, of young people is much smaller than, uh, uh, let's say, 10 or 20 years. Uh, ago. Uh, second uh, is, uh, uh, of course, that uh, the market offers uh, better uh, salaries and uh, better maybe prospects. The, the, the third is uh, also that the university uh, had to reduce uh, the, 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 the number of positions uh, because of uh, uh, financial constraints. I don't. I, I, I have no numbers. I don't know which which of them uh, was the most uh, crucial for this decrease. However, I I I, I could identify uh, three reasons. Okay, maybe we can discuss yeah, this okay. later. So maybe we can turn now to the Wroclaw University of Environmental and Life Sciences. So I would like to ask Anna Helmolska. So it, uh, you know, finally, I managed somehow to say, <laughs> Vice Rector for Internationalization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I am really grateful for, uh, uh, for inviting me to, to, have, to be here and to, uh, to participate in this panel. And I would like to say that, that when our universities think about the um, developing of efficient and effective staff development programs, uh, we think uh, about that in a, uh, a little bit broad, uh, uh, um, broad context. I mean, uh, we think about, uh, because the universities, uh, as you mentioned, there are, uh, in fact, uh, there are very uh, big uh, a place for employment. So we think uh, about this problem as uh, to create uh, and to develop the work culture. And I think that it is for whole university. So uh, we think, um, uh, so, so we, we, now we, we develop, we start, we try to develop the work culture at our university uh, in a four dimensions. So the first dimension uh, is to, uh, is the um, um, developing organization structures we, uh, which uh, help our employees uh, to, um, uh, to feel uh, good at our university. So I, I mean that, that they should uh, feel so good that they can uh, develop their own goals and life goals, yes? And they, they should have to, uh, to have the good work balance and so on and, and be creative as we, uh, as we um, heard about this creative. Uh, the creativeness, which is which is really important for research uh, workers, but not only. Uh, the, th the second dimension uh, is to um, uh, is of, of our strategy concerns development of individual career of employees uh, in the all groups of our employees. I mean, in re in the research among the research workers, among the administrative staff and among the, of course, technical staff, which I would like to say a little bit more about that. And uh, the third dimension is the HR strategy. So uh, we have the HR logo, but, uh, but of course we develop all these uh, HR uh, uh, areas which are really uh, important for the for the um, on, on the different levels of the uh, working career at our university or of our workers, and the fourth dimension, which is the last but not least, is the financial support. And I would like to say that that uh, this financial support by the EDUP is really very important part of that, but not only. We have two percent, but we have to earn. Um, Eight other eight percent for that. So uh, uh, we uh, we think about the programs which can support these the, our staff, and uh, these programs are of course the operation programs, uh, we, uh, which is now finishing. But we have also uh, European Commission programs like Horizon, of course Erasmus, and among the Horizon. I would like to say that, that programs such as Gathers or Seasons projects, there are uh, twinning projects. Uh, in these projects, there are a lot of activities which support, in, in, in fact, the competence uh, of the staff. 
And, and uh, now we are the, the part of consortium of, of European initiative, EU Green, and in this, uh, in this project we also have a lot of activities which support uh, competencies, competencies of our staff. So uh, as far as the first dimension, and uh, this is what is connected with the organization, our university, I would like to say uh, that, that we, um, we made some organization um, um, improvement uh, in, uh, from the bottom to the top. So we, uh, for example, we adjust the, um, we adjust the, uh, the vice rector's um, um, competencies according to the strategy. And, and also, what is also important, uh, we created the, uh, the, uh, the uh, director staff which support the, the scientists mainly, but not only. So we have very strong and well-educated directors of the different departments which support the, the whole process of the development of our employees and, for, first, of all, of, of, first of all, of course, uh, our researchers. Uh, and uh, in the bottom, uh, of course, the, uh, we also uh, now we, we are, for example, in the process of the standardization of the post for uh, administrators and, uh, tec uh, and technician staff. So this standardization is absolutely needed for that, for the, um, for the assessment uh, and, uh, and to create the, the um, ca career uh, uh, pathway because the career pathway for the research workers uh, is, is obvious for us. We know how it should be gone. However, for technical staff and administrative staff, it's not so obvious. But we should have support from the site as well. So, uh, so we did it, and of course, HH strategy. Um, so uh, coming back to, uh, to the second dimension, and I mean this dimension which is com uh, connected with the development of individual career, of course, we are focused on the development of the career of the research workers, however, from the level of the students. So, uh, so the financial support from the EDOP uh, allowed us to create a lot of different programs for the young, uh, for the early career researchers, mid-career researchers, leading researchers, and uh, uh, so, so in this group we support them by, uh, by the uh, projects mainly, by, by the project which, is, which are um, given by the competitive way. And, um, and what also is important, we of, of course we, we develop the uh, leading research group and leading didactic groups. In, with, in, in, in these groups, they are supported by, by EDUP fi financial, finan Finance, and, uh, and in these groups, the, the people, of course, acquired uh, uh, these competencies, which are uh, needed for, for the development of their individual uh, careers. And uh, as far as administrative staff and technical staff, we have a special and uh, completely financed by EDU program, uh, program, which is called Staff Academy. And the Staff Academy program, we started this year, and this is devoted for the support, uh, uh, mainly technical administrative staff, uh, for the development of their competencies. And especially, uh, we focus on the technical staff, because we, uh, we um, believe that if the technical staff will be well educated, they 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 are and uh, and will be um, and we and if we support them, they will of course help to create a very good uh, 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 laboratories and and research teams. So so that's why we developed this this program. So, so these these are these dimensions which we understand that they they really help us. Uh, to have these IRC <laughs> grants. <laughs> so thank you. So this is yeah what I can say about about uh, that. Professor, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, at Medical University of Gdańsk, we uh, simply or we clearly understand that the people are the soil of the university of science. So um, uh, from few years 
we start to put the people, staff, on the, on, in the center position uh, in, our, in, our, in our way of thinking of, of university. Um, in fact, the uh, IDOP application a few years ago was kind of fertilized us uh, in uh, thinking of what we can change at our university with IDOP program or even without IDOP program. So, what I will uh, present or will, um, will tell you uh, now is a, a mixture of the changes uh, related strictly uh, to the EDUP initiatives and foundings and to other um, changes at our university which are done uh, based on our um, annual uh, subsidy from, from government. Uh, when I said that the people are the soil of, of university are most important, so we start to think what we can do without uh, small money uh, to help them. And uh, one of such ideas is to, to take off some duties from the researchers, which they uh, were uh, every year um, uh, doing to allow them for um, freeing time for, for science for their, um, uh, for their own development. And there are, for example, some, uh, some formal um, administrative uh, uh, procedures uh, um, which are done uh, annually or in cyclic way, which are now uh, moved to the uh, people from administration who are mostly are conducting this, uh, this uh, formal steps. Uh, I mean, for example, when we have, every year we have evaluation of our units. So most of these uh, things are done now by the administration, administration units. And here I can report that EDUP initiatives also help us because uh, besides science, senior, young science, uh, PhD students, we also support the administration uh, in such a way that, uh, for example, in, in library, in, in the section where the uh, uh, cytometric, uh, um, not studies, analysis are, are conducted, there are a specially employed person who is doing it, who is supporting this, uh, the other people. But also, thanks to this, she can, or this person can, uh, can uh, take off, I mean, they, they, they can accept some duties from the researchers. So this is uh, one, one, uh, one of the examples of our uh, way of thinking how to change our university. Because uh, what I wanted to say at the beginning also, it is that we treat EDUP as a part of university. It's our tool to change university. It's a very important and prestigious program. We are proud of it. We would like to, to, to run it as long as it would last, but it is not nothing special. It is just a part of university which is, uh, which is employed for, uh, for every changes uh, uh, which, can, which we accept, which we, which we plan, and which we accept to, 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 to do. So, um, uh, so in almost every change at our university, the EDUP is uh, uh, present. Sometimes in 100%, it's financed and uh, uh, it's uh, conducted based on the application and, and um, accepted uh, application. Sometimes in only 50%, 50 sometimes even in less, but uh, I can say that EDUP is practically everywhere uh, present uh, in more or uh, larger extent. And um, uh, so I said about this uh, very, uh, let's say, soft changes like, like uh, enhancing or uh, facilitating procedures or helping our researchers in, in filling documents. Uh, um, it's probably still not enough. If there will be my colleagues from university, they will probably complete that, okay, you help us in, with this, but you gave us other, uh, other duties, administrative, bureaucracy duties to, to do. Uh, but no, it's not always our fault. Uh, our government, uh, our, not only they, but sometimes the European Commission, they, they found uh, many ideas how to, uh, to take our time and for, for some formal uh, documentations. But okay, going uh, to the details. So um, we, uh, as I said, we believe that people are the most important. And uh, to support them, we manage few ways. 
Uh, we have about 20 per programs, different programs run at, at university. Uh, most of them is devoted to people in different extent. So, for example, we can recruit uh, new people, or some people who were already employed can change their positions from this uh, partially didactic, partially research to pure, uh, pure uh, research position. Uh, we, we can employ from uh, young science or, or senior science. And this is very important, these recruitment programs, that they are connected with uh, somehow um, um, uh, evaluation. So the, the people who are deciding to, to be employed or to move to such a position, they uh, accept that during next period of time, three years, they will, uh, um, let's say, produce. So they will make, uh, they will write uh, uh, scientific papers of certain uh, uh, value and they will uh, apply for grants or depending from position they will uh, apply for, for um, um, international cooperation and so etc so we we, uh, we we asking them for 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 work with us we said clearly what we want uh, to get from them uh, in this uh, um, period of time most of people is sometimes slightly, at uh, the first moment, they, they are uh, um, surprised, but, but later on, most of them accept it, and, and without uh, uh, hesitation, they are doing it. And um, we had now some kind of partial evaluation of this employment done uh, two years ago, and there was no problem with uh, fulfilling this, uh, uh, fulfilling this uh, um, uh, criteria which we put before them. Uh, in fact, they are not very, uh, very difficult to fulfill. Uh, however, in Polish and probably also in Hungarian reality, um, um, science not always uh, can fully devote to, uh, to, to research. Uh, sometimes they, uh, especially at medical universities, uh, very important or, or sometimes on first position for them is clinics, uh, um, uh, um, pharmacotherapy or, or other medical procedures which they fulfill for patients. Uh, so um, we, we, we need to be, um, how to say, um, uh, to adjust our uh, expectations from those people uh, uh, according to our regulations. So uh, from the um, international point of view, our uh, expectations are not really uh, very uh, high. However, what is surprising uh, or maybe new in, in our, uh, at our university, they are, they, 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 they are. Yes, usually we employ someone and say, please work and do science, but we do not say what kind of science we want from him or her. And so uh, this recruitment programs, uh, we, uh, we have also recruitment for research support, uh, technical research support. So for the people who are not really devoted to, um, to make a, a big progress in science by, by their uh, uh, ideas, but who will help those uh, uh, other science at our university to uh, run uh, experiments, to uh, prepare uh, papers or other, other things. Uh, we also run programs which are uh, uh, clearly devoted to the projects. So young, uh, creator, young creator of science, such a program uh, um, was uh, one year ago was um, uh, announced and was completed. Now we have a second edition. And uh, so the young people write their applications, they are, uh, uh, they are reviewed by, by the independent reviewers, and then based on them, they were selected group of people who got some money to uh, conduct studies. But for those young people, uh, we also not only uh, expect the results, but also offer them some kind of support, mentoring. Uh, um, it's difficult to, um, to put everything in order in short, uh, short um, um, my speech, but uh, we, our priority uh, uh, um, research areas are led, led by three leaders, let's say, and um, uh, each of them feels very responsible for the group of people who are behind them. So the young creators of science, so young people who got money to conduct research, are in direct contact with these leaders who, who interview them from time to time, who offer them support any time they need uh, uh, in resolving uh, problems or uh, answering on their questions, uh, scientific or sometimes not, not 
clearly scientific. Uh, uh, so um, th those young people are not left by themselves, just have a money and do research, but uh, you, can, you, can, uh, uh, you can count on us, let's say. Yes, there are some people who, um, uh, there are special assistants in each prior priority uh, research area. They are special employed assistants who are um, uh, employed to help uh, all the participants of these priority research areas in their uh, everyday problems. Uh, of course, related uh, with science, with research, with, uh, with university. So when they have sometimes a problem to, to, um, to organize a meeting uh, or, um, uh, or write some kind of application, they, they are doing it. Uh, okay, I, I mentioned about this uh, young creator of science. Uh, we have also a special program for uh, not young, but let's say advanced researchers. However, those who are uh, unsuccessful in, in getting money from uh, external sources. So for, the, for those people, we also support with money. Uh, on the competitive way, uh, last year was 60 applications, uh, 24 persons uh, got a uh, certain amount of money, and, the, uh, and they need to report on the end uh, also the publication or application for, uh, for, uh, for grants from external resources. Uh, applications, we know that it is not easy, not always easy to get the grant in one year or one and a half year. However, if you try, if you apply, then once uh, finally you will get it. You will get it. Uh, so uh, this kind of, uh, um, of program we, we are offering to these people. And uh, also we have a um, number of um, uh, other ways to support to develop uh, in development of our uh, developing our staff of our researchers i mean the um, uh, core facilities uh, uh, so for example uh, bio, uh, biostatistical lab which uh, helps our, uh, uh, all researchers who ask them how in, in any any problem related to uh, biostatistical uh, aspects we have uh, a proofreading program which uh, helps uh, those who are not f feeling comfortable with language uh, to, uh, to, to uh, check, to verify, to correct their manuscripts. We have design, uh, graphical design program when, when the graphics is important in, in, uh, in the report or in presentation. There are persons who can help uh, uh, preparing such a graphics. Um, uh, so uh, we, we are several such, such uh, initiatives which uh, are offered for people to help them in, in their everyday work, in their research, or to, uh, to, uh, to facilitate something, to e make it more easy for them, uh, creating their, uh, in, um, their, their in initiatives uh, or, or uh, opening their minds. And um, what maybe is also important, you mentioned it, Professor, in the beginning, that uh, uh, people um, should be somehow inspired to, to work. So uh, very important work is done by the leaders of our priority research areas. But we have also International Scientific Committee, uh, which is, uh, co consists of seven persons from, um, let's say, all over the world, Europe and the United States, um, they, they visit us. Uh, we have, uh, during pandemia, we have uh, uh, online uh, uh, meetings and they also offer uh, lectures for our um, uh, researchers via internet. And uh, starting this year in, in June or end of May, they first time visit us and they will uh, uh, cons uh, consequently visit us in, five, in next, next uh, years, in next months. Uh, so they also are uh, uh, not only um, um, scientific committee by, by itself, but also kind of uh, mentoring. Uh, they are also offering some kind of mentoring to those who are asking for it. And maybe last uh, uh, sentence, with, may I, uh, if I may say, uh, you said that there are not uh, ERC grants from Poland. Uh, they were not in the reports. Uh, we are still unsuccessful, my, I mean, uh, Medical University of Gdańsk, in application of it. However, what we did, we, uh, we started a program with um, uh, renom reputable um, uh, consulting company from Netherlands. Uh, which help us to prepare our researchers to apply for ERC grants. So we opened the, the, uh, the uh, recruitment to this program, and 30 researchers have been selected, those who are the most promising 
by the tools used to account it. Uh, the, the company is experienced in supporting such uh, uh, applications, so we trust them that they, do, they, they, uh, they know how to justify this. Uh, some of these uh, um, 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 criteria are now well known for us, like publications, uh, scientometric, uh, but they are also using other, other um, approaches to, 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 uh, to count on uh, pr pr promiseness of such a, a candidate. And those 30 selected people will have a, um, a special program which will uh, finally result in selecting few of them who will be really personally led to, to apply for the grant. We hope that in next years, I'm not sure 2023, but uh, um, I, 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 I'm hope or pretty sure that 24 or 25 we will be successful in, in this uh, based on our own researchers who were prepared to apply for it. Because of course it is a way to, to let's say in, 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 in sport way we can buy uh, researchers in brackets, buy uh, uh, researchers from, from the market, uh, let's say again in brackets, like in, in, in soccer, for example, it is, uh, but, uh, uh, okay, we, 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 uh, we, our money which we have is not really uh, high. Among first 10 uh, EDUP universities, we are the smallest one, and this is related to the smallest, um, uh, smallest uh, subsidy. And uh, uh, some of the universities which are in the second 10th are uh, uh, much larger, then we are, and then the, it, it seems that the money is, is very similar. It's not much different between um, the first 10 and second 10, depending from the size. So we need to, to, uh, to spend this money very reasonably, and we, we uh, believe that, uh, um, uh, that, that giving people a tools and giving them a possibilities to, to develop themselves, like in this top star, uh, will be uh, top star program will be will be a best um, way to, to to be successful. And uh, what what else I will add uh, besides this uh, advanced ERC grants, we also uh, support young uh, PhD students or even st students uh, in the acad grant academy. We we launched this program this uh, year this spring, and we have uh, we selected first group of more than around 10, 10 persons who will go to for, for the next uh, several weeks uh, to such a, let's say, grant academy, which will taught them and uh, guide them through the, uh, through the way of uh, application for, for money. So maybe it's enough for, for, for this moment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. You answered many questions, but it also raises many questions. So first of all, it's very good to know that actually with the IDO problem, program, you had the possibility to change the university, or at least it helped it. So it's also a question whether it also changed the field of research, whether it led to new, uh, new ways of research or more emerging fields or how it is expanded the things. Uh, the other thing that, uh, yeah, just to coming to the last uh, uh, point, this ERC grant is, if your university can identify 30 candidates, what you think that these are really good candidates, this is already formidable, but I would like to say that, uh, okay, scientific publication and good quality publications, this is really uh, excellent and, and required, but the other thing is the international mobility. So if they do not have at least one year uh, postdoc period abroad, I think uh, the chance is not very high. So you have to think about also this one. And when I met uh, young uh, Polish uh, postdocs, and ask them about the mobility, because at the ERCV also propose a visiting fellowship program uh, when they can present their potential topic at, in ERC grantees lab and working there. I said that maybe three months would be sufficient really to feel how is the research, international research atmosphere and how they should prepare their uh, project. But most of them said that no, three months is too much, so they cannot afford that one, maybe a week or two weeks or something. So when you are talking about mobility, if this is only a conference, it's very good to have contact or whatever, but it's not sufficient to get really international experience and to be competitive, let's say at the ERC grants. 
And also a question that uh, I, I would like to hear your view that how is it your university, whether you are really creating something with all these uh, developmental programs and career building, whether there will be really candidates and how many and how you see it. Um, but um, uh, also how it influenced the, the research portfolio and how are you planning the future with ER, uh, not ERC, but other European grants? Because in your reports you said that there were many applications for external grants, but I have no idea which were these grants and how many were successful. It was not written. It was only given the number of applications. So to see really what is the success, it would be really nice to know. Okay, at, at the first year or the first year, it's too early to have really the change and one has to wait. And this is the same for the ERC, but at least to know how are you preparing the future and how you are going to get more money, much more money from European funds. Because one university said that they were successful and had five uh, uh, EU grants, which altogether gave 1.6 million euros, which is equal probably one uh, starting grant at ERC. So one should aim something much more ambitious and hopefully with this program which accelerated the thing, in a few years, you will be really successful. The other thing what I would like to mention, and this is also uh, close to the mobility programs, that there is this cost association when uh, even for existing programs, uh, one can uh, join even, and maybe there are also running programs which would fit to the profile of your universities. And if you look the success rate of those one, young ones who participated in these programs, then the success rate can go up to 34% compared to 10% or 5% success rate. So you have to use also this one in addition to the uh, EDU program wherever it's possible to do something. So, but let's see how is the situation with the other universities. With ERC grants, uh, and and yeah, yeah for let, example, let, let, let me look, maybe uh, this, this is wor working. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me first comment the short uh, uh, mobility, short term mo mobility to attend the conferences. This is just a part of uh, uh, a formation of our PhD candidates. Not uh, not, not th th this. This is not to uh, uh, to, to to really. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah I, I understand that yeah. one. But we, we, we have another one, another but, but program from, for, for, for long, long term uh, visits. Uh, but yeah. I am asking whether this is really true, what the Polish young people told me, that they do not want to have a, a longer fellowship or stay. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it might be, sometimes it is, it, it, it is a, a, a problem, but uh, n not with uh, all of uh, them. Uh, in my introductory uh, speech, I concentrated I concentrated on uh, academic stuff and, and, did this, uh, and I didn't say nothing about administration and technical stuff. We also have so, some problem, uh, programs or courses, maybe not programs, but we provide uh, uh, courses also to administration and technical stuff, stuff to, uh, uh, to support their uh, development. And uh, as uh, for ERC grants, of course, we have the ambition to have uh, such grants uh, at Warsaw University of Technology. Unfortunately, we were not uh, successful as of uh, yet. Uh, but, but did you submit some application? Uh, oh yes, uh, yeah, yeah. We we, we had uh, some application. Some uh, some of I I, I cannot uh, provide uh, the, the the exact number uh, now, uh, some of uh, our um, applicants uh, were even in the second uh, stage. We also formulated um, a special program for persons who would like to apply uh, for ERC grants to support uh, them in preparation their proposal. Uh, we have a um, committee judging the, the, the this, uh, uh, internal proposals and this committee consists of uh, professors uh, who has a 
great experience in managing European grants, of course not ERC grants, uh, or uh, of uh, professors who, who were in the, in the, the, the second stage of uh, ERC competitions and they also the, serve as um, mentors uh, for, uh, for, for our applicants. Uh, 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 recently, we, we, we granted uh, four, uh, uh, four, four, four such uh, projects, uh, and uh, certainly at least uh, four applications will be submitted to the nearest uh, uh, call. And what is the situation if somebody was on the second step but was not successful? There is a reapplication. Uh, they should reapply. Should. Should. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Success rate much yes. higher at the yes. second. Yes, we, 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 we will stress them to do mm -hmm. that. And um, at the Pedagogical University, I would like to add that we also um, were trying to help our um, not uh, scientific staff to develop and we addressed uh, programs to them. And uh, what's important, um, about 90% of administration staff uh, took uh, part in some courses. So we can be proud of it and we believe that it's really very important in developing um, every kind of activity in, in, in university to support also administration, not only scientific stuff. And my conclusion is that um, even though we have um, many different uh, programs which are addressed to all uh, scientific staff in university, and the largest um, group of benefits uh, beneficents are uh, young uh, researchers because they are the most active and even though um, I, I was really very surprised uh, that uh, in program excellent motivation which is a reward for achievements on scientific um, um, on scientific field in, in, in concrete discipline uh, and the rules are the same for all uh, for all people. And over 50% uh, were um, young scientists. It's it's really very good, but surprising. And there were only a few professors benefits. So when they were um, granted this reward by rector, and even rector was surprised that that such situation has place. So I think that they are very often the most effective. Um, uh, workers, at, uh, not workers, but um, employ employers at the university. Uh, of course, not always, but, but they are the most effective because they are not much money, but they work in the most effective way. Let's see what is in yes, so Our understanding of the, um, of the uh, research career of, of the <coughs> researchers is that, that <coughs> That the mobility, of course, is the is the very crucial part of this of this career, and we encourage our PhD students to go, for example, for one year scholarship, and they because we have international, uh, we have for, I don't remember now 40 or more percent of international students in our PhD school, so they they, they are ready they are they are ready to go uh, to have such uh, such scholarships. And then, so the, the, the first mobility is connected with the acquiring of the, some competencies in the uh, research methods. And then, after PhD, if they are with us, they are encouraged to go to postdocs, and the second mobility is connected with that. And if they, uh, if they, um, they, if, if they are go abroad, so, so the problem is to, to have, him, have them back or have the, another PhD students in our laboratories. So uh, as far as, uh, as uh, international grants, and so now uh, we, mainly our success as a university, uh, the main success we have in the second uh, pillar. However, in the f first pillar, we applied, uh, we, have, we have now 16 or 17 
uh, leader research groups. So these are groups, uh, they, uh, they are these which, which, which we think that they, they will develop for that. And, and one of these groups is the best, is the geodesy group. And we have the, uh, the, the, the professor who applied for ERC grant. Unfortunately, he failed because um, I've heard that he was not so brave. <laughs> so, so, but we, we hope that uh, but, uh, he is really very, very good researcher and, and internationally recognized, so we hope that, that, that we will be successful in that. However, other, I, I think, and I, I estimate that maybe the other two groups will be, will be ready for that. However, the, the program started two, two years ago, so we, so now, so, so these groups, that they, they start to, 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 to work two, two years ago. So I, I think that, that this is the process. So, and we have the, the young researchers who, who, who are, we will be able to, to start for the, for the research, um, for the ERC grants for the young uh, researchers as well, I hope. That's so, so, uh, so I, I think that, that, that this is the part of this research career and the developing of, of the, the thinking and convince the people, young researchers, that, that, that they, they, they should think about the mobility. Yes, so this is the one of the way of, of the encourage them to, to have these international contacts, uh, to cut off uh, the link with the promoter, which is also very important. Yes, to develop their own way of thinking so, so I think that, that, that this kind of the, how to say, the mentoring is also important. So, and we try to do it. Yeah, of course, the cultural change, uh, it's very, very important. And yeah, I was thinking that uh, now with all these possibilities and progress, uh, what is the situation of the diaspora? Whether one can bring back really talented, uh, uh, Polish uh, researchers to the universities because they can come back, for example, with an ERC grant and uh, they would get uh, extra support. Hmm? You, hope that. <laughs> you hope that. So, do you have some initiative like that? Because uh, to come them back? Yes. Yeah. So in fact, uh, the, uh, the, this, uh, we think about the leading research groups, uh, not all of them, because there are, there are 16, but I think that maybe it will be three, which will create the, the, uh, the excellent centers, I mean, such a nest. So we have the nest in which they may come and they go out, yes, and come, to, come back. So, uh, and, and you this have is. to leave the place also for new ideas. So, yeah. not only yeah. for the existing, yeah. but yeah. because this can really change yeah. the whole university. Or yeah. So, uh, so, so, I, so, this, uh, so now we have some, not so many, unfortunately, but I think that this is the, the not only our problems, and it's all over the world the problems of postdocs positions. And now, at the, um, at, at we talked about the, the, the salaries at the universities and, the comp and w that we compete with the very good, for example, in life science, there are the very good companies which offer also are the very good position with the very good uh, salaries and the and the and the um, um, possibilities to uh, to develop the, the research career, not only to stay at the one position. So uh, so we of course cope of that as a as a considerably small university. We, we of course have this problem, but we have some postdocs and we we hear what they what they uh, from abroad and we we try to, uh, and we very um, carefully hear what they what they say yes how to so um so we have these um we, we are conscious of of that we are conscious of these uh, c career pathways so we we try to create these these um this nest i mean the the people the the, the people who are who are very good in in research and of course the appliances, I mean infrastructure, research infrastructure, this is another what we have to have for, 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 uh, for encourage people to come to Poland. Yeah? So there are two, at least two, uh, two conditions, so that they have wise people and, and research uh, infrastructure. This is our... <laughs> Want to add something to this yeah, one? One, 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 one thing is, is my personal reflection uh, that I fully agree with you. I 
don't understand why young people are hesitating to go abroad for longer than uh, one or three months. Uh, in, when I started my career, scientific uh, adventure, let's say, it was uh, one of the most exciting and inspiring things to go abroad to see different laboratories, meet other people and, and listen to the ideas. I don't understand. Partially for medical university can be explained that the most of our, majority of our uh, researchers, uh, young people are uh, physicians, uh, young medical doctors, and they are, uh, uh, when they get job at hospital or in another place, it's not easy for them to leave it for longer periods. So uh, for those who are dedicated to university career, uh, uh, and we still are, I would say, successful. There was for, for the medical doctors, so they can do also work wherever they want, yeah. and they can learn a lot of things. And Those who understand it and they go abroad, they, they usually got very good uh, achievements and, and, and they, they develop perfect. But uh, not, uh, not everyone understands it. Uh, and it's maybe our task to, to better explain it to young people. However, uh, I said that we have two years of, of pandemia, and in fact, our mobility program started uh, um, less than one year ago, yes, uh, 10 months, probably around 10 months ago. And we are uh, uh, around 10 persons who went abroad for, for several months, um, maximum one, one year. Uh, so it's not, not bad, I would say. Maybe not, uh, not so good uh, either, but it's not bad. We, we have uh, three visiting professors from abroad who are spending certain time in Gdańsk. Uh, um, and we also promote international cooperation by means of uh, um, 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 gr gr granting people for such uh, um, actions. So, for example, um, from EDUP initiative money, we, uh, we pay only open access uh, articles when there is uh, international cooperation. Yes, it's not only some kind of uh, level uh, um, by means of quartile or decile, but uh, also there must be international cooperation. Uh, in our internal evaluation, we add uh, the special uh, points for the internationally conducted study in frames of, of grants, of programs. So if there is international uh, grant, uh, then the, the, the person or unit is, is double granted for, for it. So we, we make such a, uh, moves which, uh, which we hope in, in future will result in, in uh, increase of this cooperation. May I ask all of you whether at your university do you have this shared international PhD program? So shared PhD? Formally, formally shared. Uh, this international, so when uh, you have a doctoral school or you have a PhD student, but there are two supervisors or two host institutions, so one is Cotutel, yeah. This is the first French word, yeah, Cotutel. Twinning. PhD. Uh, yes, we had such a um, program and probably, I don't know whether it works now, but uh, I know that it worked for several years and um, there were um, double diploma uh, and um, it was uh, really attractive for, for students. They preferred it than only PhD in, in, in Poland and, and the ability of uh, going abroad and um, taking part in, in such event like um, PhD um, the, 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 the exams and, and the, 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 the whole event was something really very interesting for them but of course there were uh, many different um, problems which were connected with the law and um, but but of course it it worked it worked but I'm not sure whether we have now it we also have experience with uh, such twin uh, uh, tutel <laughs> PhD studies with uh, several uh, universities actually and uh, uh, currently international 
International, of course, of course, international. Only, only international. Uh, I am talking only on international uh, 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 twin cooperation. And uh, and uh, currently we are, we are even developing some procedures which will facilitate such uh, uh, doctorates. We also have such experience. However, the real tell is some, sometimes it's really very uh, difficult because we had the example of, of one which is in two disciplines and it was really very difficult to perform uh, from the point of the law. But we, uh, what we do, uh, for, uh, th there is almost the rule that, that the reviewers should be from from abroad and uh, and there are two pro there are often there are two promoters. However, the, the exact cocutel, I mean the, the diploma from the two universities, uh, we have such experience, but it's not the rule. So, but yeah, but it's of course possible, but it's not the rule. Can be. Can be. Can be. In our case, we have uh, one or two agreements between our university and the uh, university from Netherlands and our country, I don't remember, where there is uh, uh, such agreement to conduct joint uh, PhD student, but it is for just not a program for, for uh, recruitment of, of several of them, but, but person, uh, uh, individual persons. This. However, um, uh, we, we were successful in other uh, field of, let's say, education, and it is somehow also related to IDUP. Uh, um, we, this year we started the European Master Degree program uh, together with the University of Ghent, Groningen, and Lille. And it is uh, devoted to sustainable drug discovery, two years uh, master uh, course, master degree. Uh, there will be internationally based students because the rules of this European master degree are, uh, are uh, such as that the majority of students must be from a broad European Union uh, area. And we hope that uh, it will result in, in the future of, of uh, joint uh, PhD students uh, of those, those, uh, uh, those uh, who, who, who will finish, will, will go into the scientific uh, career, of the scientific uh, way. Not all of them, of course, but, but certainly some. Okay, thank you very much. But now we have still a few minutes, so if somebody would like to ask some questions or make some remarks, comments from the audience, we still have a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, the closing discussion of the day. Does any one of you have any questions? <laughs> it's an important topic of development programs. Yes, Professor. Yeah, I can share my mic. Yes, thank you. Um, just um, a question about um, some, some experiences you might have. Does any of the four universities have um, a formalized experience with uh, tenure track positions. Um, tenure track positions for your for your young career researchers and and postdoc uh, candidates or postdoctoral fellows. Well, I, I don't know what, what what is expected as an answer, but uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, postdoc position is just for limited uh, time, for two years, sometimes uh, uh, three years, um, uh, and. Uh, uh, what we do at the university, uh, we offer to our best postdocs uh, the tenure position, the, 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 the unlimited, the, 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 the the, the, the tenure position at the at the, at the university, uh, but but well, we we uh, I, I don't know if we, we we do not have a special procedure for 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 that. It is just dependent on the on the on the, on the faculty level. Uh, how the situation is at the, at the faculty, but we are of course interested in uh, uh, in uh, uh, keeping uh, uh, promising young uh, scientists at the university. And it's also connected with regulations in Polish laws, and it's a bit different than in the United States of America, for example. So we prefer to offer a job to someone who is. 
um, who have young researcher and then very promising, so it's the, the best solution for us to, to give him a job and we employ uh, many young researchers every year. There are offers for them and we believe that it's the best solution and it's um, in, in, in Polish law, yes, thank you. At our university, we offer the position of the professor. So, so now uh, we are in the process of applying one from professor from Japan and two others. So, uh, of course, we, we offer uh, the position. And, and this is a rather research uh, position for, for, the, um, for, for, for such professor uh, than didactics. Uh, however, they have, of course, seminars with PhD students, master students. Yeah, our recruitment programs are built somehow on this uh, idea, so uh, especially for this uh, experienced researchers. Uh, but specificity of, of, of our um, regulations and our, let's say, conditions, uh, make it's working that uh, um, we, we are not successful in getting people who are looking for a job, in, for example, in Europe, and they found us, oh, okay, let's go to Poland, to Gdańsk. No, it's rather because we, we know someone who, is, uh, uh, who could be interested in this, so we attract him, please come to us, we will, we will offer you special conditions to fulfill your expectations, and, and we have such expectations, and then we, we, we found such a, um, a, let's say, agreement. We, 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 uh, in this way, it is made mostly done. We still have like two minutes for one final question. And if any of you would like to ask a crispy short question to close the first day, you're most welcome. If not, we'll summarize the discussion. Do we have the question? No. Yes. Madam, shall we? No, I think uh, we got uh, many different views and ideas how one can increase the potential of the staff members and also uh, young career researchers. Uh, the universities have somewhat different approaches, but uh, I think we have to find what are the best, uh, what would be the best practice and what would be the most effective. So we are, I think, at this moment still in a learning phase, what would be the best and how to achieve really an internationalization of the universities and how to attract the most talented people and how to change a little bit uh, the life of the universities. Uh, I think in Poland uh, you have permanent positions. And you can see that with the age some people do the business as usual and they are not uh, really eager to change it and start something which is new. And so this is where we have to really mix young people, new ideas, uh, reflecting to the new challenges uh, to really make the universities uh, uh, really lively and very effective universities. And I think we have to go really not only at Polish standard, which is very good, but really, really have to go to international level. And hopefully, with all these approaches, uh, sooner or later it will happen. And I think with the application for European or international grants, uh, taking part in uh, uh, those kind of international projects where, where one can join and, uh, and developing really uh, good talents, maybe not 30, but if we have per university, maybe five at the beginning, it's already excellent or one, uh, which will really change the whole atmosphere and can change the regional field and also uh, uh, increase a lot and modernize the teaching and the scientific level. And for any best practice to be identified, very close cooperation is required at ground level, so to say. Thank you very much for chairing the closing discussion of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Professor Eva Kondoroshi chaired this closing discussion. Thank you, madam. And joining her on the stage, Wrocław University of Environmental and Life Sciences, Professor Anna Homoiska-Soita, 
Warsaw University of Technology, Professor Magorzata Lewandowska, Pedagogical University of Kraków, Professor Michał Rogosz, and Medical University of Gdańsk, Professor Michał Markuszewski. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have quite a lot of time for all sorts of closing remarks at the end of tomorrow. We have planned two major discussions happening. Yes, Professor, would you like to join me on the stage? I have a couple of question marks for myself. Can I? Sure. I'm not summarizing the day, but other than saying I think it has been a very rich uh, and informative day. It, we have come off to a very good start. But I do have some question marks, and I know I, I always sleep very well at night, but sometimes I, I will dream about the questions uh, that have uh, arisen in my head. And first of all, I have heard very little about what you are not doing. So I will dream all night about what you are not doing. I will not pay any attention to all what you are doing, because you are doing an awful lot. And um, I, I'm still trying to figure out what, how your attitude is to the rise and fall of priority fields. I know you all have uh, priority areas. They were established, and you can probably not, uh, without breaking the contract with the government, uh, do anything to the priority research areas. But still, um, I'm afraid that the system is not dynamic enough because you do not have a dynamic attitude towards changing the profile. So this is a question mark. Maybe I've just not understood what you were doing. And then on the mobility, a mobility starts at home. It starts with a national mobility, and if I'm not uh, mistaken, you still have a kind of a cannibal cannibalistic system uh, the universities eat their own best candidates. Instead of sending them away to become even better at other Polish universities first, so why don't you share your best candidate within Poland? Or do you share them? Uh, th this is a question mark uh, for me. Then I also think this a thing about careers have you tried to look at it from the other perspective? Do you, in Poland, proactively think about how you can improve the careers of foreigners? See, for example, Americans, they need to have postdoc periods in another place than their own university. Why isn't that in Poland? Poland is such a fantastic country. You have fantastic research environments. So why don't you think about what, what can you do for the foreigners in a, in a generous way. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you're thinking it from that perspective. And then the other thing is I, we have heard very little today about consolidating the Polish system. If I'm not mistaken, you have at least five major cities with several universities. Why are you not, why are the individual universities thinking about establishing more faculties rather than consolidating or sharing more resources with the others in the same city or, or area. So this is a question mark. Maybe you are all doing it, but I would like to hear, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe also tomorrow, in the coffee breaks, a little bit more about that. And uh, oh, I almost got a heart attack when I heard about our good friend from the medical university hiring a consultancy firm to, uh, to improve their uh, chance to get an ESC grant. I'm, honestly, I think this is not the way to go about it. Uh, but uh, I think you shouldn't waste too much money on, on intermediary consultancy firms. I know it's kind of a, a, a pandemic that is uh, running around in Europe. The commission hires consultancy firms to do all kinds of things. But it's, it's simply not the best way to do it. So uh, find another way, in my opinion. At, at least I wouldn't do it. So a lot of question marks. Maybe you all have the answers to it. But I think, first of all, I'm very interested in what you are not doing. 
because we have heard a lot about what you are doing, which is all great, but let, tell us what you are not doing. Be brave enough to tell your colleagues, we can't do this for this and that reason, um, um, because then you have a chance to solve the problem, I think. I know this is not a, very polite at the end of the day, but, but at least I will grapple with some of these uh, question marks during my sleep tonight. So I hope we can exchange good ideas tomorrow again. Uh, thanks for today. It was a fantastic day, and I'm sure tomorrow will be um, as good as today. And of course, EDUP. The good thing is that you're all happy, it seems to be, with the EDUP program. It is helping you a lot, and um, of course, can always can be better, but at least it's a sustained program, and um, I'm sure the international team would do whatever we can to support the EDUP uh, uh, from now on also. Thank you. Applause well deserved, ladies and gentlemen. Food for thought for us to close the first day of the third Progress Review Conference and to close on a humorous note, perhaps, when you want your message to really reach your audience, always remember, three microphones are always better than two. And with this, let me close and let us see one another tomorrow morning. Have a good evening. Thank you.